The story of Subnautica is split into two games, and it has taken me 200 days to complete them both from start to finish. That's a long time spent on Planet 4546B, where seemingly everything is out to eat my face. So tag along in the complete Subnautica movie, where we go through this planet's mysteries, uncover tales of unfortunate souls, and above all else, make it off this forsaken planet twice. Hey, 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 my lovelies, I am your humble ringmaster, Gromada, and say it with me now, let the show begin! So here is how I got into this mess. See, I was part of the crew on a big old spaceship known as the Aurora, and evacuated in an escape pod since out of seemingly nowhere, the ship got, oh, well, let's just say some unrequested remodeling done on it, which by the looks of things, I doubt any insurance will cover. I promise it wasn't my fault it blew up, okay? The cause is unknown to me. But I do have a hunch that the culprit is this little guy. He just dropped and does look like he is great at committing arson. But jokes aside, the people over at YouTube's have really outdone themselves with this limited edition mini me. Honestly, I'm just so glad with how it turned out as my first ever piece of Chromata merch, which still feels so weird to say. But yes, it is a limited edition, which means that once the sale ends, it will never be made again. So it's kind of now or never, everybody. <laughs> I really hope y'all enjoyed this plushie. It is a pre-sale and will be shipping worldwide between July and August, and I'm super excited to see where across the world these little dudes will go and shall conquer the world. But thank you everyone for enjoying the content and just being a part of all of this for lack of a better term. I never would have thought that like 10 years ago when I became passionate about content creation that we would have a plushie. And with that, of course, a big thank you to you twos for making this plushie a reality that all of us can enjoy. To get your hands on one of these fancy fellows, all you gotta do is head on over to youtubes.com and he's right there for a limited time. Purchasing this plushie does support me directly and I am super grateful to be able to offer y'all a plush of amazing quality. But that's enough of me yapping, about to get sentimental. Back to the video. During my descent, I noticed I must have boarded a pod that didn't undergo proper maintenance as not everything inside was fastened, leading me to receive the knockout of a lifetime. Which is fine, since crash landing like this is scary and I appreciate being out cold for this. As I awoke from my beauty sleep, I found the life pod on fire, and after freeing myself and observing the situation, I put out the flames with an onboard extinguisher. And to my luck, my PDA is damaged but still functional. You have suffered minor head trauma. This is considered a Okie doke. Once out of my life pod, I witnessed the full scope of the tragedy that befell the Aurora and the surrounding endless oceans I found myself in. Well, there's no time to waste, so let's get this adventure started. And first things first, I need to familiarize myself with my surroundings. Broken off pieces of the Aurora were all over the place as gatherable salvaged metal, so I got some of that and some alien fishy fishes, like this bladder fish, which I brought back to the life pod and used the fabricator to cook myself a snack. From what I can tell from my PDA AI, which I'll be referring to as Cortana, most life forms here are safe to eat for humans. With more fish sticks consumed, I directed my focus to the rocks of this biome. Breaking this one here granted me copper, which prompted Cortana to remind me that copper is essential for electronics, and my survival chances just got boosted. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Quartz crystals were also easily accessible, so I got a bit of those, and freed some titanium that was inside of the limestone, the base material for most craftable items. But the fishes weren't all colorful and tiny. I mean, just look at this manatee looking thing with pimples on its butt. Just glad they don't seem aggressive. I dove into the cave for its contents, but a scary noise spooked me out. And looking into the sky, I'm not sure if those are planets or this world's moon, but I do recognize a pigeon when I see one. During my hunt for food, the sun began to set, so I got into the pod, cooked a Gary fish, and began to craft my first items, like these batteries here. I made a scanner. With my vital signs stabilizing, I took a peek outside, but dear lord, it is dark out there. So I stayed safe inside for a bit longer, making glass out of quartz, prepped a spare battery in order to make a flashlight. With that, I could jump into the dark abyss with a bit more confidence. At least now I can see at night all the things that will want me as their next meal. What added to my worries was the radiation in the area was rising based on Cortana due to the Aurora's crash. Probably its power source is leaking out which is bad for me and everything in the area. As the sun rose on day two, I started to scan pretty much everything in my vicinity to understand things better and add that info into my PDA. I even found a floating boulder that was held up by these pink spongy things, which I looted. Not sure what 
they're used for, but they seemed useful at the time. During my scanning spree, I needed to remember to not drown as my oxygen limit isn't that great at the moment. But aside of wanting to get off this planet as my main goal, I had my first objective, which was to make a repair tool. For that, I would need silicone and cave sulfur. For the rubber mentioned, I would first need creep vine seeds, so I went out over to the green seaweed looking biome nearby where I spotted what I call long fish. And they do not seem friendly. Here is where during a scan I almost drowned, just barely managed to reach the surface, as my swim speed also is very slow at the moment. With the seeds in hand, I returned to my life pod, made the rubber, and a knife. Not the best defense tool, but it'll do for now. But from what I gathered, humanity banned weapons a long time ago. Kind of wish my pod had come equipped with at least a harpoon gun, to be frank with you. But with the storage on board I discovered, I unloaded my things and swam out again into this massive coral tube where there was plenty of metals to collect. Even got to scanning a fragment of a device called a sea glide. Following the loop trail, I got into a cave where weird looking bug things were inside, but I was getting dehydrated, so I snatched up a bladder fish and turned it into a plastic bottle. Look, I'm just as confused on you on how that works, but I just need that sweet H2O right now, okay? I'm not gonna question it, I'm not complaining. With my belly full of laser grilled fish, I now could focus on crafting a standard O2 tank for longer dives, and some copper wire was also whipped up and turned salvaged metal into titanium, in order to make a small locker that I can place in the water for some extra storage. Searching through the nearby caves in the dark, my AI companion picked up traces of sulfur nearby. The stones here look different because it's sandstone, and gave me silver, titanium, and lead. After a pit stop for air, I dove back in and there happened to be the bomb fish again, and taking their hits is very painful. And right after that whole ordeal, I was notified that the Aurora is about to blow any day now due to the degradation of its drive core. Fun. On day three, I found cave sulfur nested inside the bomb fish's pods that they come out of. So I took that back to the fabricator and made the desired repair tool, which as you can already guess, helped me repair the damaged sections of the life pod like the radio for example, which had picked up a distress signal. Seems like the Aurora's request for help was received, but rescue will be dispatched in well over a year from now. Yeah, screw that, I'm not just gonna sit around and just do nothing. However, the recording mentioned other life pods, so perhaps I am not alone in this situation, but I can't see any floating in the area, so that's not a good sign. Might as well explore to see if I come across any, and after a bit of swimming around, I didn't find a pod, but rather part of the mothership, which had parts of scannable devices, and once fully done, I learned how to make a grav trap as well as another device called a beacon. Salt was also abundant in the area, so with some of that scooped up, I went to deposit my new things, got some sulfur on the way, and made it into the pod as the sun was setting, when the PDA complimented me on working out far beyond normal. Trust me, I'm not doing this willingly. With my loot processed, I made more batteries that allowed me to make my first power cell. And here is where I got a message played on the radio from LifePod 3. With their coordinates attached, luckily. And seems like they're having trouble, though, with their sea glide. And say not to panic if they're late for the rendezvous, which I never got the memo about. So to get there as fast as possible, I made a pair of fins to get around faster and converted my titanium into ingots to free up some space. I figured the trip could be far, so I got some fish in the evening and prepped them to go. Day four and it's time to find Life Pod 3. And on this trip, I was notified that the Aurora will be blowing up in like, oh, I don't know, two hours from now. Definitely don't have to worry about that at all. I was sure to grab tube coral samples as I was going on along. And when I got to the green biome, I got tense. It's, it feels less welcoming than the shallows, let's be real. But here is where Life Pod 3 was located, and after avoiding the long fish to the best of my abilities, I dashed inside as the predators roared in disapproval. In it was a Pod 3 crew log, as well as blueprints to make a compass. Rushing out, I came across what I can only assume to be a diseased long fish with green lesions on its skin. I would call it chicken pox, but I doubt this place has any chickens, so locally it wouldn't make much sense. But so many items were in the area, for example, scannable pieces for a mobile vehicle bay. But little old Cortana told me, this place got like a ton of bacteria or some sh** and that I should, you know, check myself before I decease myself. But I got distracted before I could do that and scanned one of these pimple butt manatees instead, which is a gasopod. After I scanned a trash can, 
found a deep hole with pressurized air coming out. So that was a lot to take in in one day, so I waddled on home and checked out the Crew 3's logs. Seems like they, instead of batteries for their sea glide, hooked up a power cell to get a speed boost, but I can only assume that MacGyver plan didn't turn out as well for them as they hoped. I took the time to unload when I heard a scary noise in the distance that has to be coming from a large creature in the distance. I did press on and scanned everything I could find until I found enough parts to unlock the mobile vehicle bay fully. Right after I got emergency announcement, Aurora is about to blow, and all I could do in the darkness of the night is just watch in awe as the mothership lit up like a firework factory laced with radiation. What a shame. And due to it being powered by radioactive substances, I received blueprints on how to make a radiation suit, so that was a pleasant surprise, I suppose. In the darkness, I got more metal and unlocked the sea glide. Plus, with some creep vine seeds and leaves harvested, I could return to my pod in the early hours of day 5 to make lubricant and batteries, which allowed me to make the sea glide, a handy dandy device that propels you forward in the water with a frontal flashlight. Very nice. With even more lubricant made, I also constructed the mobile vehicle bay, and when deployed, it pops out these nifty little builder drones. Sadly, I had no available recipes yet, so I just need to scan more parts, I suppose. I am close to fully learning how to make a sea moth, so that's nice. A pre-recorded distress call from Ozzy was picked up on the radio from the cafeteria of the Aurora, who was shocked about this whole ordeal and explains their pod was almost crushed on their way down and have landed on the edge of a cave system with some nasty steak things trying to eat through the hole. Seems like the chef is about to become a five-course meal himself. But hey, at least it had the coordinates attached for LifePod 17. I turned some creep vines into fiber mesh, which allowed me to make a med kit, and that's when another message popped up on the radio, this time from Officer Keen from LifePod 19, who has assumed command as the captain is gone. He received coordinates on dry land right before the captain died, so the orders are to regroup there one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash. Sadly, the coordinates for the location were corrupted, and only the transmission origin coordinates were saved. It's something, I suppose, but if we get to Pod 19, I think Officer Keen will already have left for the dry land. With a ton of food hunted down and cooked, and yes, turned into bottles, plus with spare batteries at the ready, I set out to the coordinates of Life Pod 17 since they were the ones in danger of being eaten by snakes. This led me to a new biome with red vegetation and more aggressive fauna, so I was on my toes, especially since large boulders with tentacles were in the distance. And just as the message explained, next to the pod was a deep cave, 90 meters deep, and is home to an unknown biome with extensive biodiversity. As I approached the broken pod, something bit me, but it was just a small little fish, not the snakes that were mentioned. The Pod 17 crew log was picked up and I rushed out quickly as I heard some unknown fish gnawing at the life pod that I was in, reaching the surface just in time to catch my breath. Looking around these large tentacled boulder fish, uh, they seem very slow and move in herds, noted. On the seafloor, I scanned more sea moth parts and came to realize that as of 100 meters, oxygen drains fast. That is very crucial info. At night, I refilled my food and water stats and swam into the direction of my pod. Bellowing noise in the night had me terrified, but I remembered I still needed to scan more sea moth parts. So I waited for the sun to rise and dove deep, scanned a bioreactor, and found out these giants are indeed gentle, big old sea cow clam squid things, known as reefbacks. And as their name suggests, they have a ton of different coral types on top of them. With the final sea moth scan complete, I swam home as before I go to the officer's pod, I wanted that built. The items required aren't too complex, so I got to work, starting with a very necessary third storage locker, gathering copper and acid shrooms, making power cells, glass, and then finally, the key to our success, the sea moth was made with the vehicle bay. The sea moth is a fast, safe mode of transport. But remember that swimming is good for your glutes and endorphin levels. I do not need a robot voice talking about my glutes. This speedy UFO-shaped submarine is fantastic. I love it already, and it moves around so smoothly. But before I would rush to the officer's coordinates, I played a new message from Avery Quinn from a ship known as the Sunbeam, who's attempting to make contact with us, but they are getting no info in return from us. So 
they get a little bit whiny with their comments complaining that they have to save an Altera ship that, you know, won't pick up. Altera is the company that uh, owns the Aurora, by the way. They are on the far side of the system and will take more than a week to get here and want to know if we really need help before making the whole trip. I can understand that. Sadly, I have no way to let them know that, yes, I do in fact need help. They will do long range scans in the meantime, but at least it looks like there is hope to get out of here. I got a spare power cell whipped up in case the moth runs out of power, stocked up on food and water, and zipped on over to Officer Keen's location. But it was way too dark for my liking. I just ended up waiting for sunlight before, you know, moving into unknown territory. Probably was a good call since on day 7 as I got to the general area, I was told that biodiversity is very low here. Doesn't mean that it's dangerous, it just sounds incredibly ominous. Going deeper and deeper, I found the pod was located in a hole, a very deep hole. So I got closer, but the sea moth suffered hull damage at these depths. So my instincts told me to go home to see if I can make some sort of improvements to my ride. Not because I was terrified to go into that hole. Totally not the reason why I went home. Back in the pod, I made an extra O2 tank, some glass, and all that plus some silver let me make a better O2 tank with improved capacity. But the Sunbeam had sent a new message, and they now picked up the colossal debris field at our location. Seems like he realizes the severity of the situation now, and is now on the way to get us home. But more voice came through as if they forgot to turn off comms, and they sound though as if the captain is not very confident on landing on this planet. Well, I'm not gonna just sit around and do nothing as I said. With the new tank I went back to the pod in the hole. Quickly, I went before night would fall, but I did get distracted by pieces of wreckage. Here I scanned stuff and noticed this door won't budge, and I will need more heavy-duty tools to break in. I swung on the high-capacity tank and approached the pod's location, diving for the last stretch where the sea moth could not go, trying to hide the fact that I am shivering in my flippers, going so deep unprotected as the rays of light faded with every passing meter. At the bottom of the pit was the pod that I was looking for. Here I learned how to make a ultra high capacity tank and inside got Officer Keen's crew log of Life Pod 19, along with the signal coordinates that were corrupted that had the information on where the dry land is and where hopefully all of us survivors will meet up. Swimming up I wasn't surprised that they left but thought to myself that at that depth as their crash point. I doubt they could even reach the surface before drowning. Safe inside my moth, I checked my blueprints and saw that I also learned how to make a rebreather. Not sure when I unlocked that, but that would be handy for these deep dives. And as for the ultra high capacity tank, I need lithium, which I have no clue where to get. The officer's note reads that he was forced to evacuate and we are to disregard his safety and make our way to the coordinates to regroup on the landmass, and that he hopes to see us there. Feels like I'm always a step behind. But before heading on over to the spot, I stayed here for a bit looking at the new types of fishes and got to scan a moon pool fragment. I was sure to keep my sea moth repaired to continue my scans as I was using it as a large range flashlight. And that was handy since that let me quickly fully unlock a thermal plant. Light was coming through the water so I knew a new day was here and continue to unlock the prawn suit torpedo arm. Not sure what it is, but I do want to fire some torpedoes that I do know. I also learned how to make a floodlight and grabbed the vehicle related blueprint, hydrochloric acid. On my way home I saw a massive resource node but needed special equipment to mine them. Coming across a debris field I scanned a scanner room as well as a vending machine. Plus the most exciting part, my first scan of a laser cutter, the tool needed to break through stuck doors. Since there were angry fishes in the area, I quickly wrapped up my scanning of the scanner room and went a bit further off and looked into the deep hole and within its belly I found out what the supposed biodiversity mentioned was like. Purple plants covered the area but before I went further I saw lava deep down below so I rushed out thinking this might be another gas hole and I'd prefer not to get burnt underwater. Plus I need to rehydrate so Back at my pod, I sorted that problem, refueled my flashlight, and went on the prowl for more sulfur. Which led me to go down this geyser, contradictory to what I just said, but here I found gold and more lead. It is pretty hot though when it spews out the gas, but I stayed in some more. With silver in hand, and with a ton of other resources, I went back to the fabricator to make a wiring kit. 
and I wanted to make a computer chip, but to make it, I was missing one table coral. Not exactly sure where I got the first one in my invo, so I prepared to go on a coral chopping spree. Oh, that was it. Okay. That wasn't very hard. <laughs> so, now I could make the chip. And by combining my components, I managed to make a habitat builder, essentially the tool that allows you to build your very own base. Before I could check it out though, I got another call from the Sunbeam, and eh, they were trying to be motivational, I guess, although in my opinion, rolled a nat 1 on their charisma check. But hey, at least they're looking for a place to park, so I just need to hold out a little bit longer. I wanted to start making a base, but I had neither the multi-purpose room unlocked, nor the moon pool, which I wanted to start the build with, so that means I need to scan even more. And to my surprise, I got a message from a new pod, number 6, and they have a passenger on board, plus attached their coordinates to their call. They are about one kilometer away from the crash, and can't reach the rendezvous point as there's radiation between them and the regroup spot. To my dismay, the coordinates ended up being corrupted. I don't know where to go at this point, just have an approximate transmission origin, which means nothing to me since I barely know this place. Corrupted this, corrupted that. You'd think they have good AI by now, but I guess not. Oh, mama, that's very far away. Oh, boy. Well, this should be fun. Searching for the room blueprints I mentioned, I wandered into this crate vine zone, being spooked by long fish, and I flinched and touched what seemed like a jellyfish which poisoned me. With carnivorous fish hunting me down in a panic, I swam in and around weaving tunnels, worsening my situation as Cartana summed up my dilemma very nicely. Be advised, a common complication for cave divers is loss of orientation, followed by eventual escapes. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ah, this is bad. This is so very bad. I swiftly picked up all precious metals in the area, cutting it close on my oxygen, but made it out alive. I kept at my research through the night and found out when scanning pieces you already know, you get titanium instead. But thanks to this intensive day of gathering and scanning, I made the compass as well as a grav trap, which I set free in the early hours of my 10th day on this abysmal planet, and I noticed it does just as the name implies, traps things with gravity. Essentially, I can pluck fishes from this easily, which is very convenient to restore my food. After that, not only did I get some more vines for some fiber mesh, but also lead and copper from the geyser. Oh, that is terrifying. No, 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 no. Eventually, my sea glide was out of juice, but I pressed on, getting one piece of lead in a cave, which was the last bit of resource I needed to make the radiation suit. Plus, with another wiring kit, assembled the rebreather. The med kit helped me heal my burns from the heat waves, charge the sea glide, and off I go for more blueprints since I still don't have the moon pool or multi-purpose room. This time I did search in the direction of the aurora and there was a lot to discover, like finishing all of my scans for the laser cutter. Excited I went to make it, but hold up, I need diamonds to make it. And you guessed it, that is another resource that I have no idea on where to get. So my only option was to keep swimming around frantically, trying to find good things to scan and new resources to mine. Oof. I'm so sorry. I would call this roadkill, but I don't know if that term applies here. Well, no point on letting them go to waste, so I got those and more from my fish trap, whipped up a barbecue, and made beacons to mark locations in case I find something useful in my travels. Day 11 was the day that I decided to go to the rendezvous point. Likely the sunbeam is gonna want to land there anyway, since like, there's not a whole lot of landmass to go around here. This brought me to a new biome with blue balls, and upon further inspection, they are called anchor pods. What confuses me is, if this is such an alien planet, how does the PDA have names for everything? Like, does it just make it up on the spot? I would say that if I'm the first to see them, I get to name them. This place had another massive piece of wreckage, so I just had to investigate. And I'm sure glad that I did, since not only did I find the moon pool piece that I needed, but also scanned the prawn suit drill arm fully. And if that wasn't enough, got the Cyclops depth module blueprint. No clue at this point what it is, but I'm excited. I caught my breath in the moth and then proceeded to enter the wreck but found nothing of interest inside oddly enough so I kept at scanning the plants here and from this angle I spotted a sealed door where I hadn't been in yet and well the lack of oxygen to my brain was starting to affect me in various ways. I see a sealed door in it but I can't open it. It says cut open to access. I have a laser cutter but it won't, it won't cut. Hey, screen. Isn't that the repair tool in your hands? Um, 
<laughs> I don't want to talk about it. This embarrassment led me to place a beacon here for later, which I named Nat is smarter than me, and moved on with my life, heading towards the rendezvous point. And as I got closer, I noticed this massive landmass was floating. That's some cool stuff. I went around it looking for a place to park, and I did so at this little beach. I stormed up thankful to set foot on dry land when Cortana told me there are multiple energy signatures on the island's surface and quickly came to come into contact with this land spider creature things that jumped and nipped me. I kept running along hoping to find at least one person alive, but the night was so dark I couldn't see a thing. The only positive so far was I found these lantern fruits I could eat, which probably is what kept me alive. Eventually I stumbled upon some really rusty structures that look like the ones I can make, but these are old. This place even had its own farm, but based on these buildings, it must be here from before our crash. Inside, I found a PDA from a crew of the Degasi ship that had been lost a long time ago, and a bizarre purple tablet. I can understand through the PDA that there are three people that formed the Degasi group, that being Paul, Marguerite, and Bart. It seems like Marguerite found this purple tablet. They talk with each other of what it could be used for and where it could be from, assuming it's likely aliens, but for all they know, it could be from the sea monsters, and are determined to find out its purpose. In these ruins, I also got the plans to make ultra glide fins, and later a new PDA from Paul, whose last name is Torgal, and another Degasi PDA, plus some handy dandy batteries to keep me going. Some fruit for breakfast was a nice change of pace from all my alien fish that I had been eating before, and here's when I listened to the new notes. And for new context, Bart is Paul's son. They are in a heavy storm and Paul tells Bart to not leave the base during it to tend to the farm. Yet Bart basically gives him the old nuh uh treatment since his dad seems to be the cause why their ship sank. Yet Paul still believes he is in charge. Marguerite butts in but essentially was just being highly sassy but makes a good point that the farm needs to be tended to. So Bart went and did so. This is where in private Paul threatens Marguerite to leave them here when rescue comes if Marguerite messes with their family business again. Marguerite replies by saying, help is just not coming in time and the storms will ruin them here and they need to move. Paul Torgold's PDA reads that at this point of recording, they had been here for five weeks and apparently they also call Marguerite Maida, who is a mercenary. He explains that after washing up here, he sent Maida to check the Degasi wreck and sent his son to find a stable source of food. I don't know, I've been managing just fine with all of the fish, I don't see the problem. He says Maida has been a problem, as they don't agree on much it seems, and Maida is very trigger happy, let's just put it at that. Yet through all this, he is staying hopeful that they will survive here, since he is expecting an insurance company to come to the rescue. Maybe that's the Aurora team? Maybe that's what we were supposed to do, kind of? I don't know. I later came across another PDA at a tunnel, which I played as I explored. Maida blames Paul for bringing them here, promising a big payday for whatever mission they had planned. Yet six weeks later, all they have is a dead crew, half-buried habitat, and not enough food. Paul claps back, essentially referring to Maida as not someone fit to make decisions, and Maida fires back, saying they shouldn't have made a detour to Uncharted Planets. They express they should take what they have and find a new cave to settle into. And there's one nearby, but deep underwater. The benefit being that there are plenty of metal deposits where they want to go. And sounds like that's what they went and did. I trekked up one of the hills on the island and made it to another abandoned base, which has veggies inside. Here's also where Degasi Log 1 was, where basically the three were bickering on where to move to, since the ocean means more resources and food but predators, and land means no predators but not enough food. I don't know, there's a lot of fruit outside, I checked, like I don't, I, I still don't see the issue. But the sun explains that based on the growth of the fruit, staying here is not sustainable. I guess Mr. Know-it-all. Once I stumbled and fumbled my way down the cliff, I got some melons from the first base we saw, and made my way to the final base where, on the path I scanned one part of a stasis rifle and a spotlight. Some water was here, which was just what I needed, and got a PDA from Bart Torgal, and was nice to see that an internal garden they made was still growing. Bart, in his note, states he returned from the depths after spending months underwater. Seems like this note from Bart is after they established the underwater base. He goes on that he can't enjoy being here alone, and that his father was right to have never left this island since something below does not want them there. To make matters worse, he is sick and having visions, and based on the part that Maida and his father are now part of this planet's ecosystem, well, I think that's just a fancy way of saying uh, they've been sent to Davy Jones' locker. 
Also, yeah, he himself doesn't sound like he's going to be around for much longer. Finally reaching the rendezvous point, I see it as a pond with no one here. Nice. All that's left is a PDA from someone named Yu, and they intend to board the Aurora, fix the comms to contact all survivors, and it seems like only they and Officer Keen made it. Keen expresses those are not the captain's orders and says that they are not the orders he's giving to you. But you makes a good point. This is all about survival now. But Keen just won't understand. Yet both end up wandering off to the Aurora to do Yu's plan. But there was an emergency transmission from Officer Keen here, seemingly after them having left. Two hours since last activity, it says. Here Keen says regrouping was a failure. And uh, yeah, y'all didn't wait for me. Thank you very much. But apparently the Aurora did intercept the transmission from the main company Altera, that being a data package. Sadly, a Leviathan-class predator intercepted them before they made it to the Aurora, and uh, based on my super professional detective analysis, um, they dead. The sun was setting after a long day, so I hopped into my moth, said goodbye to the only dry land in sight, and made my way back to my home in the shallows and arrived by midnight where I had a message played from Pod 13 from some Kassar fellow. At first I thought his first name was Gnocchi, like the pasta, who sounded a tad snobby, but the message automatically requested a burial detail. Well, I can bury him if the fishes don't eat him first. These coordinates luckily weren't corrupted, so that's a relief, but I did want to make a moon pool first, but needed more supplies for the build. Look, it's said to send a burial detail. I'm not too rushed to go somewhere risky where most likely the other person is already dead. So I got to do what I could. Oh, oh, ah! But in due time, I made the moon pool that I wanted, which is nice since it is a parking spot for my vehicles. But when entering, I got alerted that it doesn't have enough energy to produce oxygen. So I got some copper and made a solar panel on top of it, which got it to work correctly, allowing me to dock my moth now. Also added a larger locker to store materials, placed a fabricator in here so I don't have to go to my life pod all the time, and transferred my things from the old storages into the moon pool at night. Day 14 had me making more structures, like this X-tube compartment, explored for quite a while for more materials, especially in this cave system. At base now, I placed a radio inside so I wouldn't miss any messages, and there was one from the Sunbeam. The they were approaching the planet and found a landing site and attached the coordinates. It'll take them a couple of days to align their orbit, and conveniently, I got a countdown timer on my hood for when they would arrive, and they emphasized to not leave them waiting, so I should try my best to be on time wherever the landing spot is. In hopes to make my moth faster, I made a vehicle upgrade station, but there's nothing to add speed, it seems. So I made a depth module, which would have been really handy dandy at that deep sunken pod from Officer Keen. I also got to paint this vehicle here, and once I was happy with the paint job, I named it the Wet Feather. At night, I hunted down some fish and got uncooked and prepped on day 15 as rations for the long trip ahead to meet with the sunbeam. But there was still a good amount of time left, so I went on over to figure out what happened at Life Pod 13. Hey, this Gnocchi dude is a high priority passenger. Maybe he's got some cash on him or something. I don't know. This trip got me into a brand new biome with what looks like mushroom trees and had some cool looking glowing jelly stingray things. And once at the pod's crash site, yeah, not a single human in sight. But I did grab the PDA. Sounds like Kassar was praying in his final moments as the pod was plummeting through the atmosphere. And by the end of it, was ready to face his forever sleep. Oh, well, that's that then. All right. What was more relevant to my survival was that this place had lithium. Then again, I'm about to be picked up, so not like I'm gonna, you know, have to last on this planet much longer. This place was also littered with Cyclops scannable parts, so I learned those as I continued to gather lithium and other valuable resources in the area. But Cortana had a very important message to tell me. Remember the materials you gather are the property of the All Terra Corporation. You will be liable to reimburse the full market price. Your current bill stands at 3 million credits. So you're telling me that just by the simple act of surviving that I'm going bankrupt. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's that's one thing I needed on my on my list of worries. Thank you. Going into cave systems, I found a bizarre structure that looked like an entrance of alien origin. Oh, it's not every day that you see a door made of bubbles, and I got 30 seconds left, so here we go. Hello? Anybody home? Ooh, what this? Very pretty. And incredibly useless. Well, I'm going home.
On the way back, I scanned more Cyclops parts as well as parts of the modification station, and just kept at it every time I came across any sort of debris field. With a ton of precious loot, I got back to base, where I decided to make this here storage module and add it to the wet feather. Day 16 was the day where I would finally be rescued by the sunbeam, but before I would leave, I added a glass wall since I think it's pretty, and noticed at some point I got a single diamond. Never realized it, but I must have picked it up where I was getting all the lithium. Either way, off I go to the coordinates, and after a long swim, I got to a brand new landmass, and by its shape, I understand the captain's worries on somehow landing here. But in the distance, I caught a glimpse of a bizarre looking entity that came out of a portal? Look, I'm about to be saved, I have no need to figure out what that is right now. With more Cyclops parts scanned, I almost ended up being nipped by this little fella, saved by the wet feather yet again. Around the island, deep underwater, I saw what I can only assume to be a massive alien cube connected with mechanical tubes, and looking above the water, I saw the base extended onto land. Investigating the area, I came to this seemingly locked force field sealed door, and a purple tablet which I scanned. Approaching the door, I found a pedestal that allowed me to insert said purple tablet, which granted yours truly access to an alien flippin' base. I want that back, by the way. It's a souvenir from my mama. Well, we're a little bit early. I don't see why we can't do a little bit of... Exploring. Scans indicate this structure is composed of a metal alloy with unprecedented integrity. Wow, I would have never no guessed. No matches found in database. Performing structural analysis. Do you do that? I'm actually going to go do something useful, which is uh, steal everything inside. Ooh. Data terminal. Okay. Unknown language. Attempting translation. You you attempt that. You know what? I know what this is. I know a Bitcoin farm when I see one. What's this? Ion Cube. Ooh, pretty. I'll be taking that too. Much appreciated. Your best probability of interfacing with this facility is achieved by accessing the control room in the lower section. Control room in the lower section, you say? Oh. Shiny cubes. All right. I will take them all. Like, my Uber is gonna be here in a second. Just give me everything. Yeah, we could do that on the way home. I gotta get everything before I go, man. Oh. Oh. Eh! Ah! Easy. Hello. And I, I was proud of my moon pool. Whoever built this really outdid me. My peeps are gonna be here in like four minutes. I gotta pick up the pace. Give it to me, thank you. Oh, what are you? Hey, cool, they play Destiny. Alright. Scans indicate the facility's control room lies beyond this doorway. Okay. Ah, oh, don't tell me I went all this way for nothing. I need another tablet. Ah, fine. <laughs> Never mind. We take the keys we need. And we shall progress to the control room, because that sounds important. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, 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 gotta go. Ka-ching. Cash money, baby. I'm gonna plunder this pyramid. We're getting off this rock. Oh. oh. Hello. Okay, well, okay. We're right under... Okay, so we're in the tower based on the cords on that, so... You know what? That's good. Hello. Oh, boy. Hi! Uh, oh. Well. The control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads, Warning, infected individuals may not disable the weapon. What do you this mean? This planet is under quarantine. What do you mean quarantine? Okay, so that's all I got out of this? It's just that, that I'm infected and I can't go? I gotta go. My people are gonna pick me up. You, you, you do with that information what you want, Mr. Robo Tentacle. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Beam me up, Scotty. There you go. There we go. I heard something. Was that them? What's that? What's that noise? Are we playing ominous noises? What? We're about to the okay. I'm here, guys. Don't just just don't leave without me, okay? 
Look, I know I'm late. I know I promised I wouldn't be. But, oh, hear me out. Like, if I hear some jet thrusters taking off without me, I swear to God. Oh, all right, we're cool. We're cool. All right. Picking up orbital transponder signature of trading vessel Sunbeam. Vessel is approaching planet surface and initiating surface scanning procedures. Detecting uh, from the hey, yo, buddy, you might want to pull up there. Pull up. Vessel signature loss. Yeah, no flipping. <laughs> you know, with all this yip yapping that you do, AI voice, you, you might want to have warned them a little bit sooner. Because I think I see their remains amongst those little pieces of cinders in the sky. Now what am I supposed to do? That was my one ticket out of here. I'm going home. I need a nap. Well, then that changes things. All I can do is return back to base to come up with some crazy plan to either save myself or be stuck here forever. Whoa! Oh! 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 oh. No! No! Mm-mm. I'm not dying now, okay? Tense and worried, I got back to my moon pool. And hoping for a good message on the radio on day 17, I was shocked to hear aliens on the other end. Nine new biological subjects designated. Moon. Hunting. Analyzing. Sharing subject locations with other agents. Nice. So, uh, as it stands, just to, you know, list everything that's going on, um, a way out of here is gone. I need fluid intake. And, uh, alien hunters are after me, and in case I do manage to get off of here, the IRS is after my butt cheeks due to the fact that I am using resources to survive. Uh, so that's great. Glad we're all on the same page here. Surprisingly, I can craft the purple tablets thanks to having scanned it. Very few options were left to me on what to do, so I whipped on the radiation suit and got near the Aurora as I was trying to find the Degasi base that was mentioned. You know, they talked about moving underwater to a place with a lot of metal and such. I did find a coffee machine that I learned to make, which is key to my ongoing survival, but what would be like super cool is if I could find another flippin' diamond to make the laser cutter to get into wreckages with all their goodies inside. The crash site had plenty of useful scans for me lying around, like more of the Cyclops bridge as well as the engine. Among the resources I was getting, I found a propulsion cannon, so that sounds like a handy dandy weapon to make later on. Pretty much all day was spent here getting everything scanned and looted, but from time to time I did hear scary noises in the far far distance that sent shivers down my spine. It took some courage to continue scanning, but I was rewarded by finishing the Cyclops blueprint. And I can only assume this whole time I had been near the Leviathan class predator the pads had mentioned. What is that noise? Oh, I, I, that, what's that? That is exactly where I was just before I skedaddled. Your big menacing roar gave you away, big friend. Alright, well, there's something big here, and. I'm not gonna lie, the hair on my neck is standing up straight, so uh, I'm gonna go home and uh, pretend like I never saw that. The next day I added more storage since, well, I feel like I'm gonna be here for a very long time, but at least I have a coffee machine now. You look like you could use some coffee. Coffee completed. There we go. That's good stuff. Good old instant coffee. Straight up petrol in my veins. This was a resource gathering day, so I went high and low and searched for supplies and scans. When I finally got to the hole that leads to the Degasi base, maybe I can find some clues there on what they found. Among the lush purple ecosystem, I quickly spotted an old destroyed base, and Cortana here told me there are some predators around. How nice. Checking in and out of the place, I scanned everything in sight and got a new metal known as Magnetite, right after the modification station was also unlocked, and here is where I realized that I can scan any structure to learn it. So I got me the multi-purpose room that I wanted this whole time, plus the observatory, and unlocked the power cell charger. Inside these ruins, if you can call them that, I scanned the jelly creatures, furnitures, and a big old filtration machine, and looted a PDA from Bart Torgel. 
With everything going on, I almost drowned, but clutched it. I went right back in and found another PDA from Bart and finished doing all the scans that I could find. My exit could have been smoother as I got stung by the tentacles, but I will live, unlike the Degasi. Since I was here, I was sure to stock up on magnetite for whatever future use it might have, which led me to a sort of landing pad looking place. Not much here, just a spare battery. And these purple shrooms are home to what I think are the snakes that were mentioned gnawing at the hole of one of the pods that we found. Don't seem aggressive, but then again, I'm not getting close enough to test that theory. I took the time to read the notes that I got, and in summary, there are alien facilities. A disease research facility at 800 meters, where there is information on the cure to the bacteria known as Kara that is plaguing me and everything else around. Plus a thermal power facility at flippin' 1,200 meters in a volcanic area. The first PDA of Torgal states the three moved in here, and Bart seems amazed by the variety of fishes. Seems to enjoy it here, but mentions that most plants are toxic, but manage to grow melons indoors. I want to learn that ASAP, but yeah, seems like they're chilling here, learning about this planet. The second note reads that they learned how to make enabled, enabled, I don't know how to say it, uh, strong glass, but needed stalker teeth, the long fishes. And seems like Maida was willing to help retrieve some, and yeah, Maida cleaned up a whole pack of stalkers with just a heat blade and got a whole bag full of the stuff, however, was wounded in the process. Not very serious though. Back to the glass bit, however, the glass seems to be useful in making stronger glass structures. With all that info and loot, I got out of the hole and returned back to HQ, arriving during the day when the strangest thing happened. Whoa, what the- whoa, whoa! Hey! Hey, yay, yay! Hey! What are you? What- what do you mean, what are you? What are you? What the f*** was that? Right after whatever the heck that was, a message got through from Pod 4, who landed close to the Aurora and managed to stay afloat. But some big fish is near them. They don't know how long they will last out there. They recommend bringing radiation protection when looking for them. And of course, the coordinates are corrupted. Come on, Cortana. All we got now is an approximate origin location of the message. Before I would search for the pod, I made the multi-purpose room and then did a little bit of a whoopsie by adding this vertical connector since that caused hole damage causing my entire base to flood. So I was forced to add some reinforcements to a wall to strengthen the dang thing then repair the holds, which made the system auto-drain the flooding. Nice. Now just take away this connector before it happens again. Day 20 and after adding a tube to the room, I was going ham on resources to make the Cyclops, which needs a ton of stuff, like Plasteel Ingots, the strong version of glass which I'm too embarrassed to pronounce, and more. So I made a wiring kit to start, and combined that with some more things to make an advanced wiring kit. That's one of the important Cyclops parts done. But my focus was broken as I got a call from Altera HQ who says they can't send rescue ships out here and we need to meet them halfway. Um, I'm sorry, do you understand the situation that I'm in, good sir? He states they uploaded some very important blueprints to the Aurora's computer, and as though taunting me, the person begins to argue with another lad about ordering sandwiches. The regular. Yeah, she'll know what I mean. The code should and be. If she doesn't? Just tell her the regular, dude. Okay. The if I say regular, she's like, what's the regular? I have to come all the way back up here. The code should be 2679. The regular is just a ham and cheese. Okay, would you just say ham and cheese? Ham and cheese. Okay. Okay, so we got the code for the black box. That's good, I guess. But before I went there, I added a sonar module to the wet feather and made a list of important resources that I would need being lithium, diamonds, rubies, and the stalker teeth. I was going to the Degasi base in the hole, but kind of got lost in the dark. So, looking for it dragged into day 21, but I made it, this time left a beacon since this place is rich in resources and I'll be sure to visit often. And I was overwhelmed as I immediately started to find not only diamonds, but also lithium, so much that I just could not stop. The storage module on the wet feather came in handy, here to make this trip even more worth it, but as I got deeper into this massive cave system, I heard a scary noise that almost made me turn back, but I kept going and got to some thermal vents, which I passed and got to yet another base, but before I could enter, I had an encounter with the snakes. Whoa. Hey. 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 Stop it. Good thing they are easily distracted, so in I go only to find a single medkit. 
that's all I could find, and again, I heard a very spooky noise in the distance. Moving on, I found a PDA randomly at a structure which automatically sent me some coordinates of what seemed to be the calculated ideal spot to build a base. After yet another snake attack, I had to repair our moth and go look for an exit, and the more time I spent here, the louder the monstrous noises got. After desperately looking everywhere, I finally found the exit and made it to the surface at night, and this here was a joyful night, as thanks to the diamonds, I could at last make the darn laser cutter. But before I'd go to the wreckages, I first unloaded all of the valuables that I just brought back. 22 started with an automated message from Pod 12, for which I got the coordinates. It sunk beyond safe diving levels and recommends to not retrieve it without a submersible support. Must be referring to making the Cyclops, the submarine we have been trying to make this whole time. I thought to myself, maybe if I go wreckage diving, I can find the things needed for the Cyclops passively, so that is what I did. Into the general direction of Pod 12 and got to a very blue looking biome with very little light as we passed 200 meters, even saw some electric eel looking things in the area, and had to dodge tons of sharks. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. Carefully I checked around this large piece of the aurora, scanning a few pieces of furniture, when some psychic power grabbed a hold of my mind. It is your primary directive Whoa. to swim what? closer to that beautiful What the heck is happening here? Some useful blueprints were obtained here, like the lightweight high capacity tank, when I was reminded that I am not safe in this slightest. <gasps> no, no! Go, 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 go! Oh. I was getting quite parched and had no water on me, so I got back home to set some coffee to brew and started to make titanium ingots, which were turned into plasteel ingots, but I'm still one short. So, to end off the day, I placed a handy dandy modification station for tool upgrades. Also, I did not forget about the beacon labeled Nat is smarter than me, and that is where I went on day 23. Got into the wreckage this time, and found a blueprint for the Cyclops docking bay repair module. So either we dock the Cyclops, or dock vehicles into it, I'm not sure. Heading over to another spot, I fully unlocked the battery charger, and got a government profile PDA. Something about the Mongolian independent states. On the way back, I was sure to stop at a lava pit for good material hunting, and ended up making the last plasteel ingot on day 24. So now all that is left is to go get some stalker teeth. I even tried to feed them some fishy fishes to try and gain their trust. Eventually, I got two teeth and made the better glass, but still need one more tooth, which thankfully was retrieved super easily, allowing me to make the last strong piece of glass, plus some lubricant, so there. I have all of the things for our Cyclops, but needed to build it in deeper water, and I didn't know that I could pick up my vehicle bay at the time, so I got more lubricant for a new mobile vehicle bay, and made a battery charger to not have to keep making new ones. But yes, at 25 days on this forsaken hellhole of a planet, I finally got a vehicle bay placed deep enough. This took me a while, but don't worry, I learned that you can pick them up and place them again. And there she is! The Cyclops is made, and learned a decoy system for it in the process. It's a massive sub for sure, and I was so excited to try it out, right after this reef pack stops bumping into me. I brought him all the way to base and began to paint this hunk of steel, and, well, all I can say is with this submarine sporting my colors, say hello to sub to my weenie. It does use a ton of power cells to function, so a power cell charger would be a good thing to work towards, and I did figure out that you can have vehicles dock into it to charge them and repair them. I did do a quick titanium run to add this fabricator into the sub for convenience sake, plus a locker, radio, coffee machine, vending machine, which magically dispenses chips by the way, leading me to now have infinite food and drink, albeit not very nutritious. Lastly, I made the upgrade that would actually allow me to repair the dock vehicles, which in this case is the wet feather, and now we finally could make it safely all the way to pod 12, which is so so deep, and dear lord it gets dark fast at these depths. When you think it can't get any scarier, oh it can, it can. Sometimes yellow dots appeared on my radar that moved around but didn't seem to show themselves to me, which was a relief as now I was within close distance of the pod. But the dots came back, and not only that, they turned red, which followed by a creature attacking my weenie. Thankfully I lost aggro quickly and set this up to silent mode to attract less predators. Once the coast seemed semi-clear, I hopped into the wet feather for the last stretch, and at the seabed I opened a chest that got me the plans to make a repulsion cannon, and grabbed Pod 12's PDA. 
which was from a medical officer, Donby, who admits to having cheated his way through medical school with the excuse that doctors in our future setting leave all of the heady duty surgery to robots. He is bleeding and has green pustules, which he of course does not know how to treat because one, it's an alien disease, and two, this man's a fraud. He himself thinks he's gonna die down here, and well, Doc, that is likely the first and last correct diagnosis you've made, good sir. I got to the surface immediately and made my way to the Degasi base from before for further investigation, which paid off as I found a PDA that I missed last time. Sadly, all the info it had on it was just some useless money talk between Paul and Bart. PDA number six was also looted, and this had more juicy information. Meta wants to go even deeper and Paul voices his disapproval, but Meta makes a point that they have water leaking in, water is everywhere outside, they are essentially always on the verge of drowning as it is. Also here Meta says that they were indeed shot down, so that is proof that the same cannon that shot the Aurora hit them too. Bart had located an anomaly with his scanner further down, and Meta had made up their mind to go even deeper even if the other two would not follow, and threatens them that their authority stopped at sea level. Well then, I guess I need to find that anomaly thingamabobber, but I needed to go home first for a snack as I was very hungry. I munched on potato chips that were conjured up out of thin air, yet, as you would expect, they lacked in the nutrition, so I went back to my fish-eating ways, charged up my batteries, and saw that I would need rubies to make the power cell charger. Without it, all the many cells that are in the Cyclops would run out and be useless, so that is my next goal. In this crafting station, I turned my knife into a heat blade, and holding it makes me feel like I'm playing Valorant all of a sudden. Besides from wanting the power cell charger, I saw I needed more scans done for this stasis rifle and the cannon, so let's add that to our to-do list. And heading out should be smoother sailing as of now, since the new heat blade cooks my prey instantly, so I don't need to resort to emergency potato chips. I figured the closest place I haven't looked for resources and scans would be behind the crashed Aurora. I mean, I have a radiation suit for a reason, so that's where I went. However, little did I know that this place had some big problems. Oh, 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 what the heck? No, 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 no. What was that? Oh, it's coming. No, no, go away. Silent running, leave me alone. Oh. Okay, uh, so we figured out what the fin was. So here is where my pride got the better of me. And I thought to myself, the sea moth is pretty fast. I'm sure I could outspeed any threat out there. And I didn't want to leave without checking the area. But it did get dark in the blink of an eye and uh... Man, those roars and lack of vision is just too much. Like, if I'm gonna die, I wanna see it happen. So I did end up running back home for my repair gun, but I didn't know where I left mine, so I built a new one and got to repair the weenie after the attack, but this had me very confused since I tried to repair this leak inside, just it just wouldn't work. As the day passed, I noticed the massive hologram indicating the damaged location. Sadly, I was dumb and ran around inside thinking to find it, but I did now see there was plenty of storage lockers available built into the weenie. Once I gave up on trying to figure out how to repair my sub, I went off in the wet feather to get back to the Aurora, and once there, with my scan ability, I could see the beast in all of its wiggly terror. It is huge, and way too close, and that is where I got face to face with this leviathan. <gasps> oh no. Ah, no, 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 get, get off me, get off me. No! Shoot! Fuck up! I gotta go. Once I was freed from its jaws, I jetted onto the back end of the Aurora, and to my luck, it did not follow. Maybe because this ship keeps making everything here shake. This gave me the time to repair the feather, and the tremors just seemed to be getting worse. And all this tension did not seem to be paying off, since I was finding nothing of use here in the danger zone. The only thing left to check was for a way to get into the ship but no entrance was spotted on this side. Turns out that in fact, yes, no one builds entrances to a large intergalactic ship where the thrusters are. Who would have thought? So I made a long way around to the other end, but darkness consumed the depths and the sound of more of these leviathans spooked me back home. A new attempt was made on day 29 to get to the front end when I stumbled on a floating life pod. After a quick investigation, I found a blueprint for creature decoys and the crew log of pod four. 
The person mentions the area has highly aggressive Leviathan-class predators that are called Reapers, and this Reaper tried to swallow the pod whole. Sounds like what I went through with my sea moth. They will attempt to make a break for the Aurora using creature decoys to avoid the Reapers, but if we cannot find them on board, we can safely assume that uh, the man's being digested as we speak. Now, more motivated than ever, I managed to find my way to the absolutely destroyed front end of the Aurora and stepped foot on the middle flooring where after playing exterminator on the spider things, I got to an entrance that I could not get through. I suppose I need the cannon tool to move this junk out of the way. So I figured maybe the last scan is close by in the radioactive waters, but the reapers, man, they are way too close and seem to be on the hunt. So running away from them a bit, I got to the blue biome again, where I made my way to this piece of wreckage. Swam inside, opened a sealed door, where a PDA was grabbed, which I read in the safety of my moth, but it had a lot of seemingly big legal words and whatnot, and a quick glance seemed very irrelevant to my survival. So I went back in for a second time, where I got the Cyclops scanner upgrade, which I was really happy to find, plus some extra batteries and I wanted to make the scanner upgrade immediately so I returned to the weenie. Since I need Ruby's stat to progress with my crafting goals and the cannon blueprint to get into the ship, I started searching for a very good long while, going through so many piles of stone and dirt, until finally this crimson colored gem was uncovered at last. Ooh, you just made me a very happy man. And to further my embarrassment, this ruby was located at the beacon named uh, Nat is smarter than me. It was here this whole time! I could have been so much further along if I would have just looked around a bit more. So I kept my eyes peeled for anything else and spotted a thin cave opening. So at the depth of 300 meters I dove in since the feather won't fit and it was well worth it. Coming across Uraninite which might be a very useful power source plus more rubies. So I stayed here a while loading up the wet feather and left a beacon at this spot for more accurate future attempts at ruby collection. Once I had my fill, I swam back to the weenie and made my way to base for some much needed upgrades, which came in the form of a power cell charger which was placed inside of the weenie, however at that time I didn't know that this was actually a mistake to place it inside. My desire to get more rubies and lithium landed me somehow close to the aurora in reaper territory. Got some rubies thankfully and carefully wiggled my way past the reaper's line of sight and got to walk on the aurora again. This time I was sure to explore a bit more. Clumsy me did fall off a flimsy rail into the waters below, but survived. Made my way up again by the time the sun was setting. A fire extinguisher was looted from a chest which allowed me to gain access to a doorway I hadn't seen here before. Inside I quickly came to a split path and sadly even though we seemed to be in the aurora's wi-fi range, Cortana can't download the information sent from the black box remotely. So I have no choice but to get to that spot and download it manually. A PDA from a robo drone was found and all I can tell from it is there are repulsion cannons and propulsion cannons. I managed to scan to flip a propulsion cannon piece. Deeper into the burning belly of the beast I wandered, finding a note to self PDA in the new room, which has the access code to the cargo bay with the number 1454. Plus, at this terminal downloaded the Altera info to the launch of the Aurora. TLDR, we are far, far from home and I think we were supposed to build a face gate somewhere. My investigation here was set on pause once I got to a path that was blocked. So in the morning of day 32, I got out, parked in the moon pool, and played a message from pod 7. It was pretty straightforward, pod is fine, but in this case the fabricator is a bust. And yeah, coordinates corrupted, as you would expect. This is a rather unfortunate trend we are seeing. But I know it's 200 meters deep in a place with low ecological activity, approximately one kilometer southwest of the crash site. But I need to do one thing at a time and focus on making the propulsion cannon since maybe that one person who swam to the aurora on it is still alive, and this tool that lets me grab and yeet things is just what I needed. Remember how I forgot to do a self-scan many many days ago? Well I got to it now. Look, I've been busy. And the scan states that I'm infected with a bacteria that is progressing rapidly. I got skin irritations and an immune system response. So things went from bad to I'm about to be dead. I stupidly set my power cells to charge inside of the Cyclops and made my way back to the Aurora in hopes to explore it fully this time. And thanks to the cannon, I could get into the bottom entrance. A lab access PDA got me the code 6483 and close to it was a locked door and a broken off panel that said cargo. So I figured this was the cargo bay, so I put in that code, 
that did not work. Turns out it is actually the laboratory. So with that put in, I took a peek inside and tried to download data from this data bank and it detected the corruption on my PDA and resynchronized my repulsion cannon blueprint. Not really sure what that means. And on the nearby desk got a PDA, something about a hive mind on Strader 6. Had a lot of mumbo jumbo in that that seemed very irrelevant. Might regret not looking at it seriously, but eh, who knows. I was sure to pick up any decor items I came across, like this microscope, and then moved on. Found a rectangular room with an air pocket on top. It was here where I finally found the Aurora Black Box data. Time to uncover what really happened to the Aurora, but we kind of already know everything. The ship tried to do a slingshot maneuver near the planet, was about to get shot down, sent emergency signals to Altera, got shot, sent out life pods, and everything just went kablooey. And I don't know if I'm reading this right, but seems like as of 8 hours from the crash, only one human seems to be alive, and I'm no doctor, but I assume that is me. And if that's true, I'm Riley Robinson, so at least I can assume everyone is dead and I don't need to make risky attempts to rescue anyone. Moving through debris and tubes, I reached a hangar full of mech suits. And here is where Cortana picked up a faint black box signature, which is good since I assume that that is the plans at the captain's place that has the info from Altera on how to get saved. These suits are in fact the prawn suits we got some arm scans for, so that's a prawn suit scanned and up I go the stairway, which had the entrance to the living quarters. Got more PDAs, poster decor, and food. Scanned more furniture across the bedrooms and lounges. Oddly enough, this one PDA has voice logs of two people breaking up in detail, and relationships in the future seem like contracts. It is very bizarre. And another PDA of Altera's ARLM pamphlet reads that they don't believe in charity work, stating that if someone is in need, they must find a way to be needed. Sounds like the future is a very brutal social environment. A travel bag was taken with and then found the captain's quarters, so I entered the code that I had gotten in a PDA to get our prize. First some figurines, and then the essential data, blueprints for a rocket ship sent by Altera. Also, a new poster, very nice. One room I could not access was cabin 1 since I did not know the code for it, so I went to look around some more, repaired a door to get through, where there was a PDA named Sweet Offer, and it was the code for cabin 1. Perfecto! This area seems like it has much more in store, like paths to the drive room and Seamoth Bay, but before I would check those, I backtracked to the cabin 1 to complete that section. Inside the cabin was a PDA specifying how relationships work here, so I discarded it entirely. At least I got a hat though. Plus a shelf scan and an arcade toy. I'm gonna make a sweet bedroom at base with all this decor. Day 34, as I attempted to enter the sea moth bay, a fish latched onto my arm. In a panic, I whacked it off. Apparently some creatures can survive the radiation here. So before anything else, I snatched the booger and yeeted it out of the water for a slow and painful death. Now, into the sea moth bay I go. Here was a PDA that mentioned people till this day use VR to play games. I think that would be considered retro in the time we find ourselves in. But yeah, seems like this room is useless. So I went to the drive room, which has received internal damage, and I should not try to repair anything without proper qualifications. Well, I am sorry, but there is no one on this planet with the proper qualifications. This room with four pillars seems to be where the radiation is leaking from, and as I was about to loot a Cyclops engine efficiency module, Cortana said the radiation is at its maximum level here. I scanned this damaged section and shocker, the drive core is damaged, so I made the effort to repair all of the breaches in each core while simultaneously dodging these crab leech things. With the final breach sealed, the radiation levels began to decrease. My work here is done. Hopefully now the impact on the environment isn't long lasting. As I trekked my way on back, I did find an MK1 Seamoth death module. Nifty little reward, I would say. Up ramps I went, finding more useless PDAs, but got to the top passage, the one that was blocked. Removed the obstacles and got through, grabbing one final poster on my way out. And man, fresh air has never felt this good. I was overjoyed that I got everything that I came here for. Got the escape plans, and at least rest assured that no other survivors are struggling to survive as we speak. They are in a better place now. <gasps> Hopefully. No. No. Please don't. Please don't. No. I just, I just got everything. Oh, we're safe. Oh, we're safe. Home at last! Exhausted, I figured it is time for something fun, and that would be to deck out my bedroom. In short, added some plant walls, an aquarium with posters behind it, a double bed, put fishes into said aquarium, installed glass windows, chair and counters, unloaded all of my decor items, and lastly, a trash can next to my desk. 
Productive day for sure, and I'm loving the looks of things. And 36, aside from placing a spotlight for a better view from my bedroom, the day was all about upgrades. Sadly, the Seamoth depth module don't stack, but I did add the efficiency module to the weenie and made the sonar upgrade too. As for the Neptune rocket to get out of here, we need to make the launch pad first, and the required items are fairly simple. And as for the prawn suit, it says resources unknown. Well, crap, I guess I didn't scan enough prawn suits in the ship. Just my luck. So for now, I grinded to get all the things that I needed for the launch pad, and I did get everything, but just like the sub, needs to be built in deeper waters. But no worries, I got it set up in the morning of day 37, and it's a massive boy, oh yes indeed. And climbing up on top of it, it has its own crafting station. Seems like we need to build something called a gantry. No idea what that is, my English vocabulary doesn't go that far. But the prawn suit was still in the back of my mind, so I returned to the Aurora, hopefully for the last time, got into the prawn bay successfully, and fully unlocked the suit. Plus got a storage module for it. Heading out, I charted course for the magnetite cave, hoping maybe there's lithium in there, but nope, just magnetite, snakes, and very scary noises. I searched until I was out of water, so I had no choice but to get out of this cave to fill my stats on day 38. Then check the prawn suit requirements, and I see it needs aerogel, something new around every corner. I went to look for more lithium, since I still found no good farming spot for it, and reached a floating island section with a large wreck that had one scan of the prawn suit propulsion arm, and the surrounding area had lithium and rubies, but not in high quantities. What it did have was a ton of annoying shark things. After some more gathering, I discovered a trench-like area, but before I could uncover its secrets, some sharks attacked, causing me to retreat and repair. At my next attempt, I checked and found nothing of use, really, but it's also really dark, so I can't be sure because I can't see anything. I docked the feather, and things got even worse since the sub was out of power, and managing the batteries was a nightmare. My mistake was that the power cell charger is in the sub, so to charge the batteries, it uses its own power, so I had been dwindling my own power supply this whole time, I think. Most of day 39 was taken up by trying to get the weenie home, and then went with the wet feather to explore the island where the sunbeam was shot down. And here was a cave opening, and due to me hearing reapers roar in the area, I did not hesitate to go in for safety. This was a good decision, as this complicated cave system was lined with lithium, which I have wanted for so long, and came across a surface area leading to a new opening with even more lithium! The system opened up to a beach, which is the same beach the alien structure is at, with a new purple tablet. Moving up the back end of the mountain, I got into more caves and could see my moth from up here. This place had even more alien structures and amazing resources, tablets, and lastly an archway that needed an ion cube. Sadly, I don't have any on me right now to use, but the highlight was that I was filled to the brim with resources and wasn't even like halfway done collecting from this area, so I made my way back to the feather to unload. The beautiful sunrise accompanied me on my way home on day 40, picked up lubricant on the way, made some plasteel ingots, and with that, made the Neptune Gantry. It's like a pole that will hold the rocket. So the next step is the Neptune Boosters, which needs nickel ore. The location of said resource is completely unknown to me. And this also needed aerogel, so it's this plus the prawn suit that needs it. So it should be my top priority to get that too. And aerogel needs rubies, which I do got, plus gel sacks. So I went to the blue biome thinking I could find some there based on the look of the plant from the recipe, but no luck. My grand idea is a flop. So the only thing I could think of is that nickel ore and gel sacks have to be deeper than I've ever gone before. And I do need to reach those alien facilities that Degasi mentioned. So I got the sea moth's depth module upgraded up to tier 3, which is maximum by the way. Made a ultra high capacity tank and a pair of ultra glide fins. So we are set to uncover the deep dark abyss. I was hacking away at any plants that I found to be new to me. Getting myself into purple caves, but nothing. Until, thanks to the sonar ability, I found a colossal trench that tore through the ground, and it's deeper than anything I've seen, with glowing balls on its walls, but these are not gel sacks. Terrified to go deeper, the portal appeared again, releasing an alien-like figure from within, the same kind of being that I saw days ago at the island. These must be the beings that Agassi said that didn't want them down there, I thought to myself. Cortana wasn't helping by saying this biome is the perfect nightmare fuel for humans, thanks. I really needed that data. 
Despite my fear, I dove deeper, but based on the noise and the alien things getting closer, I presume they are after me, so I tried to keep my distance. When I thought I was safe, I got to some of this red stuff, which is blood oil. I don't even want to think about the process on how this stuff is made, okay? But hey, look, more uranium, which is nice. Out of nowhere, an alien appeared and showed me the full force of its power, teleporting me out of the safety of my sea moth into its kill range. Oh, no. Stop it. Nope. Come here. Come here. Get. Well, seems like I fended it off successfully thanks to my trusty heat blade, letting me explore some more down here, going deeper and deeper, where I was told that there's a cave opening nearby with a ton of fossilized remains, so a graveyard. Perfect, and this place was very fitting for me indeed. <gasps> no. 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 You want to go? No! For some reason, I appeared again in my moon pool. How that works, I don't know. But I lost the wet feather in the process. My pride and joy with all of its upgrades inside. Now I started to make a brand new sea moth to get my first sea moth. Why in the world I did not go with my cyclops to get it back, I have no idea. I'm writing the script here and I feel dumber by the hour. But I made up my mind, grinding my butt off. Had a weird glitch where I was swimming inside the moon pool, which fixed itself when I dove back into the water again. Made a new sea moth at sunset, proud and completely oblivious as to how stupid I was being. Through looting, I had a head start with a storage and tier 1 depth module, and upgraded the depth module to tier 2. This new vehicle was painted and dubbed the Deep Beak, and with a tad more grinding, got the tier 3 depth module done, but still wanted the defense module since I want to fend off the aliens when I go down to the trench again. I got the sonar module made, which is, you know, very crucial to where I'm going, and then saw I need some deep shrooms for the defense module, and, uh, by the name, yes, there are shrooms that are very deep. So I think I need to go down the trench, get them, and then make this piece. I kind of remember where it is, but I stopped since I spotted something. A capsule, which I opened, which gave me a ton of water bottles for some reason. Oh well, they might come in handy. I could see the location of the wet feather, so I started to just, you know, use that as my guide to get me to the location, but ended up at a large cave entrance that doesn't look like the trench. Might lead me to the feather, though. This place was littered in teleporter aliens, so I added the propulsion cannon to my hotbar in case I need to yeet them off of me. I was so overjoyed to find gel sacks here, but there were ungodly dangers lurking nearby. Whoa! Yo! No, 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 no! No, leave it alone! Leave it alone! No! No! Go, 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 go! Where did you come from? No. I need to make it out of here alive. Those... Those gel sacks... Are needed for aerogel, and I need aerogel for the prawn suit. I'm not leaving here until I'm stuffed. And that is precisely what I did. Stocked up nicely on the stuff, and... Thankfully made it out alive. Day 44 on my way back home with my gel, I found pod 7, inside which was all sorts of decor, like a toy car, Markiplier, hey what's up, how you doing, and a great cap. Seems like this is the pod from the dude who said that the fabricator was broken since I can see that it wasn't making anything useful for him to survive. At base again, a message came through from you, who was one of the two people that had been at the rendezvous point. They are way past safe depths and losing O2, resulting in them having to swim 500 meters up. I see this was sent before they made it to the landmass. At least these coordinates were received successfully. But yes, the moment I had been waiting for. Finally, I had Aerogel at my fingertips. My room was being dripped out nicely with all of my knickknacks and then grinded to make the prawn suit, which dragged into day 45. In the morning of said day, it was made. And you already know I gotta slather this bad boy in paint and name him BT, baby, you already know. Now my next bottleneck in production is nickel for the rocket and more upgrades, so since pod 2 is supposedly very deep, I went there and hoped to find what I would need. And I did find more blood oil and the elusive deep shrooms for the defense module. The green light bulb looking dudes were close to the pod, so once they turned their back, I dashed into the life pod, grabbed the PDA, and reading it in the deep beak, 
just confirmed they tried to make an escape to the surface, and we can deduct that that's when they also made it to the rendezvous point. I hope I'm not mixing up the notes to this story, okay? It's a whole lot of dots to connect. A ghastly scream echoed through the depths, which had me spooked. And I should have listened to my gut to get out of there, but was fixated on getting more gel sacks. <gasps> Wait a minute. Oh, hi, buddy. Uh, you seem to be having a little bit of trouble there with that uh, ridge there, my friend, but... Uh... Yep, yep, that's my cue to go. That's my cue to go. Go, 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 go. No, please don't. I have so much to live for. Please, I just got this ship. Please let me live. I booked it to the surface in absolute horror of what I just saw. Don't think I've seen any notes on whatever that was, but all that matters is that I'm safe. I got home in time to play a message hoping for good news, but it could not have been further from it. Translated alien communications started to play, and they have gone into destroy mode and are patrolling to look for me, as I seem to be the only unaccounted for target. Amazing. Scared of possible fights ahead, I use the deep shrooms to make hydrochloric acid, and that combined with gold makes polyaniline, if that's how you say it, which was the final component needed for the defense module to be crafted on day 46. Now with confidence, I dove into the deep, scary trench in hopes to find Nickel to make the rocket, making sure to grab the rare items and keep an eye out for any huge blue snakes as I wandered further into this cave, which led me to a new base, likely from the Degasi, which was surrounded by some of these bulb crabs and aliens. Thankfully, they were fighting amongst themselves, which was my opportunity to go in and investigate. And as I got in, I got intel that this extensive cave network has unusual energy signatures. Hi! Um... What are you? Among the stuff was a blueprint for swim charge fins and Degasi PDA-7. The Degasi are all sick, likely with the same disease that I have, and not even they have found a way to deal with the bacteria that alters the host's genetic code. But that was the least of my worries as I left the base since my sea moth was nowhere to be seen. I had no visual on it and there was no marker either. And my oxygen was depleting very quickly. Panicked and stressed, I looked but could not spot it. My only hope was to swim towards the wet feather, which was over 800 meters away. I struggled and kicked my way through the water until my body gave out as I drowned. Awakened in my base again, I checked my beacon manager, and in fact, there was no signal from the deep beak. I can only assume it was attacked by the nearby predators and had been destroyed as I was searching through the base. The logical course of action would be to retrieve the wet feather with the weenie, as I should have done the first time around, but it needs some work done on it first. Same goes for BT. Day 47 had me adding a drill arm to BT, along with an engine efficiency module, hull reinforcement, and a storage module. So now that is all beefed up and ready to go and I parked it into the weenie, which was hauled on over to the alien facility island for some much needed resource collection. But the power issue is still present. I need to solve it first or I won't even make the trip back. The solution was to disassemble the power cell charger, vending and coffee machine, so the sub uses less power to begin with. I think that's how it works, I'm not sure. And move the items that I had on board into the sub's built-in storages. Day 48 and I finally was smart enough to place the power cell charger in the base, grinded resources with BT around my base, using the drill arm to make quick work of the big nodes. And one noticeable issue with the base is that one solar panel isn't cutting it at night, which is when I always was running out of power and had to stop crafting things. Funnily enough, I had not slept a single time in 49 days, so I took a long night's rest and then kinda half of the day just chilled as I waited for some power cells to charge so that I could go to the alien island for lithium farming, reaching the spot at night so before any reapers could eat my face off, I bolted into the cave and got to work mining everything around. Also took a moment to go into the facility to check for things I might have missed, and this archway is just like the other that I saw, uh, they must be connected in some way somehow. An alien rifle was on display, so I got that scanned. Seems like a humanoid-type alien would use this. And the destiny look and artifact apparently is a doomsday device. Probably shouldn't touch that. And lastly, scanned the pillar where I was probed, and it's an energy core, which probably powers the laser that shoots everything down. Can't believe it's day 50 already. I jumped into what seems like their moon pool and peeked out into the ocean, and I observed the cube underwater. But the teleporter aliens are here too, so I must be careful. 
I found no way to enter the cube, so I just returned to my lithium mining endeavors. Loaded up BT, kept looking for some more, leave the cave at night, plus got a free little purple tablet on the way, and filled the cyclops to the brim. Took a little snack break on day 51 to munch on some bobo trees, and just kept up the work, out and also inside the water. This place is amazing, and having the drill arm here was a fantastic call. With BTs, weenies, and my invo full, we returned to base, happy to have completed such a lucrative expedition. I even needed to prepare more storage in the moon pool for all the stuff that I brought home. Day 52 and I installed a new solar panel hoping to solve the nighttime power outages, added more reinforcements to the hull, and placed a large multi-purpose room, large enough for many activities. Lastly, I added a new tube extension to the X piece, which will lead to a future farm, and continued along with my grinding. Which brings us into 53, when I figured a nuclear power plant and an alien containment unit would make this place feel homey, and some indoor grow beds would be really nice to get some food growing. So I went to get the final scans for all of that, dodging the aliens who were supposedly hunting me, and apparently they're also partially blind since not always do they notice me when I'm near them, and just continued on my day just gathering valuables. I hope you didn't forget about me retrieving the wet feather, I totally didn't forget about that till now. Totally didn't remember about it as I stumbled close to it on accident. I lowered the weenie near the trench and made a desperate attempt with my sea glide to reach the bottom, passing all of the nasties this place has to offer, completely exposed to any harm that could come my way. I can't believe it. I can't believe I just did that. That was so stupid. That was so incredibly stupid. Now I had the issue that I couldn't park the wet feather into the weenie since BT was already inside, but I don't care, I am ecstatic, and since I'm here, there was a wreck that I wanted to check. Stealthily I made my way around to find a BP for the Cyclops fire suppression module, just in time before the aliens shooed me away. Once things calmed down, I dashed to get into the hunk of junk to find useless business PDAs, but more importantly, all scans for the prawn suit grappling arm gonna be swinging around like Aaron Yeager. And would you look at that, all of the scans for the nuclear reactor are done too. I managed to swoosh on past the teleporter's tentacles and got to safety for a quick oxygen break and made one last trip to grab more deep shrooms. So in order to fully rescue the wet feather, I made my way to bring BT home. Detecting multiple Leviathan class life forms in the region. Wait, what? Are you certain whatever you're doing is worth it? Wait, 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 no, 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 I did not sign up for that. I floored it back to base, ain't no way I am sticking around to get piled on by temper tantrum sea snakes, no sir. Safe at base at sunrise, I parked BT, prepped some things, casually made a nuclear reactor next to my bedroom like it's no big deal, shoved some reactor rods inside and voila, unlimited power only at the cost of my DNA itself being torn apart by radioactive particles. That's a good deal, I would say. Later, I got everything together for another Seamoth defense module for later, and made swim charge fins. They're like wireless chargers for the tools I have in my hand. However, they don't really let me swim very fast. At night, I unloaded the Cyclops, and then added a sonar module to it in the early hours of Day 56. Now we are ready to explore the farthest depths of this world. Back at the spot, I added the defense upgrade to the wet feather, let it charge fully inside of the weenie, and then made my descent with three goals in mind. To get more blood oil, nickel, and getting back to the Degasi base where I died. As I reached the bottom, the encounters with aliens became more frequent, but my heat blade sufficed to keep them off me as I gathered gel sacks and rubies, and I couldn't help but notice the green fog at the bottom. The shockwave we can send out is perfect to ward off hostiles and give me moments to repair the vehicle in peace. I followed this river deeper and deeper with alien noises echoing through the area, which came from the EMP pulsing creatures that were a pest, but as long as I keep repairing, I think I'll be okay. Desperately, I was checking all resources in hopes to get nickel, but no dice. What I did find was a massive ribcage from what has to be a giant serpent so large it would dwarf the reapers, and it was surrounded by a new type of carnivorous looking fish. But the alpha seems to be the blue leviathan that I had seen before. This might be its home, but good thing it hasn't noticed me yet. Deeper and 
deeper and deeper I went, and I saw these ghostly looking flappy fishes as they came into view, near a new massive skeleton of a creature that I did not recognize. I gathered resources here, and it was a little bit tricky as the temperatures singed me, so I need to watch my health as I hop out. The day passed, and I was still discovering new things, like this colossal blue tree with blue fog around it, and many flappy stingrays. Here is where I hit a snag in my exploration, as I reached the maximum depth for the sea moth, so I'd have to search this place exposed. The tree once scanned revealed to be a giant cove tree, but never mind that, this place has nickel ore! Oh dear lord, I am so excited right now. I desperately scavenged through every nook and cranny, resulting in having around 9 nickel ore pieces in total. With the most valuable load of loot in my info, I went back to the wet feather as it's time to make my way back home and hope I don't die in the process. Carefully yet swiftly, I went, but since I'm going the path the opposite direction this time, I noticed some alien pillars with light highlighting a new path that I didn't notice here the first time. So I followed them and hello, new alien cube base, which apparently has collapsed to the sea floor. So I think it's not active anymore, but Katana relays info to me that this place has contaminated life forms inside, so I'm guessing this is the bacteria research facility. Sadly, I couldn't find a way in, so I checked the connected tunnel until I saw a leviathan for a brief moment, which, you know, rightfully made me skedaddle on back, which is when, yes, I finally saw the entrance to the cube facility, which I entered and right off the bat got some ion cubes as Cortana went on about this place's heavily reinforced either to keep something out or in. Either way, it failed horribly, so good job, advanced aliens. The smartest thing in my entire time here was to be sure to always carry a purple tablet on me, as I could check out more rooms thanks to it. Downloaded specimen data, and decided to move the feather in, in order to hopefully not have a repeat scenario of what happened last time. I got a damage report downloaded, saw a big old dead fish, and a room where it seems like the teleporters were built here, so they don't seem to be the head honchos, just worker drones called warpers. With info on the Kara bacteria downloaded and figured this would be a good time to do a self-scan, uh, seems like the infection is also now in my lungs, and I need to find a cure quickly, since just looking at my hands, the green postules are getting worse by the day. The damage report states a leviathan attacked this place and that 314 species were destroyed and one was unaccounted for. So I guess one infected species got out? I don't know, maybe that's how this disease got so widespread on this planet. On day 58, the Kara file says that the disease led to the death of 143 billion individuals. That's a B, as it spreads very quickly and has no known treatment, which makes sense why there are such strict measures on who can leave this planet. I wanted to learn more, but I was out of water and it would suck to die of thirst underwater, so it's time to retreat, and thankfully made it all the way out of the river up the trench and on board the weenie with no problems at all, with a message on the radio of symbols and noises that I could not comprehend in the slightest. Okay. Well, I figured I would die of thirst before I would get home, so I did a little bit of fishing, drank up, and then went back to base, arriving at night, and guess what? Ya boy has everything needed to make the Neptune rocket boosters, baby! All required items were gathered and crafted on day 59, and then finally the boosters were set to craft. I can see the light at the end of this hypothetical tunnel which represents me getting saved. Next step is the fuel reserves, which need two new resources, crystallized sulfur and kyanite. Bro, where do I find that? I've already gone so deep. Before I would go into the abyss again, I brought an ion cube to the archway at the alien facility with the cannon. Maybe that will get me to where these new resources are. Here we go. About flipping time. Hey! Um, please don't teleport me, like, a thousand meters underwater, because, uh, I don't think this thing will save me in that scenario. But, here we go! Ooh. Oh. Hello? Okay, well, I haven't been here before. Oh. But turn off the lights! Is this still the same island, or... Wait a minute. I think we're on the island uh, where the Degasi were. Yeah, 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 because we're at, we're at the back of, uh, of, of the, the big thing. Yes, that actually gives me a bright idea. Hold on. I like how the Degasi were like, Oh, we could never just stay on land. There's no way we could 
live off of everything that grows here. Like, have you seen the amount of trees here? And you could eat all of them. Hey, look at this. I stand corrected. Hold on. That's the white. You see? It would have been fine. It would have been so fine. Now, the magnum opus of my grand improvised plan. Here we are. Come here, you stinking. I, I didn't know back in the day we could scan structures. I didn't have a farm this whole time because I had no idea that that was possible. Give me your potatoes. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a little bit lost. I don't know where the hole is. I have no idea where the cave is. I am so lost. With no vehicle at my disposal and no idea how to get back to the portal, all I could do was use the sea glide to get home. And thankfully I got my charge fins on me for infinite battery life, allowing me to get home at midnight. The long-awaited grow beds can be made, however I noticed I can't place them indoors, that when I scanned were to be made in the water, and essentially just got to the point of planting gel sacs, so I think I'm good on those. Also added a glass wall to the hallway and went to get the wet feather with the weenie, and during this retrieval mission I thought to myself, the one base I still didn't fully explore was the Degasi base where I lost the deep beak, so that is my next objective. Back home I got the cells charging, unloaded BT, made benzene out of blood oil along with all the other preparations for the prawn suit's grappling arm, which was attached at the end of the day. 61 was a day of upgrades, and there the following, Cyclops Depth Module 1, grind a bit, Prawn Suit Depth Module 1, grind some more, and upgrade Cyclops Depth Module to Tier 2. I was sure to swap my fins for the faster ones, charged up the weenie as it is time to go to the Degasi base where I died. But due to that I first left at sunset, I first got to the trench later than I would have liked to, but no matter, it's dark down there no matter what time of day it is, so we plunged down on day 62 and reached our target, and I was sure to approach with the feather but park it on the roof of the cave to avoid getting attacked like last time. But this mission did not go so smoothly, as I was immediately attacked by warpers and almost died right off the rip. I just barely managed to escape and reach the feather, and thanks to the defense upgrade managed to scare off the EMP creatures. That was close! That was way too close! And as luck would have it, I have no meds with me to heal my slash wounds. Thanks to my shockwave, I was able to clear the area and managed to get into the base, only to find nothing of use. Don't tell me I came all this way for nothing! As I was zapping more and more aggressive EMP creatures, I spotted a PDA outside, which I got, and then in the base got to the top floor, where I scanned the alien containment that I've been wanting to make, and got a crucial upgrade, the Cyclops Shield Generator, plus some decor items, another PDA, and a strange alien egg that was just chilling on the floor. And you guess it, another PDA, but also a new item, a orange tablet. Seems like this trip was worth it after all. I wonder where the Degasi found this. Based on the notes, Maida caught a leviathan alive and brought it here, which shocked the others, because, yeah, not everyone wants a carnivorous beast sleeping on the doorstep. Well, seems like my work here is done. I got everything there is to get. Plus, my health is still too low to make any risky decisions, so I got to the safety of the weenie and returned home for some medkits, and there I was also sure to place all of my new pretty decor items that I just got. I was getting crystal to make the alien containment unit, and for it I made sure to grab any alien eggs that I came across, hoping to collect a wide variety of species. Even found a new deep cave near my base that eluded me until now, but I'll get its contents later as I'm running out of oxygen and I have eggs to hatch. So day 63 had me placing this big old tank in the big room, and Cortana said to be careful what to hatch. I mean, true, I would hate to hatch a reaper. For now I just dropped all eggs inside and hoped for the best, and I saw I can plant things too, so I did just that with some common plants for now, and after a while I saw a little guy in the egg. Just a little old guy with big ol' eyes. For the resources I went back to look for the deep cave that I had just discovered a day ago since, well I need supplies and new plants, but after going into many caves I concluded that I completely lost where it was even though it was super close to home. Even couldn't find it on day 64 with sonar, the cave just vanished. What I did find was a Degasi PDA in this place. 
feels very out of place for it to be in the Kelp Forest, but it was from Bart Torgal. Apparently, Bart's the vice president of the Torgal Corporation, who was 19 at the time of going missing. He is the only legitimate child of Paul Torgal, who I think has to be the owner of the corporation. But yeah, seems like Bart is really good in biology and economics, and the Kazar fellow from the pod reported that Torgals were here to build a whole flippin' space station in this quadrant. Log 9 I had gotten on a different day, but basically just said tension between Maida and Paul was getting worse, Maida being a risk taker and Paul being the complete opposite. However, as they were bickering back and forth, Bart left the base when a monstrous roar was heard. A kraken type leviathan attacked their base. It was bigger than a cyclops, they say. And based on the PDA, it sounds like it tore the base apart. An ode from Paul explains the base is quite in fact lost. Maida was fighting it like a lunatic with a sea glide in one hand and scrap metal in the other like a true badass, and once they got the scrap shoved into its neck, it retreated and Maida was lost as they were still fighting it as it left. Paul goes on to say he's running out of oxygen, no base, can't see the sky, and surely by now something has the scent of his blood. I think that there is the reason why so long ago, Bart, the son, left a PDA on dry land stating the others had died below since he probably just went out of the base just in time to escape. As I was reading more mumbo jumbo of the board of directors and whatnot, my babies, my babies have hatched. I don't know what you are, but you are immediately my favorite. I will name you. It kind of reminds me of Appa from The Last Airbender. <laughs> I don't know why, it's not tentacles, it's its face and the line on its head, okay? Don't judge me. Let's get back on track on day 65, shall we? Some blueprints I need are the indoor grow beds, stasis rifle, prawn suit propulsion cannon, and the cyclops thermal reactor, so I went about my day hoping to stumble on those as I dove into many wrecks, even found a massive mushroom tree on my travels, which apparently is calcified roots. I wonder if this planet used to have massive trees. Also stumbled upon a dead diseased fish that I tried to scan, almost died to a warper in the process, but succeeded. It is a sand shark, and this new bacteria info states it is a waterborne bacteria that gets into your system through the skin or lungs, so not much protecting from it. It also mutates your DNA and makes you highly aggressive. I wonder what a reaper with this in full effect would be like. Later in the day, I got into a new wreck and was surprised to unlock a reinforced diving suit for more protection. That is awesome, and that was also not on my list, so I was very surprised. With some rubies in the bag, I made my way on home to heal after my battle wounds. So on day 66, I drank up, healed up, and saw a reinforced suit needs synthetic fibers to be crafted, and that needs benzene, which means I need more blood oil. Before I'd searched for that, I checked my aliens and saw that I had a pimple butt manatee. Nice. I also left the new big ol' egg in there, so can't wait to see what's inside. I also removed some explody fishes, since I had quite a few in there, and yes, I did try to cook my babies, but I can't, so I just set them free instead. And, well, I guess they couldn't handle the pressure of freedom and just off themselves. Medkits were made, and off I go for blood oil, coming across a new wreck on the way that had nice plant furnitures inside that I can build later, and a poster. Right after I found Life Pod 6 with two PDAs inside, seems like there was one crew member in here and one passenger. The passenger spazzing out and the crew trying to calm them, and says they need lead for a radiation suit. The second note is, uh, something. Basically, the passenger blew up the whole pod by holding a flare too close to something flammable. I guess they took going out with a bang quite literally. Rest in pieces. 67 went by in a flash. First off, I placed the new poster and grabbed new plants for the tank. Then I went to the trench, got a whole invo of blood oil, made benzene back home, fiber mesh, combined it into synthetic fibers, and finally made the reinforced suit which provides better armor and temperature resistance. With a locker place designated for clothing, I added even more plants to my tank and have a baby bone shark now, from the big egg that I hatched, I suppose. Day 68. With a beacon dropped at the deep spot, I descended in hopes to find the kyanite and special sulfur to continue my rocket build. But this place was new to me and had a brand new alien structure, but upon further inspection I noticed it was a massive fossil. I scanned it too and came to conclude that this thing is thank the stars, an extinct creature. But there was in fact a new alien structure which was opened using the orange tablet. The place looked like a museum inside. I made sure to scan everything around, downloaded the fauna data, stole three ion cubes, and seems like that's it. In and out, super fast. 
an extra beacon placed at the skull just in case on day 69, and after some exploring of this part of the underground world, I saw another one of the blue reapers, and nearby a terrifying skull that looks like what you would get by mixing a reaper and a gator. The blue reaper was in the area, but I sneaked past, hugging the wall, and ended up in the parts of the cave where I had already been, so it is in fact all connected. Also encountered a new part with a massive hole leading down. This place too was protected by a blue reaper, so I made my way past it and began to grab plant samples from this biome. This section looks like a starry night sky, with reaper skeletons nearby. I guess there's always a bigger fish. I did find a way out, but heard reapers everywhere around me, so I wanted to get out of this biome ASAP. My speedy escape led me to a new wreck, where not only did I get more samples, I found the dastardly indoor grow bed. I have finally found you. By the time I got home, the day was about to end, and the weenie was parked far, far away where I left it at the new cave entrance. Day 70, with my outdoor grow bed doing so well, I decided it is time to make some indoor ones in the large room in hopes they produce a stable source of food. But I only had one Ming tree seed on me, so I went to get some more trees, not the trees, like a whole lot of them, and here I was close to the weenie, so I went down into its direction, but another embarrassment was about to befall yours truly, as I found myself at the location of that one pod that was deep in a hole early in our adventure, and this place had rubies and gel sacks all along. You have to be freaking kidding me, man. I don't even know why I have eyes at this point, because apparently, you know, I don't know how to freaking use them. <clears throat> Moving on. I got the weenie back and went straight to base to get BT, as it is the vehicle with the most depth resistance. There. Trees planted on day 71. Cyclops cells set the charge. Now all I need is the shield generator for it. And that took up most of the day, but got her done. And a little bonus, a torpedo arm for BT in case we want to get feisty. In order to actually shoot torpedoes, I had to do some grinding, which let me make some vortex torpedoes that I think hold enemies in place. The thing I've been meaning to make for the weenie was creature decoys along with the upgrade to hold multiple at once, so I was busy with that task and took a quick break to add torpedoes to BT. Got the decoy upgrade made, along with said decoys, loaded them up, checked the farm which is coming along very nicely, prepped some backup power cells and med kits, and lastly added windows to the large multi-purpose room for a nice view. Progress to go even deeper was coming along well, and for safety reasons I swapped the storage module from the wet feather with the armor module. Also got the propulsion gun upgraded to a repulsion gun. Come here, big guy. Ooh. This will come in handy. All I knew is I still needed to unlock the stasis rifle and prawn suit propulsion arm. I searched everywhere, but nothing. Even got to a place I have never seen before, but no dice. Just nowhere to be seen. Even wandered into an ecological dead zone by accident, which I did nope out of there in a heartbeat. But in the night, I did spot a new alien entrance on a cliffside surrounded by bone sharks, which really damaged me. Quick thinking made me leave a beacon here before I went home to bring the Cyclops over here, as I don't want to leave the wet feather exposed as I enter that door. After a long portion of the day had blown by, I was back at the spot. Hopped through the door into an air-filled cave, where I scanned the plants, killed the bugs, reaching a portal, but this one had no ion cube slot to turn it on. Well, that was a colossal waste of my time. I am incredibly busy trying to get off this rotten rock. Well, at least I tried. I got back home and just swapped BT with the feather again, and went on to the trench the next day to get to the deep hole that I saw that one time. But I got confused and descended at the wrong spot, and I admit, I still suck at moving around in the Cyclops. I spent the whole day trying to get into the right spot, but the fishes were pecking at my hull a lot, and had a glitch that I could not repair the darn thing. The solution was to re-log, then it became fixable. Little tip there for you as in case that happens to you. On the way, the decoys really came in handy to keep aggro off, and by the time I got to sneak past the Leviathan, I was already at half power. Uh, let's just say things could be looking better. But we must press on! I passed the big blue tree into a brand new tunnel that led further down, made some pit stops to repair and gather some snacks, and kept on descending until I spotted a lava area at 1,200 flippin' meters deep. And in the distance, a blue crystal was spotted. That has to be kyanite for my rocket. I hopped out immediately to check it out, but it needs a drill arm to mine it, and I just swapped BT's drill arm for the torpedoes. I came all this way for nothing. 
And to make matters worse, this place is home to many new creatures and most of them want to snack on my corpse. Day 77, and battery is at 37%. Lovely. This tunnel with bits of lava led me to a large opening with even more lava, and I knew this had to be where crystallized sulfur had to be at, so I checked the area and saw these weird lava leeches latched onto the weenies, so I whacked them off before they could cause any damage. Finally, crystallized sulfur was found. That's when elusive resource down. I would be relieved, but it seems like there is no end to the leeches. I made sure to add some sphere power cells to the sub before I'd move further, and I didn't get much further due to whatever this is. <gasps> Hello? Okay, okay, okay. We should be fine. It's dark here. I'm sure it can't see me. I whacked off some more leeches since I think they're just sucking up my power, which is scary since I'm low on batteries as it is. I pressed on with the behemoth of a leviathan swimming overhead until I got to what I think is a new room. I'm not sure at this point. I was incredibly disoriented, but the leviathan was always around. I'm low on power. There is no denying it. And due to that I'm lost, I don't think I'm going to make it out of here alive once the sub runs out of oxygen. So in a desperate attempt to keep power going, I parked the sub and went out to look for supplies to make power cells. So, you know, maybe I have a shot here. I do have some of the required items on board. And after a bit, I actually made one, and that is all I can make with my available resources. This better work. More diseased fishes were attracted to the cyclops that I had to fend off with the flimsy CSGO knife skills that I have, and then made a break for it in hopes to find the exit. When for some reason, I left my sub, I don't know why, likely to get sulfur, when things started to take a turn for the worse. Oh sh! there it is! Hey! Oh, oh it's looking at me! Oh sh! Oh sh! Oh sh! No! He's pushing it! Decoy! Oh, this is so bad. The day passed, and the most clutch play was done right here and now, peeps. I brought out BT, yanked out a power cell out of it, docked it with the one it still has on its other shoulder, placed this new fully charged cell into the weenie, and now finally had the power to find an exit and make my escape to safety. Sadly, with no kyanite in hand, but we'll be back with a drill arm, mark my words. By the time I was out the trench, I was dying of thirst, so I had to constantly make breaks for fishes and keep going for a bit. Rinse and repeat. Man, I need to prepare better for my next trip to the lava zone. So once back at the safety of the shallows, I got cells charging and hunted bladder fish all night long. Needless to say, I got water sorted for a good while. Day 79, and in short, made more power cells, loaded up the water, cells and the drill arm to the sub, made med kits, did some work to make a thermal reactor for the prawn suit, but got cut off since it needs kyanite to finish. Went to get salt to prep longer lasting food when I found that darn cave that I lost a few days ago, and this place is pretty good for gathering, so I cleaned it out of everything that it had, and lastly cured some fish like I wanted with the salt. 80 came by and I was still busy with medkit production, power cell charging as well, and decided to grab gas pods from the gasopods, and with them made a truckload of gas torpedoes. These I think do deal damage. With the last cells charged, it was time to return to the lava pit, reaching the drop off at day's end. The shield generator came in handy to ward off all of the predators on our way down, in combo with powering off to de-aggro and save power in the process. That worked so well that this time I reached the lava zone with 75% power and batteries to spare. I'm getting a hang of this it seems. With Kyanite in sight, I brought out the suit and got to it, drilling it for everything it's got while also fending off the pesky warpers. That is one hefty haul of Kyanite. So a snack break was in order to heal up, eat up, drink up, thanks to all of my provisions. I continued with more crystallized sulfur gathering, but came to a large middle mountain where Cortana detected a massive energy signature, and that's when I found yet another alien doorway. So I turned off the weenie near the entrance in hopes nothing kills it while I'm gone. 82 was the day that I passed through that door and spazzed out for a bit since this lava tunnel had hungry fishes inside and good loot, but I must focus as I got to a new alien cube that I went to for some air. I could also hear the large dragon leviathan roaring around me. Let's just hope I don't get stuck here forever. 
So let's make this quick. Very easily, I got to a room where I got a new colored tablet. This one being blue. Oh, I should have come here with uh, BT. Oh. Come here to me. Um. Yeah, just uh, cool and all. I just don't know where you are, so that's a bit of a problem. And you go. Okay, so uh, that's another portal. I do not know where it goes. Part of me doesn't really want to find out because I don't know if I'll be able to get back here. And my weenie and BT are over there, so uh, I'll leave you for later. And we'll keep going. And what the flip is that? Robo spider. Somebody's playing with the Legos. Down is good. Down is devious. Down is dastardly. Down is discovery. Fossil data that I'm never gonna read. In you go. This is why I always take my keys with me. Who will then? Thermal plant. So this is the. Th okay, okay, it makes sense because, you know, thermal were inside of a friggin' volcano. Oh, yeah, yeah. Primary containment facility. And what are you? Ion power data. We got the ion battery. Let's flip and go. I am out of here. Yeah. I don't think I've missed anything. If I did, well, tough beans. Primary containment facility. Constructed within a natural chasm. Connected to this cave ne network. South, southeast. A lot of stuff that I'm going to pretend like I read. Okay. So, uh, that is technically south. That's like that. That kind of that way. Time to go. All right. And I go, and we're safe. Ooh, he's here. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna lay low. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I don't know if that was a coincidence that he just bumped into me. Yeah, it's him again. All right, time to go. Oh, okay. There's no hole on the roof. I have uh, made a little bit of. Uh, miscalculation I'll be going back from the way I came thank you very much I should be fine I got shields I got decoys I got silent mode I I should be good home free baby by now I had the path in and out memorized so I got out in a jiffy excited to hopefully finish the rocket and get off this planet I arrived during the daytime of day 83 and I wasted no time making two ion batteries and turned those into one ion power cell and made another one, so now I have two. Also got some plasteel together and with some kyanite from the lava, set the Neptune fuel reserves to be made. However, my labor was still not over, as now it prompted me to make the tippy top of the ship. Oh, come on! Thankfully, it did not take a whole lot of grinding in order to make this piece on day 84, and I sure hope this is the last step. Flippin' finally! My ticket out of here is ready, and of course, needs a spiffing paint job. And a name, which will be FRED, which stands for Fastest Rocket Ever, dude. Going up the gantry, I could take a peek inside, and everything seems functional, so I did try to just full send it on out of here, but I could not, as I still am diseased and would just be shot down again, like from the Aurora. So, to leave, I would still need to find a cure, which not even the ancient aliens or the Degasi could find. What an easy task. If I'm going to achieve this, it'll have to be done in the mentioned main containment facility, and to reach those depths of 1.4 kilometers, I got the Cyclops death module upgrade to tier 3, so we should be good. 85 had mostly maintenance happening, and upgraded the prom depth mod to tier 2 for a max depth of 1,700 meters on it. The Cyclops got repaired charged, the alien containment got some more eggs, and after a bit of work, the prawn suit got its very own thermal reactor, so in case I get stuck in the lava zone, I can charge batteries with BT like a portable charger, which can save me in a pinch. Water and food rations were also sorted at day's end, and on day 86, I was flooring it, same route as usual, all the way down past the river and its nasties until I got to the lava zone, and since the facility is supposed to be 1.4 kilometers deep from the middle of mountain, Towards the southwest, that's where I went and found a massive crater, which had a thin cave opening on its side, which I entered, as that seems to be the only path to take. Oh. 
Hello? Long time no see. I am what you seek. Want to help you. Right. That's definitely not what a villain would say. Ever. This cavern is huge. And the floor is one big lava pool. It has many alien cubes. And whose idea was it to make a containment facility in the flippin' nether? But one structure stood out. That has to be the main facility, I thought. So I went straight at it, but I am not alone. Hello? Hey! I'm gonna turn off real quick. Um... Hey, beautiful pretty mama. I'm sure that you are not happy with me right now, but... I'm gonna make this quick. And it just phased through the rock. That is even more terrifying. Okay. Silent running. I just want to get close, and I'll turn off my motors then, okay? It's using up a lot of power, but we can recharge batteries on BT as long as we don't die in BT. I'm pretty sure this counts as thermal reactor zone charging place. Go, nice and steady. Easy does it, and we're off. Okay. We did it. Now, I'm going to take the batteries out so the leeches don't ruin my grand escape. Seek fluid intake. Ha! I came prepared. Stabilizing. You bet your sweet bippy they are. In we go to the danger zone. Oh, I'm burning up. Alright, I gotta go. I hope I come back to see the weenie. If I don't, I am royally screwed. Alright. Blue tablet time. That's what you were for. And we get access to the main containment facility. I'm here for my meds. Hello? Translating local Ooh. alien broadcast. Warning. Vaccine development program terminated. Evacuate immediately. Alright, so everything they were doing, they just gave up on and ran. Be it the vaccine to whatever disease I have. And they had. And the Sea Emperor... Which is not that thing outside, to my understanding. That's a sea dragon. And why are you moving? Can I take it? Okay, well, I do have BT with me, so we can grab a ton of iron cubes if we need them. Oh, yo, they got the yin-yang. It's carving. Yeah. I'm going to scan all of this and sell all of this information on the black market once I'm out of here. Because I have debts to repay uh, once I'm out of here, based on what I've been told. How do they have an earth blade? Alright. Cool. So I have everything scanned. A whole ton of doodads and whatnot. Enzyme 42 project data. Okay, so what I get by this is that they captured a large leviathan species that can produce stuff. Enzyme 42. To heal people from the Kara bacterial infection, which we have ourselves. And uh, they captured it. Did everything they could to keep it alive and well, but it all just kind of, like, uh, fell apart. And everyone just left, and uh, warp gates and force fields were sealed, and uh, it was all unsuccessful. All the massive, colossal waste of time. Okay, so uh, let's, let's hope that's not the same issue that I'm going to encounter. Okay, so we have a portal here, which needs an ion cube. I don't have a with me, but I can get some. And I imagine that's what the other doors are for as well. They're pretty much all going to be teleports. This is like a like the hub. This room appears to be a biological archive storing more than forty indigenous egg specimens in different states of development. So uh basically y'all are doing what I was doing, but to a much greater extent I see. Okay, well either way, I see data. I take data. See Emperor Leviathan. Okay, but based on this, it's not its not a bad thing. Like, it, it, it feeds off of microorganisms, so it can't be that bad. And another teleport room. Figured as much. This place is blocked. And it needs another blue tablet, which we've only found one. However, I can make one with kyanite and ion cubes, so that should be fine. Ooh. Hey, yo, they got the McDonald's slide. Oh man, I would love to build an aquarium like this. This would be flipping tight in my base. Okay. Inflow pipe. What do we got here? 
Ventilation control. Okay, so basically this is an entire filtration system to get new healthy water into the containment facility and it is fully automated. Alright, so I've checked all of the bottom rooms now. And I know I should go there based off the blue tablet. But I haven't checked the top part yet. What's this? <gasps> Wait, this is a fetus. Sea Emperor fetus. So this is a little, little, little gestation baby. They took tissues from his digestive tract, probably to get the enzyme they so desperately wanted. But it failed. Alright. But... I think that does it. That's that's everything that's like in this top floor, I believe. So I have no other choice than to get BT in here, grab the ion cubes, make a blue tablet, and keep going. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, yeah, so uh, those leeches definitely chow down on that last remaining battery. There we go, and we can breathe. All right, very good. What are you doing in my house? Get out of here. Now, as for you, BT has the drill arm and the grappling hook. And, uh... Down we go! And we're in. Alright, let's drill us some ion cubes. It's jiggling around, so I guess it's working. There we go. Stop it. Oh, hey! I don't know if I was supposed to do that. I do bad. But that did grant me... Three ion cubes. Oh, it's generating more ion cubes. Okay, we're good. We're fine. This place is not going to blow up. Then we go into the weenie. And blue tablet made. In you go, good sir. This is the only place I haven't checked yet, so. Onwards. This is the alien containment facility, so this could be one of two things. Either a moon pool, or that's where they used to keep all of their life specimens. There's only one way to find out. Oh. It's a huge box. I feel like I'm in the ocean itself, but this is huge. This is way bigger. Than oh. 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 Whoa. Hey. Hi. Um. Are you here to play? I'm actually here Others just going. Mm -hmm. They played alone. They bored me. Now they're gone. And instead, we have you. We are curious whether you swim with the current or fight against it as they did. Okay. Um, I think we are homies now. Um... Where you going, Big Mama? Like, if you would have eaten my face off, you would have done that at that point. Oh, it's not a box. It's actually just a platform. Either way. Wait. Unlike other alien facilities, oh. scans indicate this location supports a diverse and healthy ecosystem. Explanation unclear at this time. So this place seems dead, but it's supposedly healthy, and everyone here is chill. This is like the best place in the entire playthrough so far. Can I scan you? I cannot, okay. All right, so I can relax, fully see what we can find. And that right there looks like egos. If you don't mind, I'm gonna scan your eggs, big mama. I hope you don't mind. This is an in incubator. Okay, hatching enzymes. Ooh, hi. I hope I did not offend. Um, I'm running out of oxygen, so please make this quick. 30 seconds. Yeah, that's my cue, kind of. Okay, I'm gonna put ion cube in this. Woo! Hi. My young need to hatch mm -hmm. to play outside this place. I agree. I fully we agree. So long. Mm -hmm. The others built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. Okay, so, um, we have a pact going on. You want 
the babies to hatch, and I discovered the hatching enzymes. And they're supposed to go out of there to go play. And you give me what I want, which I assume you're referring to the enzyme to cure myself to get out of here. I think that is a very fair trade. Let me just open up this portal already, preemptively. So that's kind of With done. the passage you have opened, my young can leave this place. Very astute observation. First they must feel the time is right and break free of their shells. Okay. This is what the others could not force from me. To you, I give the secret <gasps> willingly. Well, thank you. Hey, let's go. That's where the recipe was. I thought it would be in the notes. Hatching enzymes. Okay, so we need fungal sample. I have one at home. I need sea crown seed. I know where to get that. Eye stock seed, ghost weed seed, and bulb bush sample. I kind of know where to get all of them. And if that's all it takes, we should be getting out of here very soon. Sit tight, mama. Not like you can do anything else, but keep doing what you've been doing, and I'll be back. Off I go with a clear mission. Had some issues getting out of the lava cave, had to resort to some decoys and stealthy maneuvers, but eventually got out, and boy, I was in a hurry. 89 was the day I arrived back home, and made sure that my next trip to the depths would be my last. And when it comes to the special flora I need for the hatching enzyme, I think I have it all, oddly enough, by pure coincidence. The only thing I don't have on me is the eye stalker seed, however I do have one planted in the alien containment unit, so I just got one from there. Thumbs up. So all the ingredients for now were stored onto the weenie, also made sure to clean off the lava leeches, and made water all night yet again, which dragged into day 90 along with some food prep. Well, only 10 more days before we're out of here, let's hope. While I was waiting for the power cells to charge, I went on a rampant copper mining spree for a little special planty plan, and got some new eggs too. I like collecting eggs and hatching them, okay? It's the Pokemon player in me. I mean, just look at this new lava lizard. I love him already. Shame that I'm gonna leave him all though. 91's highlight was that in the new wreck, I fully unlocked the prawn suit's propulsion cannon after so long. Besides from that, I just mined large copper nodes all day, nonstop. On a pretty good spot for it too. I'd let you know where it is, but I kind of lost track of where I am. 92 in its entirety consisted of making many, many signs for a large mural right next to the garden. And yes, it took a lot of time. Even had to continue grinding copper on day 93. Found a new motherload spot, so I was having at it, when an EMP squid yeeted me straight into the deep dark seabed. The distance was insane, and climbing back up was a struggle. It took the remaining hours just to get up the cliffside and back into the Cyclops. It was on day 94 when at last my mural was done, with the purpose of thanking all of my patrons that support me every month. It is a massive help, and I hope you like the name wall. Some names are shortened to fit in. I'm so sorry. And it was completed just in time to welcome some new pretty aliens to our tank. Some lovely specimens, mm-hmm a stalker, and a jelly manta abomination. Day 95, with a bit of fabricator laser powers, the hatching enzymes were made. And yes, it is time to go hatch some baby sea emperors. Feels strange, after spending so much time here that something wants to help me and I want to help it. It's nice and comforting. What's not nice is the blue leviathan was pushing my sub for a while in the river section, but I lived. Guess it was just giving me a boost a little nudge on my way to the eggs. After the long trip, I was back at the lava cavern and popped into the main facility confidently. I am back, just as I promised. Come here, mama. Got a little surprise for you. Alrighty. Are you ready, big mama? Let's do this. This is some face hugger shit. Don't eat my face, please. Easy. Alright. Well, you're not locked out to me, so that's good. Go to mama. Yeah, good, good, good to mama. My little babies. Does this make me their dad? I don't, I don't know. Oh, look at that. They're snuggling up to mamas. Oh, They're so happy. Be free, babies. Be free. Go to the portal. Wreak havoc upon the lands. So. We had a deal. My young are swimming for the shallows. 
Exactly. I thank you. You are very welcome. Their freedom is my end. What will it be like, I wonder? To Wait. go to sleep and never wake up. Wait, I didn't think Perhaps you'd die. We meet, I will be an ocean current carrying seas to a new land. Or a creature so small it sees the gaps between the grains of sand. Farewell, friend. I didn't I didn't know you had to die for me to reach my end of the bargain here. Um What? I am confused. Don't you die on me, Muma. You have much to live for. Well what now? Am I cured? Hey! You lied to me! What the hello? Concentrated Enzyme 42. Gimme. It's sticky. Ooh. I absorbed it through my suit. Um. Okay. Self-scan complete. Vital signs normal. Let's go! No remaining sign of bacterial infection. Thank you very much, ma'am. Much appreciated. I'm about to drown. Okay, so technically I want to go back to uh, get my vehicles, but at the same time I want to check the portal because I want to know where the babies went. So I'm going to check it out and come back. Just because I'm getting out of here doesn't mean I want to leave my stuff all over the place. Here we go. Ooh. <gasps> The babies are free. They are free. Oh, and they spawn more enzyme 42. Hey, baby. I'll scan you. Your information will be very valuable on the black market. Oh, they actually spit it out. But yeah, I don't know if this is the best spot for you little guys, because I always hear... Speak of the devil. I always hear a reaper over here. Uh, so, so don't go that way. Okay, I have partial responsibility for your well-being, I would like to think. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go back to your mama. So, uh, peace out, and um, have a good life. <gasps> mama has fallen. Oh, she's still breathing. You look like a bug from up close, but I'm not judging, I'm just observing. Okay, well then, um... I, I, I think that does it. I think I'm... I think I'm Gucci. I think I'm ready to go. Alright. Let's get back from whence we came. Out I went. Cured of the bacterial disease. Free to leave this planet. So I took my time getting home, appreciating this planet's hostile beauty in all its glory one final time. The rays of sunshine hit different on day 97, knowing I'm good to go. Relief washed over me but there's still one thing i must do which is to head out with the wet feather our og vehicle and deactivate the laser cannon we meet again strange obelisk are you ready easy does it now i promise i've been a good boy easy no <laughs> I'm good, right? I'm clear. Stupid. Oh. Oh. When light lights out real quick. Okay. Uh, I don't want this place falling apart like some Indiana Jones type. Sh so uh, I'm gonna leave. What is that noise? I'll parkour my way out of this b- <gasps> Ow. This is probably a faster way out too, just- now loop. Yeah. Hey, we're good now. I wonder if they're aggressive if I'm healed. Like... For science... Oh, you definitely seem aggroed onto me. Are we good though? Technically, we should be good. Okay, we're not. I don't think so. He's like, peace out. 
you're cleared, you're good to go. Well, that's sorted. Perfecto. But as I went home, there was one eensy teensy tiny thing that was still bothering me. Some unsettled business, one could say. Something that required me to mount two torpedo launchers onto BT and grab every explosive I had. For it is time to battle it out with a reaper. I hear you. And I bear gifts for the times you've spooked me. I'm not leaving until I put you all in your place. Sup? Ha! Go! Whoa! He appeared out of nowhere. How you like them papples? I gotta load up my guns. Hold on. I'm out of vortex torpedoes. Where you at, homeboy? Suck! Fight me! Ah! Oh, what, you scared now? Huh? You running away? Running low on torpedoes, I probably shouldn't be shit talking too much. Tuck your tail and run. Which would be your whole body when I think about it. Show yourself, foul demon. Like that. Come here. Still got some ammo left. They got your name on it. Point blank. In broad daylight. Two torpedoes left. I gotta make them count. There you are. Come on. Right in the face. How you like that? Ooh! Alright. I'm out of ammo. I need to make more. It took such a beating and still showed no signs of going down, so I rushed to make some more torpedoes, hoping it doesn't regenerate any health. Sup? You miss me? Oh, and it went underground. And it's back out again. Okay, I guess we're ready to rock. Come here. Give me a big old kiss on the lips. Sup, baby? Yeah, that's right. Stay locked on me. Stay in the fart cloud, stupid earthworm. Where you at, big mama? Take that. I can't see you. Come here. Suck. Stupid. Why are you not hurting me? It's kind of weird. Holy crap, the gas hurts me too. A little bit sorry. There you go. That was a good hit. I'm out of torpedoes again. That's right, stay in the cloud. Alright. Gotta make more. Not done yet. Day 99 came around and we need to head out soon. But I want to have one final crack at it. I hope this is the same one. I think it is. I'm not 100% certain, though. It's round three, baby! Bring it! Oh. Why are you not damaging me? That's so weird. I honest, is it because of my hull reinforcement or something? I don't... I don't understand. Then again, probably shouldn't complain. Come here. Okay, that hurts. Yep, that hurts. Stay in the cloud, stay in the cloud. Okay, so it can hurt me. It's retreating though. It's time to reload. Went into the ground again. Where'd you go? There. And it's in the ground again. Lovely. Show yourself. 
There you are. Come on. That's right. Just twirl around in the gas cloud. Stop running. You cannot run from the law. Come on, missiles, do your thing. Come on, what are you doing? What was that? What's up, mama? You disengage when I tell you to disengage. I'm not letting you get away. Come on. These are my last... These are my last torpedoes, man. Oh, crap. Okay. I'm out of torpedoes on both of them. Yeah, this, this got me. Woo-wee! You are one tough mamma jamma. Wow, well that does it. I'm out of supplies to make more ammo and doesn't even look scratched, so before I get myself killed, it's probably a better call for me to pack up my things. You might have won the battle, Mr. Reaper, but I'm leaving the planet, so... Well, I was gonna say that I won the war, but technically what I'm doing is an extreme case of retreating. Just ignore what I said. Till sundown, I was loading my valuables onto Fred, and also prepared a time capsule, in hopes these high-end supplies help some speedrunner in some way. So if you stumble on one of these supplies and this message, let your boy know. Day 100, and I can't believe it, it is time to say goodbye to the place we called home for so long, and I'm happy with the things that we got accomplished. Sure, I'm not going to miss the spooky terrors in the abyss, but I'm going to miss the tranquility of the shallows. This place does have its charm. Now let us not waste any time. Let's fire up Fred and make our escape to the stars. Yup. It's time to go. I can't wait to set foot on solid ground. It's been too long, baby. Alright. Let's get it. Let's get out of here. How I'm going to survive in the deep, dark vastness of space, I don't know. Uh, but it's probably better than being here. Here we go, you pigeons might want to get off. To infinity! And to your mom! Ooh. Alright. I think we broke past Approaching atmosphere. Orbital debris field. Hey, 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 hey. This was not part of the plan. I've had enough of being knocked out from plates. That's what got me into this whole mess. Orbital debris field clear. Performing gravity turn maneuver. You got it. Do what you gotta do. Well, that plan was... Almost entirely water now that I can see it from the outside. Confirm destination coordinates. Okay. Nearest interstellar phase gate. Let her rip. Ion boosters in three, two. To freedom. What is a wave without the ocean? A beginning without an end. They are different, but they go together. Now you go among the stars, and I fall among the sands. We are different, but we go together. Who am I still talking with you? Are we like fused together? What? What's going on? But, uh, rest in peace. So as Riley Robinson here passes through a wormhole to reach human civilization, let's briefly go through what happens between each game to the best of my understanding, which is that based on all the info that I could find on the subject, Riley did reach Altera, but good luck with the trillions of debt you now have from the resources used on planet 4546b. But besides the possible crippling debt that will haunt him and all of his future descendants, this serves as the only logical point for Altera to have gotten information on the presence of ancient architect technology on the planet, along with the deadliest bacteria now known to man. 
This leads many to conclude that this may have been the reason why Altera, a little while later, full sended research operations to the planet. But not everything has gone smooth sailing for them, their progress has quickly come to a halt. Which leads us to Subnautica Below Zero. We begin our adventure on a spaceship, and someone named Cal says this is as close as they'll go and want to tuck us out of launching to this planet here. Us being a person named Robin. Yet we do not care about the warnings, we need to find some answers on this alien planet, and the meteor shower on display before us will serve as cover to go unnoticed from Altera, the Boogeyman Corporation of the Universe. So we do just that, free fall for a bit, get pummeled by some meteors, and ultimately crash land on this frigid area of the ocean planet. And that's a level 3 concussion right there, right off the rip. Very good. Could have been worse. And we're gonna burn alive! Oh, never mind. Okay. We're good. Okay, okay, but so, uh... Point five six feet. Enjoy your stay! As I was saying, ENJOY YOUR STAY! BROTHER IN CHRIST, IT'S THE APOCALYPSE! Okay, I need some cover. Is this a cave? No, it's not a cave. It looked like a cave from a distance. Okay. Um, is this a food trick? Yeah, it's a nutrient block. Okay, well, at least I can, uh, you know, be satiated as I get obliterated. I quickly noticed that I am freezing, so that is one new survival element to take care of. In this case, by warming up next to my combusted space Bugatti. Things that I managed to grab at the crash site were some flares, more nutrition bricks, and some water bottles. So we are sorted and ready to sprint onto our life pod signal that is a bit further out. Reaching it required running past some plants that singed me. Trippy looking things, I might say. But we gotta get to safety as soon as possible. On the other side of the passage, we met the sea, and our life pod is out in the water, so it is time to hop across some ice platforms to get closer and meet our new neighbors. Oh, it's a penguin. Hey, little buddy. Oh, look at you. It's a penguin. If this were to be Mar- Ah! Oh, okay. As I was saying, if this would be Mario 64, the correct thing to do would be to yeet it. It has been done. I plunged into the shallows, and after a short swim in this pretty looking underwater ecosystem, reached my life pod, our first of hopefully many bases of operations. In here we have oxygen, temperature regulation, a bit of storage, and a fabricator to craft items. However, I got a notification from someone named Lillian, who expresses their condolences that our sister, who is named Sam, is no longer amongst the living. And Altera, who Sam worked for, says the cause of death was Sam's own negligence, which is very unlike her. So it's not just the ocean here that seems fishy. Seems like the reason we came here is to find out what happened. And our first point of interest is Delta Station, where I think Sam worked at for a while. But before we do any investigating, we need to get some basics sorted. Starting with gathering early materials like copper, titanium, and ribbon plants that seem to be used for energy storage. During my gathering session, I was notified to a nearby Altera cache. By the name, I assume it might have some supplies. However, it is 250 meters out, and I am a little bit too scared to just go out there with no tools. I did, however, reach this creepvine area. Kind of nice to see some greenery among the frozen wasteland. But here is where I got some seeds, and below, some quartz. But we can't forget, we are not alone here. Ooh, what the heck? What are you? Hello? Sea monkey? What? For real? Hello! Uh, you chill? By the looks of it, you are. Okay, cool. So, uh, we got friendly neighbors. That's more than I could ask for. After a bit more gathering, I noticed the sun was starting to set. And on top of that, a storm was rolling over, which led me to seek shelter in the pod, where I made some rubber, which helped me to make a knife, followed by some glass, as well as a battery, to make myself a flashlight, all while hearing the muffled sounds of thunder from above. With a few more ribbon plants collected, I got to making all things required to make this here scanner to learn new blueprints and document the ecosystem. So all that's left this evening was to hunt down fish for some easy food. The weather doesn't seem to have cleared up on the morning of day two, so let's stay underwater for safety. The water bottles came in handy and the fish got cooked with likely extreme levels of laser radiation, but it hits the spot regardless. A little resource run was done, getting more of the basics, ending with more creep vines but couldn't find any ribbon plants. When I noticed some broken machinery at the seafloor, and it turns out to be a scannable fragment of a sea glide, of which I managed to scan three out of three parts, unlocking the blueprint fully. Back at base it was time for many upgrades. Thanks to some creep vines I got to make some fiber mesh, which was used to make an oxygen tank, which also added blueprints for the oxygen tank's upgrades. Up next was a pair of fins to swim better, 
and these items help me to go around and search for copper, as well as plant scans, by the way. I'm trying to scan pretty much everything. But back to the point. The copper was turned into copper wire, which was used to make the recently learned Sea Glide. This bad boy runs on simple batteries, has a map and a frontal flashlight while improving our swimming speed. So now that I am more confident in my gear, I managed to scan a sea monkey. A little bit cautious, because I don't know what they do, since once I was done, it began to follow me. No. You're cute and all, but I do not trust you. But yeah, for most of the day, I hunted bladder fish as they can be turned into water bottles which don't spoil, so it's good to suck up on those to save on time later. A little red fish nipped me, so I learned to steer clear of those, and at sunset, I thought I was doing okay with my water supply, but wow, these are really easy to spot at night, so I got a flippin' ton of these little critters, and wow, that's enough water bottles to last me multiple days. Gotta stay hydrated, my lovelies. Day 3 came around and I was ready as can be to make it to the cache we were notified of, and took a moment on the way to admire the gorgeous auroras in the night sky. <sighs> if only everything on this planet wasn't out to eat me. Near the location I found some salt that's handy for preserving cooked foods, and scanned a light stick, as I will do with pretty much all structure pieces that I come across to be sure that I can build a very cool base once we get the builder tool. A new danger showed itself, a freezer fish that puts you in ice in a flash, which you need to break out of quickly in an attempt to not drown. So, noted, stay away from those. But that's not the only weird new fish that I came across. What the heck? Brother, you got a hole in your... everything. Oh, it's actually called the hole fish, well that kind of makes sense. Pick up symbiote. Ah! A pack of sea monkeys were sort of guarding the cache site, so I stealthfully splish splashed my way on over to the platform. Here were some basic supplies and a PDA, which I will read later on and summarize like many others. Since my focus was on a tunnel leading deeper underground filled with roots, I'm gonna want to check it out, but first, I started scanning parts of a mobile vehicle bay to start making, you guessed it, vehicles, and fully completed the grav trap blueprint. Basically, a fish trap device. And can't forget that I'm finding eggs of alien origin all over the place. Gotta catch them all, as they say. A beacon was here, so I scanned that and later picked it up, and found out that whole fish can give you some oxygen, which I think is really neat. What isn't neat is how curious these creatures are. Okay, well, what do you want? What do you want? Hi! Hey, now, it's easy! Get off me! No! Mm. Grabby! Where'd he go? Some of the wildlife you? down no. here is very what about the dive? Man, I lost my scanner! What the... Was it you? You have my scanner? No? Who has my scanner? It's not... Oh, wait. It is you! This is one of those moments where if violence doesn't solve your problems, you're just not using enough of it. Where'd it go? I think he dropped it, but now I don't know where the hell it is. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen. <laughs> Wait, you still have oh. it? Still have it? There it is, got it! Woo! Come to Papa. Well, glad that's done. Back to business. The beacon was placed at what I called the forest cave entrance to be sure that I could find it later. But decided, yeah, why wait? Let's have a look. And was immediately greeted by a bomb fish that chased me around till it popped like a balloon filled with C4. I checked the thing that it popped out of on the wall, hoping for sulfur, but just another egg this time. The real prize was finding some silver, very useful for electronics. And not only that, there was a sea monkey nest, and seems like they used trash to make it, like some birds do, I suppose. And among it was scannable parts of the vehicle bay. Thanks to this oxygen plant here, I could stay down long enough to find one piece of gold, highly useful for crafting. This one room had a hole that I wanted to explore, but it surpassed the depth of 100 meters. Which means if I were to go down there with my current equipment, my oxygen would be reduced further, and I have little enough of that as it is. So once I found one last piece to scan and completed the mobile vehicle bay blueprint, that was a mouthful, I skedaddled on home at sunset, where with five titanium ore I made a titanium ingot. I need this for the vehicle bay, by the way. What I'm missing though is a computer chip and for it, I am missing table coral. That shouldn't be too hard to find, I suppose. So on day four, I set out to get some, but had a really hard time figuring out how to get them. I was so certain that hacking at big coral would give the stuff, but it wasn't working. Apparently I'm wrong. On this outing though, I did find some anemone hearts at these here roots, 
Turns out that it's food, so that's handy dandy nourishment in a pinch. During my search, I ended up in the tunnels again, where I could hear terrifying roars that I think are close, but further down. At least this time here I found sulfur in the explodey fish pods. For a long time, I was still desperately looking for table coral, but there goes my sea glide! Out of juice, right as I spotted some sea dragon aliens in the distance that are very fast, so I am not going there without a vehicle, that's for sure. Right nearby, I spotted a long, busted cable that was coming from a man-made platform of sorts with a cage, so I went on over to investigate. On it was a mineral scanner that I got to learn, same as the desk that it was on. Some general supplies were here, but not much else of significance, so I looked down where the cable went and saw an abandoned platform further down. So I checked it out and got some more general supplies, when I got a distress signal in Morse code it seems, originating from a depth of 200 meters, much further than I can go at the moment. To make a new battery for the Sea Glide, I got two more ribbon plants, and then got notified that the location of the dock of Delta Station had been detected which is precisely where I wanted to go to get more information on what happened to Sam. Sadly, it is over 600 meters out from our pod and right in the direction of the sea dragons. Perfect! So, uh, yeah, let's just focus on what we can do, which is to power up the sea glide again and make a grav trap, which when placed outside started to provide a stable supply of easily accessible fish unlucky enough to get caught. Mushrooms were here, and they seemed to be edible, so I plucked some of those, but dang it, I still don't have table coral for the chip to make the vehicle bay. So I searched all day long until night had fully set in, but nothing. Completely empty-handed. It was first on day 5 where I found the elusive coral. It's this tiny stuff in the trenches, so with that sorted, I could finally craft the chip, make the bay, and place it at sunrise. But to my bamboozlement, there are no plans in this thing. What good is a vehicle bay without anything to craft? Seems like I'll have to do more exploring in the nearby areas for vehicle plans, so just in case I would need to repair anything on my scavenging trip, I fused two silver together to make a wiring kit, and with that, made a repair tool. This was possible thanks to the bit of sulfur that I had gotten. In case I found points of interest, I got a beacon made, and a first aid kit to heal the inevitable beating that I'm going to be getting. Since I had the repair tool now, I went to check out the holding cage with the busted cable, but no dice, nothing can be fixed here. So I kept exploring and scanned this cool looking arctic ray that's chill to my surprise, I was so certain that I was going to get impaled. After some more scanning of the local flora, I got chased off by some predator fishes, so I did what I could to escape its jaws, which led me to an area that has fragments of a sea truck. Seems like we'll be able to make a vehicle pretty soon. Very nice. So I got two parts scanned and spotted some vents. Seems like I'm quite far from home. This place is much deeper too. Eventually, I completed the sea truck blueprint, and with that, new BPs got synthesized. Excited to craft it, I went on home, where I saw that I unlocked plasteel ingots, synthetic fibers, advanced wiring kit, and the sea truck depth upgrade. As for the truck itself, I'm gonna need one advanced wiring kit, two pieces of glass, and a power cell. So we got our shopping list, everybody. Just need to watch out since I got an alert saying that dangerous weather is approaching. So let's stay low, and got more table coral too, and general supplies, ending the day by clearing up storage space by making titanium ingots as well as glass since each craft clears up quite a few slots. On day 6, I went to go find some gold since I'm going to need to make more computer chips, so the tunnels it is for me since that's where I found one piece last time. But remember how my scanner was pickpocketed right in front of me in broad daylight? Well, I returned the favor by stealing one of their descendants, an eye for an eye. I did manage to get one piece of gold which will help me out for the moment, so back home with that I went to go to make the advanced wiring kit. Now all that I'm missing for the truck is the power cell, for which I need batteries, for which I need ribbon plants, which were for some reason impossible to find for the longest time. Warning. 30 seconds. <gasps> oh. 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 oh, it's still coming! Oh, oh man. And my sea glad is added juice. Eventually I figured out they grow in small batches and little nooks amongst the rocks, so with that knowledge I started to get a ton of this stuff. Now that's a hefty haul right there, which was brought home and allowed me to make first off a battery for the sea glide since it was out of juice. That helped me to go get creep vine seeds super fast, that got turned into rubber, and then I could get my hands on my first power cell, which with all the other components allowed for the creation of our first sea truck. Here we go, first vehicle of the journey. Ooh. 
It looks like I can expand on it, which would make sense since this is supposedly a truck. So I guess I just need to make extensions for it. But this is nice, this is nice. The question is, how do I get into this thing? It is uh, quite solidly shut. Don't really, oh, oh, never mind, I found it. Let's go. Oh, oh okay, it's blizzard outside. No big surprise, but nice. We have a vehicle for transport, which means we should be able to make it to Delta Station. Perfect. We now have a vehicle that hopefully, potentially, could get us to Delta Station in one piece to figure out what happened to Sam. This expedition began in the early hours of day seven, reaching the vent area in no time, but man, the roars here tingled my spine in all the wrong ways. What the heck is that? What? Bro. You know what? My initial reaction might have been a little bit over the top. You probably taste delicious. Time to set foot on land after a whole week of swimming since we made it to the station. The dock had a few scannable objects around, sure, but man, it is freezing out here. I had to take a dip in the water to warm up. Note that going into a vehicle also regulates your temperature much faster than if you're just in the water. Now, it is time to get to the massive radio tower at the peak of the island, but here is what I got a radio transmission, warning me to not go any further as apparently I am trespassing. Listen, I got to this planet bypassing customs. My very existence at this point is trespassing. But hey, look, acid pools. That's new. However, I'm not touching that stuff. The plants in the cave served as warm-up points, which helped me from turning into a popsicle. Thank you, thermal release. Onwards we go, finding all sorts of new things, like shrub nuts. I will abstain from making a joke here. But we also found crystalline sulfur. I wonder what new things we can slap together with this stuff. At this sort of open concept research post in this cave, I found a PDA, something about Altera logs. But we don't have time to read. We need to reach the station. Here is where we meet the one warning us to get off their property. Ooh. Hey, Stop oh. right there, Altera. You're out of bounds. I'm not with Altera. Then your position is doubly precarious. What do you mean? If you're telling the truth, you're out of your mind. If you're lying, there'll be hell to pay. Wait! Who are you? Stay off my land. Yo, wait a minute! Wait a minute! The woman in the exosuit has been traced as far as my technology will allow. Uh-huh. And what's that? It would appear I'm far less alone on this planet than I had anticipated. Okay, that has Signal to be- Will you shut up? I am 100% certain that has to be the mercenary from the first game that came with the people that we were supposed to save. That was a badass that managed to get tusks from the, 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 the long fish, as I tended to call them. That has to be the same person. It is the same voice. That does mean though, that they didn't die in the first game. Cause the last thing we heard about them, uh, their name was something with an M. Eh, I forget details. Uh, they were like dragged it deeper down while they were like diving in a cave. That's all I remember. I will uncover thy name, don't you worry. Now having reached the tower, I figured out it was for surveillance. And by climbing around here, I found another PDA, as well as a open box that had a pop-up for test override module port. No idea what the heck that could be, and I have more important things to take care of. The sun is setting and I don't intend to freeze here, so after warming up at another thermal lily, enjoying the blood-colored sunset, I managed to get to what I think is Delta Station, where a box got me the plans for a scanner room. In search of shelter, I entered one of the two buildings, and it was snowed in from a busted window, but this place was filled with wonderful scannable pieces for me to build later on, as well as tons of PDAs that I will sift through back at HQ. I also made sure to scan the rooms themselves to allow for more expansions on my own constructions. But yeah, hunkered down here in this little abandoned shelter waiting for the storm to subside. As day 8 came around, I noticed a map of the area mounted on the wall, and I think that I'm at the yellow marker. Not fully sure. Better scan this in case I need to make one later on. One thing I did learn is that Sam worked at Phi Robotics, so that's probably one of the other markers, I believe. As for my stay here, in short, Scanned everything, stole posters, got a shaving kit, more PDAs, and a picture of a penguin abomination. How nice. 
Can't forget about the modification station, though. If I make this, I should be able to make upgrades and such. What I noticed is that there were two beds, one from Jeremiah, and the other is from someone named Fred, that I conclude were like Sam's co-workers, since in the second building, I get notified that this place is a bit higher class, likely belonging to this place's superior named Emmanuel. This was said by our protagonist with a not-so-friendly tone. As I was scanning all the fancier stuff here, it was mentioned that Sam got under management's skin. An aquarium was scanned, which got me excited, along with an observatory room. We really need to build our tools soon. We have so many things learned already to make an awesome base. Having finished up here, I waddled on back to the truck at the dock, popped on in, and saw a trench right under me. Upon inspection, this place is mineral rich but has thermal activity, so I should watch out for that and the plated sea dragons that call this place home. Later on, I don't know what possessed me to hop out of the truck to scan this here vent, but I did, which is when I got chomped by one of the foul beasts. Had me startled quite a bit, but I lived to my dismay. So I got straight back into my truck and skedaddled on home, where I made a mineral detector, and this thing is fantastic! Has a little screen to show what you can search for and where to go. It works really well. Now for the heaps of PDAs we have. Day 9 would be the day to catch up on all the juicy gossip in bullet points. Sorry if I make mistakes, but this is what I gathered. <clears throat> Emmanuel, the one in charge here, was the person to originally send the message that Sam passed away due to her own negligence. As for the tons of messages between ourselves and Sam, it kind of goes from us not wanting Sam to work for Altera, since they are scummy, but Sam was excited and came to this planet to work on some mobile device of sorts. Apparently it's a spy pangling which mimics creatures. For a bit Sam mentioned she's seeing someone, like dating, not like visually observing someone, you get what I mean, but ultimately seems like it didn't work out. We do not know who this person might have been at this point in time. We find out that the protagonist is upset that the company that they worked for kind of got bought up by Altera and we really hate Altera and yeah, so bummer. But the more important bits is that the robo Pengling found something big under the ice, which Altera immediately covered up. Sam later comes to think that we might have been right about not trusting the corporation as she thinks something terrible is going on as apparently what was found was a leviathan frozen in ice, and it is infected with a deadly bacteria known as Kara, and it doesn't stop there. Seems like the higher-ups want to use this deadly bacteria in weapons and experimental treatments. But weapons, yeah, that won't have any negative repercussions at all. As for more info on this Emmanuel person, he sent Sam to Outpost Zero as well. Congratulate some person named Danielle Valenti at the team at Omega Lab. Apparently, they closed Phi Robotics in order to redirect its funds to research the Kara Bacterium. The team he is in charge of is called Frost Pack, very creative, and this dude is just... I don't know, kinda weird, makes me uncomfortable. He congratulates his partner, who isn't here, on some things and apologizes very unenthusiastically for not making it to their daughter's presentation and goes on and on about how well their relationship works when they're not together and like... He's just a work-obsessed weirdo that's just kinda interested in his partner's accomplishments and that's kind of it. Jeremiah from one of the beds seems to be in charge of maintenance and doesn't always like his job. Fred from the other bed says his truck keeps getting sabotaged weirdly enough, but Sam helped him out so we know that they know each other. Also, I don't know if I'm gathering this correctly, but apparently Fred was the one to originally be the one to have found the Leviathan. Other people at Delta Station were named Parvin, Zeta, Danielle, the one that was praised earlier I assume, and someone named Vin. All these people knew Sam, since in this here PDA we can see them having a conversation together. But yeah, that was a whole day of reading. Time to spice things up on day 10 by testing how deep the sea truck can actually go. But before I could test it, I noticed that the location of the person in the mech that we saw is incredibly far down. I doubt the truck will get that far, especially since these sharks keep pushing me all over the place like a game of ping pong. It was a nightmare. I had to take time to repair this piece of junk too. And now we can test its limits. Without upgrades, it reaches a total depth of 150 meters. 50 more than I can go myself, so not too great just yet. But this did let me spot a platform with things on it. I wanted to check it out ASAP, but these freaking sharks, man, they kept chasing me off. 
which led me to get extremely lost in the sauce here. But hey, I did see a bit of a green alien structure right there. Mm, very interesting. My escape maneuvers led me to this tube that I scanned, and here is where I unlocked the oh-so-desired builder tool, along with many new blueprints like a bioreactor and a high-capacity oxygen tank, among other things. With this achievement completed, I returned on home and got to work getting the required supplies for the builder tool, but I am missing more gold to complete the chip for it. So I set out to get that on day 11, swimming back and forth all over the place since it seems like all the ones in the nearby tunnels I already had gotten. What I did get were root postules, which apparently are reactive compounds. Sounds really explosive. I went out and wandered onto the vents area, where I was very cautious to get bits of gold as the plated dragons were distracted. So I got one gold, two gold, three gold, four! Okay, okay, okay. I'm out. That's enough gold. Oh man. Alrighty then. Back at HQ with this awesome batch. Got to make the builder tool, which added emergency shelter blueprints to our databank, likely some basic structures that we can make now. To begin our primary base of operations, I put together a multi purpose room at midnight. The next day I did a bit of a quartz run, which let me finish up a hatch to be able to enter our structure, but this place still has no power, so there is no oxygen in here. To remedy this, I placed a solar panel on the roof, which is sticking out of the water a bit as you can see here. So now the inside is fully operational. First thing I did was dump all the decor items I looted to free up some inventory space, then got more of the basic supplies since we need to build some essential pieces in the room. I did make windows, which well, aren't really essential, but we all love a good view and then got to placing two lockers for storage, a fabricator so I don't depend on the one in the pod, and a battery charger to keep cycling them, which will save me time compared to making new ones all the time. As for quality of life upgrades, I got a coffee machine mounted, which our PDA considers a lovely dirty bean water, which I couldn't agree more on that description. Next up was an executive desk, since I'm the big boss around here, I need something shimancy, which will hold my placeable decor. To finish off the day, I got all of the supplies in the life pod up to our new lockers, so we are fully moved in into the new crib. In the morning of day 13, I decided it's time to make a high capacity oxygen tank, so I was out getting titanium for it, and I came across an ore vein that had gold and silver in it. I was super excited to see this since gold was still a little bit on the short end of things. Once my titanium gathering was finished, I went straight back home and got the new tank completed at around noon. Another key upgrade I need is the depth module for the sea truck, but it needs enameled glass, which even after having played the first game, I still don't know how to fully pronounce that, but it needs flip at diamonds. Great, so I did some preparations for an upcoming expedition by plucking fish from our graph trap garden in my backyard, cooked some and salted a few separately so I can take them along without spoiling, and swap the battery on the sea glide. So with all that set, time to find diamonds, and I think I'm gonna have to go quite far out or deep to find some. And wow, this game is just, it is really gorgeous. No matter which area I'm in, it is always a sight to behold. What I did find was some platforms with a farm on it, so I scanned that and unlocked the exterior grow bed. Seems like I'm gonna plant my own ribbon plants very soon, but it's getting dark quickly, and we are in the middle of nowhere. So we need to keep on our toes as we scavenge across the cliff sides, which was lucrative as I came across a few bits of lithium. Not diamonds, but still very useful, I'm sure. Man, that is just so spooky out here. I feel like I am always being watched. The search continued into day 14, and the thought popped into my head that maybe diamonds are where this lava stuff is. So very cautiously, I got closer with the truck in fear that the heat would damage it, but it's fine. So we have access, everybody. Let's see what's in these fiery tunnels. And right off the rip, we got us a ruby, which is amazing, and a ton of gold. Jackpot, baby. Some little glow shrimps named rock rubs were scanned, and I shoved them into my pocket. I like crustaceans, man. They are elite organisms. What I didn't expect was to stumble upon a massive structure down here. Ooh. Diamonds! Let's go! Oh, I knew this would be the right place. Come to Papa, baby! Oh, this place is magnificent. All right. I hear the geysers, but I have this tingly feeling. You know the tingly feeling when something ain't right? That's uh, originating from whatever's below there. That's uh, that's where that feeling's coming from, so I'm gonna stay away from that hole. But uh, we got more Excuse you. We have more important things to do. We got rubies, and we have whatever this thing is over here. 
Yo, sea truck dock. And I thought I saw something about a moon. There it is, the moon pool. And we have a scannable piece of a laser cutter fragment. This is so good. We just made amazing progress right there. Okay, so this symbol reminds me of one of the symbols that was on the map. I don't know if it was Omega Lab, uh, but all I know is that Omega Lab was now in charge of uh, researching the Kara virus. Bacterium, whatever you want to call it, potato, potato, probably isn't, but never mind that. And uh, yeah, that is a no go zone, and it's leading straight into their facility that I imagine I cannot enter. So we're gonna need to find a way to break in or power this whole station so we can get in. I licked this place clean of all of its diamonds and rubies, leaving not a single scrap behind. This is amazing progress indeed, but combining this excitement with my tension was a very weird mix of feelings for sure. Okay. Was that gate open the whole time? Mm-mm. Nope. Oh, and everything's busted here too. I wanna look inside, but I have so much important loot. Oh, this is one of those moments where curiosity killed the crow. No, oh, mama! I'll just have a look-see. Just a wee... Oh, 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 easy now. Crow, get it together. Yep, nothing's there. Okay, time to go home. Well, time to go back. Back from whence I came. With impeccable driving skills, if I do say so myself. No time was wasted getting home to unload all this precious loot, which was exactly what I needed to make the enameled glass that I wanted. As well as thanks to the lithium that I had gathered, got to make plasteel ingots, which together formed the MK1 depth module for the sea truck, which got slapped into this rust bucket immediately. And yes sir, we can now reach a depth of 300 meters, that is double of what it was before. To finish off the day, since I learned to make a moon pool, added a connection tube to the base, and to that, the moon pool, which caused the structural integrity of the base to bust. Oh boy. So, repairs are in order on day 15. To restore the structure's integrity, I had to remove two of the windows, and then repair all of the leaks with the repair tool, which when completed, rebooted the system and got the drain system up too, getting all of the water out neatly. The truck got parked in the moon pool, since here it can easily be repaired, and it charges too, which is an amazing benefit. The issue about that though is that it takes power from the base, and it is nighttime, so my one solar panel isn't cutting it. Can't craft anything at night. So I place a second solar panel, just so we have a bit more before we get to making a bioreactor for power. As I was restocking on food, I figured I'll need to reinforce the base to keep expanding, and that's gonna need more lithium, so that's what I set out to do. On the way, I did use a knife on this here ribbon plant to get its seeds for our future farm, and after that found this platform with a crane that had the blueprint for a rebreather in this case, which is great to extend your time diving. From this position though, I spotted a cave with a lit alien pillar, so of course I had to check it out, and it went deep, a long cavern with more of the same pillars, until I got to a larger structure with a force field and figured out this is where the distress signal was coming from that was like Morse code so many days ago. So hesitantly, I hopped out of my truck and swam into the force field, landing me in a cave, but I was soon contacted by an unknown Sorry, voice. That's my line. We're running out of time. Okay. Uh, that's weird. Uh, we're running out of time for what? Um, the voice seemed calm though, so uh, I don't have reason to, uh, you know, not trust it. There we go. What is this place? What is all this? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I can help you better if you show yourself. If we could show ourselves, we would not need storage. You mean you don't have a physical presence? Okay. Are you one of them? An architect? What? Storage medium identified. We will be lost unless we find a new host. Can you help? Oh. Can you use my PDA for storage? You were not with the group from before. Your cybernetic components may have their signal. Altera? No, my equipment is, uh, borrowed. We will have to do. Okay, uh, so, uh, literally they're running out of terabytes. That, you know, I guess that would have been something that they might have been able to solve with how advanced they are, whoever they may be. Um, uh, I just feel kind of weird. It's like, are you an architect? I have no idea what architect 
in this case scenario means. I later reached a large room which had pedestals holding green ion cubes, so of course I snatched them all up. What's yours is mine. But now for the main hall. How long have you been stored here? Longer than him. Warning. Sanctuary power. Critical. Our data can be downloaded from the terminal. We may speak more once the transfer is complete. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Uh, Hurry. Yeah, because we ha we have no reason to not trust whatever the heck is in that box. Uh, sure. Yeah, I don't see what could go wrong with this at all. Insert storage medium. Okay. Storage medium accepted. Brace, Brace for transfer. For transfer. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Bro! Hey yo, am I gonna get the Omnitrix or something? Transfer complete. How do you feel? Why do you sound like you're inside my head? Oh, you did not! I identified hospitable capacity within your cerebral cortex. You are in my head? Bro! I offered you my PDA! Get out! Oh no. Does your kind perceive a boundary between cybernetic and organic components? My mind is not a component. You sound angry. Oh uh, yeah, Lil. We will allow you a moment to process. Well don't you go silent on me. <laughs> Honestly, they're Hello? awfully polite. <laughs> this is not happening. That's the explanation. It's not happening. Oh. Uh. All right, so we got Optimus Prime in our brain. That's that's how I wanted to, you know, start my day. Okay. Day 16 came around and I am out of here. Just as I was going to leave the cave, the voices in my head started to speak again. And in short, this entity is like a mix of a ton of entities, becoming one but being multiple. I don't know, it's kind of confusing, kind of weird. But they don't perceive themselves as individuals, and it's chosen a name, that being Alan. Well, okay, who am I to judge? Alan is known as an architect, the precursor race, as Robin puts it. And to get Alan out of our brain, we need to build him a new body. We get the plans loaded straight into our databank, but we have no idea what resources are needed and where to find them, since he's been disconnected from the network for a very long time. The sun was rising, so before I would go home, I made another attempt to find lithium, finding only very, very few. I mean, heck, it's been easier to find diamonds, like I just went into a thermal cave and found a whole vein. Easy pickings. I also found this massive egg, biggest one thus far. Looking for lithium got me traveling around the Delta Island, and I found this floating quartz node, looking a little bit out of place, but my attention was quickly redirected to a terrifying monstrosity. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you? It's hard to tell how big it really is because I don't know how far away it is, but that is. That's my spiky boy. Oh. Ah! Turn off the lights. I'm out. <laughs> Although, that is the exact direction where the pilot's last known position is, so we have to go there eventually. But uh, not right now. Not while I have the motherload of uh, diamonds on me. Mm -mm. No, sir. I'm good. Oh, whoa. Wait, this is the entrance that I was scared to uh, peek out of. Yeah, this is all it was. It was just a way out. Huh. I guess there wasn't some giant nasty abomination behind this door. I thought it would still be in the cave. Okay. With some last bits of lithium gathered, I made an attempt to scan the big ol' lobster, and turns out they're called rock punchers. This one almost got to me, I think. So with all these supplies in hand, I went on home and reinforced the base like I had planned. Day 17 had me making the rebreather that'll come in handy on those very deep dives, and a compass, so now at the top of my hood, I can know where I'm going. With some table coral gathered, I could make another computer chip, and later stumbled upon a new PDA that was all about Altera's massive ship called the Aurora that had been misplaced. Copper was retrieved, and with that, I was about to craft something when I got interrupted. Apparently, Alan has detected an artifact 545 meters from our location, which I think will help us learn how to build his body. Now back to what I was doing. 
I made the vehicle upgrade console, which was built in the moon pool, and from here I can customize my sea truck, which was fittingly named Ford F-250, and painted purple with orange accents to keep it stylish. A heavy thunderstorm was going on for quite some time, so I cozied up and did some light work, like adding a chair to the desk, made a thermos, which was filled with coffee, and the windows were replaced that I had to take off a few days ago. And lastly, a light post to hopefully make the view from the rooms nicer. 18 flew on by, got a ton of titanium, made some platforms, and placed some grow beds to start the farm, starting with the ribbon plant seeds that I had gotten a few days ago, but I don't have enough resources for everything that I want to build, so more collecting it is. Gotta go, gotta go, that was risky. Ooh, one bite was a quarter of my health. 30 seconds of oh, oxygen remaining. Perfect. Oh, double perfect, no! Oh. Oxygen. Please. Oh, so close. Oh, thank goodness. Woo. That had my cheeks clenched there for a hot minute. Oh, boy. Well then, back to business. Placed a L-tube, made some enameled glass, and then went to look for lead. I had used up the bits that I had found here and there and forgot where to find this stuff. So in the meantime, I scanned this brine wing, the frizzy fish, as well as a spinner fish, but no luck on the lead. Day 19 was another day that I wanted to read up on all the PDAs that I had found, but wasn't that many this time all around. All that's new info is that Aurora had gone missing 18 months ago, which is the ship. It failed to check in at the scheduled date, pretty much. People like investors at Altera are getting a little bit suspicious on what happened. As for the architects like Alan and our Skull, they have a preference of, per se, a host body that is to them very efficient, and I find it hilarious how technically they could make infinite copies of themselves with no repercussions at all, but to them that is considered rude, and basically, if one does that, they should just alt F4 themselves. When it comes to the ion cubes that I borrowed, they each hold a power equivalent to 5 kilotons of TNT, and are likely an energy source. The only other thing in the PDA that I took note of is that making a cold suit is possible, so I'm gonna look forward to warming up when I make one. Now let's just slap another T-tube onto the building to open up a new wing for rooms, and then got back to looking for lead. The journey led, no pun intended, me to this area with colorful geysers, and they are quite explosive. This biome had a ton of lithium, so I made sure to get as much of it as I could, and luckily caught myself in the nick of time. <gasps> oh, oh, that's the big thing, that is the big thing. And after all that, I am very far from home, and my glide is almost out of juice. I have one lead on me, and that's all that I need, so thankfully I made it back in one piece and made one more enameled glass that let me place an observatory, this glass bubble if you will. During the night hours, I was busy refilling my food and water bars, swapped the glide's battery, and refilled my cup of joe. Day 20 it is, and I was just decorating a bit inside the observatory, as well as just general things around the main room. Got some titanium, and made a multi-purpose room that will house the bioreactor. We still have to solve our energy problems. So after an odd interaction with a sea monkey that I think brought me copper, got some seeds that turned into lubricant, and that is all that I need to place the bioreactor. It takes organic material and powers up the base. Now we are at a max power counter of 650. At night, I was just combining resources to save on storage space, and fill the crops with our plucked ribbon plants. It really saves on space, it's you can just take the grown ones and put them in there and they don't die. Day 21, and it's time to make the modification station, and I am out of lead yet again! Perfect, so time to hop into Ford F-250 and look for some, in the direction of the artifact Alan had detected. And once I got to the general area, I found some more man-made structures, and among them was a PDA and a scannable pathfinder tool. It seems to be able to point you out of confusing caves. Since I'm here, I tried to get to the artifact, but it was a little bit of a tight fit. But we managed, and got all the way down to the chamber with an alien-like machine. Ellen says it's more than an artifact. To summarize, it'll help follow traces of his people left on this planet. We should keep searching in hopes Alan regains connection to his network. After that, Alan becomes curious how we humans communicate without telepathy, thinks us talking is quite primitive, and doesn't fully understand the concept of needing space to think. Feels like being disconnected from the network is very quiet. Now that we're out and about again, it's time to focus on lead again. But your boy got distracted with scanning since, dear lord, them be some big ol' whales right there, aptly named glow whales. And some new creatures showed themselves like these prehistoric insect-looking things. Also, at some point, my PDA said something about Molen and icebergs? Hollow chambers is what I think that means. 
Nearby was the Geyser area, and this must be the main hunting ground for large carnivores. What? How did that freeze? Hold on, wait. Is this my moment to scan it? Hold on. If it's frozen, this is my one opportunity to add you to my Pokedex, my guy. <gasps> oh, still very much so alive. Scan Cryptozookus. Alright, cool. I'm out. Thank you very much. Peace. Terrified, alone, in the dark, I repaired my truck in hopes I could survive an attack, feeling so, so vulnerable, man. Oddly enough, on day 22, right next to me in the darkness was a giant wreck and a lot of thermal activity, apparently. But the most interesting thing I found were around it. For example, gel sacks, a useful crafting resource from which I got six seeds in total to bring home. Uraninite to have a nuclear power plant eventually, and more lithium. This massive trench had my attention, but I wouldn't make it too deep in my current condition. This is when Alan notified me of another artifact location. I wonder how many of these things there are, actually. I wanted to check out the wreck, but I was running out of that sweet H2O, so I had no other choice but to take my long journey back and drink up back home, which is also when I planted the six gel sack seeds to get production underway. One big improvement I wanted for the base was a sea truck dock to park it once we have more trailers on it, so I did a general resource run, made sure to keep the bioreactor stocked on up, and wanted to end the day by placing the dock, but for the life of me, I couldn't get it connected to my existing structure. It took up the rest of the afternoon and evening just trying to find a sweet spot for it. 23 was incredibly rough, the build was an absolute mess trying to get this hooked up, and once I did, everything began to break. So, repaired it all anew, restocked supplies for the billionth time since I keep running out, and finally finished the dock expansion in a very impractical way, but it'll do for now. By now, it was already night. It was first the next day, where with this ladder I could from within access the new section, and in the spirit of building, got to make a modification station that I wanted so long ago. In here are two more sea truck depth upgrades, and one for a thermal blade, which I made since this can cook fishes upon slashing him. Easy food on the go. Next up I made sure to make four batteries so I can have an easy cycle going for the charging station, and collected more seeds from the gel sacks that had fully grown already, allowing me to expand the crops even further. Now is first when I docked the truck into the dock, thinking here I could add more trailers to it, but that doesn't seem to be the case. We might have to find some more scannable items to make them, and going deeper is a likely way to find new parts to scan, but the next depth module needs synthetic fibers, which needs rubies, and spiral plant clippings, which I have yet to come across to my knowledge. So while I was thinking on what to do, I restocked the food supply, as well as table coral, much to the excitement of the sharks. 25 was really relaxing, just added a bedroom since it's been way too long since Robin here has had a good night's sleep, so I made it all nice with an aquarium, a fancy bed, jukebox, speakers, plants, shelves, a trash can, benches, counters, as well as posters. That seems like it went by fast, but in reality it took really long to get all the supplies in between placing the furniture, so I hunkered down for a lengthy sleep. And upon waking on day 26, Alan spoke to us that he is highly confused on what the heck dreams are since he's witnessed them, which Robin tries to explain, but I'm not sure if he grasps the concept. Some fishes were yoinked out of their natural habitat and forced to live for all of eternity in my bedroom. Y'all best start getting along there, little buddies. Sacks were coming along great, should have a full patch very soon, so as usual I was getting resources, but this time stumbled upon a nearby trench that I had not seen yet, and this might be the deepest one thus far. Had a PDA in there too. Sadly, I was so focused on this find that I forgot how deep I was as I found it. And to top it all off, my Sea Glide battery ran out, so in a panic, I tried to swap batteries on my tools to get it powered up, but in my frantic state, I succumb to oxygen deficiency. But it's not too bad, you just kind of respawn at base, and I don't think there's any negative repercussions. But this is where Alan said he found a new artifact location. That's two we still need to find as it stands. Catching up on some PDA info, Fred's troubles with the trucks had been caused by sea monkeys, which he's aptly called raccoons of the sea. And as for the PDA in the trench we just got, that was also from Fred. And by the sounds of things, he barely made it out of that trench alive. He had some cargo with him that he had to ditch in order to not get swallowed whole by some predator down there. Needless to say, his boss, Emmanuel, won't be happy about the lost cargo. 
To end the day, I added one more locker for storage, and for once, actually, plucked a gel sack from the crop, unlocking me more crafting recipes. Curious to see if I missed anything on the crash site, I wanted to hop on land on day 27 and immediately had to bail since dangerous weather pulled over, which I think can hurt me from the hail or something like that, so we'll be back. For now, time to check out the new trench with the truck. Finding it wasn't too hard, so down we go to an area covered in roots, likely originating from the coral tentacle things all over the place on the surface. A bonus to this place is there are easy diamonds here. I feel like lead so far has been harder to get than this stuff. Further below, I spotted a new creature, a large squid that causes terrible roars that likely is what Fred was talking about that he had to escape from. Since I'm in a new biome, I began to scan everything and anything, making sure not to get too close to the squid shark things, and managed to scan a part for the sea truck, which is a fabricator module. Sounds like a trailer to add to it. This place does go past 300 meters, so I can't fully explore it just yet, but I did manage to complete the scan for this new module, and with danger lurking around every corner, I was quick to rise from the depths and return back home. For the new module, I'm going to need plasteel, a chip, and three accursed lead. Of all the things I'm missing, one lead to be specific. So close, yet so far, this required another outing for the one remaining which I thankfully found. So on day 28, the module could be made. It looks like a box that I can move when pushing it. And it clicks to the back of the seat truck in a very satisfying way. Inside of it is a small locker and a fabricator which will be very helpful on my travels. Sadly, I can't add any more lockers myself, but oh well, that's fine. Now would be the perfect time to head on land since there is no more danger storms, so I grabbed my coffee and made landfall at the first beach that we got to, and after a little bit of a stroll, reached the crash site. Surprised that the space Bugatti is still burning, but okay. And all I found was a few more basic items, nothing really of significance. As I went back to F-250, I knew the one key item to progress would be the plant clippings to make the next depth module, so that is my new objective. And on the search, I found copper nodes. I'm going to need myself a drill to make use of these resource-rich boulders. On my way in search of the clippings into the direction of one of the artifacts, I came to this desolate area with very little life. An active volcano detected nearby. Yeah, well, there's something else that's highly active nearby. I think that's a little bit more of our concern. Of course the artifact has to be under whatever the heck that is. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, you do, you do what you gotta do, but what the heck is this? Are these floating islands? I got the big whales here too, just big chillin'. Okay, okay, oh, is that a seahorse? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Are you mad? I don't think he's mad. Nighttime was setting in quickly, but I wanted to explore these massive lilies that float on the surface of the ocean. Sure, they do feel a little bit out of place, but I couldn't resist wanting to walk on them. But of course, danger weather foiled my plans yet again. The next day, I was alerted to a large rock nearby that is a point of interest. There is a large anomalous mass of rock that has broken away and risen above the surrounding terrain. Big rock, got it. Considering this is a new biome, the trail of new things to scan into my database led me to spot a building with the Omega symbol. Omega Lab it must be, I thought, and this place is busted, and eerie noises were a constant during my stay here. Some things I unlocked outside was plans for swim charge fins and a type of acid. Plus, these grow beds here had new seeds to collect, and yes, the sign here confirms my suspicions on what this place is. Heading inside, it is clear that it's been abandoned for a while, and there were two designated living quarters that I could find, the first being of Danielle Valenti, and inside was a picture of who I think is Danielle, and definitely Sam. So I conclude they were the ones mentioned when seeing someone was brought up in the logs. More furniture was up for scan, so I got it all, of course, and the next room was that of someone named Vin, who left some PDAs behind. Across from the rooms was a garden of sorts where I learned the plans for a water filtration system and that for a control room and this glass dome for a multi-purpose room and a heavy door. The main room of the site was an utter mess. One of the PDAs mentioned enzyme mutation, which makes sense. They redirected funds to this lab to work on the Kara virus that they found. A power cell charger was learned as well as this nuclear reactor that seems to be part of the cause of this building's state. 
That is all I could find, so as I hopped into the truck to leave, I got communication from Alan who thinks this place was sabotaged intentionally. Possibly that Sam destroyed it, even though it is very unlike her. Pathways in the area led out to the open sea again, where I found a newt fish, best name, absolutely, hands down, that is not up for debate, and some dead lilies with way too many squids for my own comfort. On day 30, I figured this is prime time to read on more info to figure out what the heck had been going on here, and some things start to make sense, so here we go. A person named Alexis was here, who is an independent investigator that reports to Altera. Alexis states that the lab was breached with a heavy impact from a sea truck with like a battering ram attachment or something. Right after, a localized charge was detonated from a distance. All equipment got busted, and all live specimens for the Kara research are no more. Luckily, the personnel is safe, and unlikely that the bacteria got out. As we know, Danielle lived here and was the boss of this laboratory as a biochemist that reports to Emmanuel. Vin, also a biochemist, worked here but reports to Danielle, hence why I think Danielle was in charge for sure here. Danielle reported on the enzyme mutation, talking about rapid multiplication, several mutations, and could have significant life-saving treatment possibilities, and, well, the Kara virus was retrieved from postules from the Leviathan that they found. Anything gotten from postules just... It can't be good. The PDA in Vin's room shows a convo between him and Sam, where Vin slips up, and that way Sam figures out that they are mutating the Kara bacteria here, which seems to have ticked Sam off. This must have been what Sam was talking about, that something bad was going on. Maybe this also resulted in some stresses between her and Danielle, since Danielle is in charge of it. I guess we may never know. After all that reading, I managed to find two scannable items that I didn't manage to complete at the moment, but one is an ultra-high capacity tank and a sea truck horsepower upgrade. This area had my focus on other matters though, like all its rubies and nickel, a new ore that seems to be very rare, so I was sure to leave a beacon here labeled accordingly, but this place wouldn't be looted so easily. No. No, no, thank you. Oh, you cheeky little. <gasps> oh, oh, no, 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 get off me, get off me. Oh man, I was so certain that I could just scan you, but no, you have to be like that. Okay, I'm gone. Thank you. This place has scannable hive minds that sound incredibly ominous, but yeah. Let's not worry about that, for we have three nickel and lots of rubies, so it is time to deposit this find. Which was done successfully in the early hours of day 31, after which I placed some more decor and added an arrow ray to the tank. There's lots of new building pieces to create, so first up is the control room, popping out from the main multi-purpose room of the base. From here I can check all power levels, any damages, but most importantly, paint the base in the same colors as F-250 and name it the Crow Nest. Not to toot my own horn, but that is one fine looking mansion. No control room is complete without a window, so that was added as well. After messing around with the hologram for a while, since it's pretty, I got to adding a bulkhead door to the reactor wing to add more structural integrity overall, and sort of divide power generation away from the other sectors. The next day, I designated the moon pool as the new storage area, although temporarily, as the first multipurpose room that we made, I want to keep as a crafting station along with any food production. With tons of more titanium gathered, I got to make a new room next to the one with the bioreactor. Had to remove some unnecessary pieces, but this is all to make room for our upcoming nuclear reactor. To complete it, I needed even more lead, and I had the worst luck finding it for so long until I finally decided to use the mineral detector and immediately solved that issue, found lead super fast this way. This allowed me to, within my reactor wing, place the nuclear reactor on day 33, boosting our max power to a whopping 3,150, but it needs rods to power it, of which I could make one. I'm going to need more uraninite to complete a set of four, but this will power the base up for now quite well, and this is more reason to seal this area off for now. I was getting resources for a scanner room, which is when I found two more PDAs lying around, but never mind that, the scanner room was completed, attached to the moon pool. This room will help me scan for resources in the area. A scanner room will allow you to survey the surrounding region for fragments, and material resources like lithium or copper, 
or titanium if you need help finding it, for whatever reason. What's that supposed to mean? This space has a hologram map in the middle and has its own fabricator for some upgrades to make the scans more efficient. But for now, I redirected my focus to a new room since I wanted to place a water filter for easy water and salt production. To get that done, I whipped up some aerogel thanks to the gel sacks that we have growing in the grow beds. And there we go. Time to place the filter, but I noticed it's not that big. It can fit in the bioreactor room, so that's where I placed it and ended up removing the new room since it was a useless addition to the base. After so much building, I needed to do some exploring on day 34 to see if I could find a new biome. <gasps> well, that thing is massive. Did that actually kill one of the Zookas thingies? Bro. It actually slayed it, bro. I wonder what happens if I slash it with my knife. Like, if I get something... No? Okay, well, that's good. That's satisfying. That's all I needed to know. Thank you for clarifying. A sunken volcano was found, but it would be other things that would find me. Oh, oh, oh! No, 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 no! No, get him! No! No, 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 don't, don't Oh, okay, we're at 62. That's a squid. Okay, go, 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 go. Full send it. Oh my gosh. I thought I was in the clear there. What? Um, he pointed me in the direction of the wreckage where I wanted to go, so that's cool. The escape landed me back at that one wreck that we found a while back. This place seems safe enough to do some repairs after such a thrashing. I did find an entrance to the wreck, but the only things that I could find were basic supplies and things to open with a laser cutter, which I never fully learned how to make. However, it was as if I was rewarded for my heightened levels of fears of today, as I found the holy grail of my adventure which was hidden in plain sight this whole time. <gasps> no way. I was here this whole time. Bro, that, 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 that's all I needed? Well, okay, uh, mission accomplished, sort of, I suppose. The nearby trench had uraninite, and I needed more for the rod, so I got some of that and descended to check out some more, and hello, that's a scannable sea truck docking piece. So I'm going to hang around here for a bit to get them all. A new alien structure was uncovered, but it'll be just past 300 meters, so we'll have to come back for it at another date with a better depth upgrade. At night, I got a second of three scans of the new truck module. Day 35 came around, and the last scan is in sight. Oh, hey buddy. Hi. Man, this monstrosity is camping this spot. It is insane. But I didn't give up. I was dead set on getting this scan done. I just gotta be sneaky. Also, found an egg that wiggles. Do they all wiggle? I'm I'm not sure. Either way, back to the scan. It was nothing. Okay, there's the spiral plants that I spotted. And it is super close. It's getting closer. Oh wait, okay, there it comes. Here it comes. No, oh, I can hear it. I don't know where I'm going. Oh. Are we good? Wait a minute, this is my beacon. What? Now wait a darn second. How is this place connected to that? I thought I was on the other side of the planet compared to this one. What? I am so confused. Well, at least this landed me on some horsepower scans for the truck, so that's a plus. But about that scan... At this point, I don't know what to do. You're camping that one piece. This is it. This is it. Don't, don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Oh, we're good. Oh, there it is. Since I'm here, I might as well grab more nickel since it's so hard to come by, and then follow the light sick path, which again would lead me past 300 meters. That does it. I have the clippings for the tier 2 depth mod, so I'm going home, past all of the savage beasts in the ocean, and arrived home quite a beat. I had forgotten that there are these new seeds that I got from the Omega Lab grow beds, and they were in the trunk this whole time, so I planted them first off, and added a new red feather fish to the tank that I got on this outing, and made the synthetic fibers we have been wanting so badly. And after a bit more component crafting on day 36, got the depth mod 2 made. The level 3 is going to need crystals called Kyanite, and I have no idea where to get that, so we'll deal with that later. For now, we have a new max depth of 650 meters in the truck, so that'll be solid to progress with helping Alan. 
And since we're on the topic of the truck, I could make the new module for it that we risked so much to learn. So after a while of getting everything together for it, got it crafted and immediately hooked up to the trailers. But it seems this piece is for the butt end. I can't really figure out what to do with it since, well, I have nothing to dock into it. Up next is the horsepower mod that we also recently learned. The truck could use a boost, so with some more preparations completed, got it made and shoved into the mod box. And I think it's faster, but I'm not really sure, ain't gonna lie. That was a very good day, lots of progress made, so as the sun began to set, I decided to get some well-deserved shut-eye. We all deserve some really good beauty sleep, and that right there hit the spot. Relaxed, I decided that Day 37 would be good to catch up on some new PDAs that we found. It ain't much, but in short, I think Emmanuel is suspicious of Fred. Since Fred's been doing a lot of favors for friends with the cargo truck, Fred tried to dodge the accusation by saying the trips were work-related, bringing something underwater for someone named Lil, the person who initially contacted us in the first PDA that Sam had passed away, but Emmanuel says Lil is working on land, which makes Fred's lie fall apart. He ain't in trouble, but must cease the favors for friends. I wonder if Fred and Sam are working together to stop this whole operation, since it's becoming very clear that Sam is trying to stop the use of the bacteria, and Fred was the first to find it, and they are friends, so maybe they're working together. I got some big water bottles from the filter and set out to the nearby deep chasm where we found Fred's PDA about a monster attacking him. Maybe he was bringing stuff down there. After sneaking past the squids, I reached Diamond Heaven, absolutely thrilled, I got so much, and not just that, finished scanning a storage module for the sea truck, which was the first module that I thought that I would be getting for the vehicle in the first place, so this is perfect. All day was spent down here scouring the place for anything Fred might have left behind, but no dice. And since I'm out and about, day 38 seemed like a good a day as any to get to the next artifact location. And based on the coordinates, I assumed it would be down the man-made shaft that we had found, but the sea truck is having issues fitting into the cracks like before. Maybe due to the attachments, I don't know. So I did some swimming and got to one, which is when Alan said his connection to the network is growing stronger. But, but that wasn't even the one that was marked. I didn't even try and find this one. What? Well, if it helps him out, then that's all that matters. What's cool is that upon scanning this device, I learned a new blueprint for a quantum locker. Sounds really high tech, especially since it's scanned from an artifact. Later in the day, my travels led me to a new wreck, that of the Mercury 2. Inside, I completed the scans for the laser cutter, which is exactly what I needed to uncover more of the two wrecks that we found so far. But what's this? A tree of sorts right outside. And upon further inspection, this is like a new sunken biome and it goes incredibly deep. So much space is the perfect environment for large creatures. What in the heck is that? For a moment I thought that was a base, but now I think this is just a massive jellyfish. Oh, that's one of the big boys, okay. <gasps> oh, that's two of the big boys. It is, in fact, a jellyfish of sorts, as further up was a juvenile. Turns out they're called vent gardens for some reason. Maybe they feed off of the nearby geysers and vents. That kind of would be very self-explanatory. It was first under the darkness of night that I found the half-open gate to the man-made shaft. But even here, the truck won't fit no matter how hard I tried. So I hopped out and had a peek without the safety of my vehicle. It's quite the drop, so I tried to make it snappy. This place definitely is a mine based on the machinery, but what I did manage to scan down here was plans for a thermal plant. But time to skedaddle, I'm about to suffocate. It was only thanks to this oxygen plant here that I lived, and I really need an ultra high capacity tank. The day had passed as I made another attempt to see what's all the way down there. Very cautious of my oxygen since I used the one oxygen plant already. Glad I did come back though since I got my first out of four scans for the prawn suit, basically a mech. The PDAs down here will surely help me figure out what they were precisely doing down here, but it's evident that this place is abandoned. But that's about as far as my oxygen will take me. So back into the truck I go, and detach the front end hoping it would fit through this way, but I kinda got stuck in a glitch. The lights turn on just fine, but I can't leave the truck and everything is in slow-mo. So I had to save and log back in, which did solve the issue. Hope that helps some of you if you encounter that problem. 
This place is labeled as Kappa Mining Site, so my hunch was correct, but I didn't give up on getting the whole truck into the shaft like we did the first time. So luckily I did find the cracks where we got in the first time and actually managed to bring the whole truck inside. Perfect. So now I have as much oxygen as I want to explore as long as my power doesn't run out. This is fantastic since I quickly got two more suit scans as well as one for the drill arm which should let me harvest those big nodes that we've been seeing. Also, a new fish, a three-eyed fish called a triops, you shall be added to my collection. With the PDA of this sector looted, it was time to move on, reaching a split path where first I decided to check out the left tunnel where I completed the scans for the drill arm. The tunnel opened up to a large cave, and in the middle of which was an alien statue likely resembling what the architects look like. This prompted Alan to say he's located a body component, which is fantastic, that is a step in the right direction for once. As I was busy getting spiky alien eggs and about to continue on, Alan essentially is talking in a very polite way, but very confused, about how inferior our body structure is. Like the ball socket joints are quite primitive, but approves of the opposable thumbs, so we got that going for us. Although he does mention that being able to be reborn is of the highest importance, and all of this was very much to the frustration of Robin. The next path also had a large cave at the end, likely the most recent mining section. Here's where I completed the prawn suit scan, so it's time to make us a mech, my lovelies. By now day 40 came around, and it's time to swivel out of this mine, up the shaft, out the crack, and back into the open sea. Back at base, the truck got docked to power up and repair while I made the laser cutter that we recently fully learned. The quantum locker sounds impressive, basically a storage unit that shares its loot to every other quantum locker, this could help quite a bit in transport, but for now I was focused on making the prawn suit, so I hunted some lead and upon my return was kind of glitched out of my building, access denied apparently. Even relogging didn't fix it, so I hopped in through the moon pool to continue my work, where after a bit of crafting, made the prawn suit. This bad boy is gonna get us so many resources. So to get her up and running, got it docked into the moon pool, painted it my colors, and named it Jarvis. Not the most creative name, but I don't know, the voice kinda reminded me of Jarvis, and I like the name a lot. Context, one of my favorite Pokemon is Metagross, and I always name it Jarvis. The very next day, the drill arm was crafted and attached to Jarvis, and also let's just whip up the storage module for him. He's carrying a drill arm, so adding this just kind of makes sense. While we're at it, just crafted a few more items and presto, the depth module one for Jarvis is made. This buffs the depth resistance of this bad boy to 700 meters. Very impressive. We are on fire with progressing today, so after a bit more gathering was done, got to make the truck storage module. Click that sucker on to the conga line, and wow, this is so much more storage space. Combined with Jarvis, we can make quite some hauls now. The antenna plants got reseeded to make some more, and now it is time to catch some Zs. What a productive day. Let's keep the momentum up on day 42 with this glass dome roof on the bedroom. Makes this feel so much more spacious, plus let's add a desk since the old one got removed to make room for the command room. Some more work was done to finish off what I wanted to do a while back, which was to make more reactor rods. That's our second one slotted into the system. Never gonna run out of power again. This vending machine in the crafting room just kind of fits, so that's one more thing placed today. And it's nighttime already, and I can tell by just looking up from my bed. It's incredibly beautiful. With all that production done and dusted, it is time to get the alien body cache on day 43. Seems like we'll find it in the green lily biome, down some treacherous drop-offs, and well, quite a lot of them. It goes quite deep, and it's pretty tight. What I found though was an artifact by mere coincidence, at least it helps Alan gain connection to the network, somehow through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever the means may be. The artifact that I am hunting is in the area, but quite a ways down still. So once I scanned this artifact and unlocked the Recyclotron, it was time to head further below than ever before, landing me in range of information to make Alan's new body. This place had tons of Uranonite, so I made sure to stock up since it's quite rare, and once I got to the bottom, it became clear that this is a new ecosystem, all red and oddly relaxed, so I added all the info of the area to the database, and it has these flower spores that can be used to make benzene, as well as cotton anemone needed in a few crafting recipes. I got a few to plant back home. Sadly, there are these tentacles here that, sure, they do startle me every single time, but I think I'll live. But I'm still not deep enough, so 
I was scanning the area and found new bizarre eggs. I have quite a few by now and once I get to hatch them, it'll be like playing bingo. But hello, day 44 had me finding our first piece of magnetite. So glad I came across this stuff, it felt super rare. Might want to make a base here for further extraction in the future. I found a way down that led me to an architect gateway, through which I hopped and what greeted me was a serene garden. Only thing ruining the vibe is this lifeless corpse, which was scanned to learn one of the three architect components for the body. This place, Alan says, was a place to reflect as for their kind's life became uncertain due to the Carabacterium. The body part we learned to make was the skeleton, honestly shouldn't be too hard to make, but since I'm here I'm going to grab as much magnetite as I can, which still wasn't all that much, so I also grabbed any of the other new materials I'm here since, well, we have the storage space, which was filled to the brim. Since I'm quite fond of the vibe here, I made sure to leave a beacon here labeled Red Base. I'll be back to claim this as my property. With some new fancy fishes in my pocket, I went down home on day 45. The trip was long, but we did arrive safely, and unloading the truck took its sweet time. First off, I planted the cotton anemones to free up some space, and then I added more storage units. Eventually, I did get around to hauling everything from the truck to the new storage boxes, so it is time now for a base upgrade in the form of scanner room upgrades, like this one for the range, as well as that for the speed. Obviously, I had to work in between to get it made, but I also found the time to make the hood chip, as well as a camera drone. The chip slots into your gear to help you see what the room scans in the area, and the drone, I, well, assume it's precisely what it is labeled to be as. The next day, I fiddled with making a second scanner size upgrade, and I think it makes the area larger? Uh, does it? I'm not sure. The Subnautica pros probably know. As I flimsily crafted benzene, I began to notice how the visual hood overlay works with the scanner. Should be really helpful. Later on, I mixed up a glass of hydrochloric acid and then polyaniline. This is needed for the body for Alan. I was out for lithium to get the other pieces made, so I was getting some of that and just barely survived an attack from the cryptozoopuses. Man, they are common, but always scary. Once I had my fill, it was time to return, and does the map feel smaller to anyone else compared to the first game, or is it just me? I don't know, it's... I, f I remember the other one being much larger, but... Wow, yeah, Galena stones for lead is evidently a non-issue to find with this chip. I feel like I've been blind this whole time. Now with all the supplies made, I wanted to make the architect skeleton, but can't craft it here. 47 was the day where I would head out to a new artifact to keep the ball rolling. This one brought me to the volcano right under this big boy. I want to call them shrimps, but their size doesn't do the name justice. I hugged the floor and made it in, where Alan described another location, which sounds to me like it is on land. Alan continues his curiosity in humans, confused how we cope with losing memories, especially since when humans die, some information is lost to the next generation. Uh, Robin essentially says it kinda is what it is, we just kinda deal with it. Just gotta make your own memories. The structure had two ion cubes that I yoinked, along with diamonds and rubies that covered the volcano's insides. So now it is time to leave, with the big boy hunting overhead. Hugging the floor seemed to do the trick again, since it wasn't alerted to my location, making it home safely. For the remainder of the day, I was just getting some more lead. The moon was shining brightly, welcoming in day 48, and I'm pretty close to the first artifact where I left the beacon, so I swam down there to scan it, hoping for a new blueprint, but nothing. Well, that was a colossal waste of time. So I went home to finish up some business, just general stuff around the base, and I just find it funny how the chip dispenser is infinite, conjuring them out of nothingness. This could solve world hunger. Now for a few PDAs. About the mining site where we learned the prawn suit, Parvin worked there, one of the people Sam knew. Parvin speaks with Fred, who brought some cargo down here for Lillian, some measuring equipment it was. Parvin doesn't really know why it is at here, but doesn't really care too much, to be honest. See, Fred sounds super excited that the scientists might find something important down here, likely the architects, since we did find that one statue down there. But Parvin isn't the biggest fan of all the scientists leading the operations, as he feels like the workers here aren't cared about. Later, I just added more decor to the base, placed some power transmitters, and added floodlights to the front yard to improve the view at night. I decided that day 49 would be spent doing an extensive resource run with Jarvis hooked up to the back end of F-250 and stocked up on food and water for the trip. 
As I was looking for some resource nodes to harvest with drill arm, I found this clearing that seems to be a new area. So I hopped on land, and after a short stroll, spotted a base through the fog. There was this snowman too, and he got annihilated. As the fog cleared, I approached the abandoned building. I saw a strange symbol that I'm not sure what it correlates to. Here I was able to scan the large room, which I'm excited to make, but let's see what's inside, shall we? Ellen says the researchers here were trying to find him, so this is an architect research base, and this PDA confirms this to be Station Zero. Also, what in the heck is going on? Motivational posters in this day and age are considered contraband. What bleak future is this? Holy moly. A picture of Sam's cat Potato is here, and a PDA of Sam, as well as one from Lillian, so it seems like they both worked here together. Alan says that Lillian wanted to know too much about the Architects and could not let her since she worked for Altera. She might have discovered the gateway to the Architects' home world and didn't want to risk them figuring that out. There was an indoor garden, so I scanned the indoor grow beds, picked the lantern fruits to grow myself later on, and of the bedrooms I went through, there was one for Sam, so we'll check that first. Not too much in here to be honest, so time to go through Lillian's room, but not much in here either. I was going to check out the other structures at night, but danger weather approached. So, time to hunker down and get cozy, because it's going to be a frigid long night. So, day 50, and I am snowed in, so let's have a read on these new PDAs. Lillian, a xenobiologist who reports to Emmanuel, is working on maintenance and architect intelligence. Samantha is in robotics, also reports to Emmanuel, and is assigned to maintenance as well. Lillian wants to awaken architect tech, but can't get into the sanctuaries, and thinks that she'll need organic components to make this all happen. Seems like exactly what we are doing right now. Also, she has kids. A call with them confirms her project was cancelled and was placed here in Station Zero with not much work to do, just cataloging stuff. She did follow a distress signal, but it vanished as she got closer, so failed to track it down completely. Seems to be the same SOS beacon that we followed. Sam got management upset, likely for speaking against working on the Carabacteria is what I'm assuming, and got stationed here too. I feel like the people that Altera gets upset with, they just punish by sending them here to do boring stuff. A log between Sam, Lil, and her kids gives us a bit of info into that Sam wants to take care, air quotes, of the bacteria, and Lil is on her side. A brief mention in the Station Zero PDA mentioned life flourished in the area, which is a hub for architect tech, due to the release of Enzyme 42 into the larger ecosystem. The PDA named No Turning Back from Sam shows clearly that Sam plans to neutralize the Kara, and doing so will likely be a death sentence. And yes, she did fight with Danielle about this, and they haven't spoken since. Someone named Zeta would handle it, but apparently didn't, and Lil begged to just drop all of it. Sam's made up her mind, doesn't care about the good standing with Altera, and synthesized an antibacterial agent some of which was stashed in Pengling Research Caves southeast of the Leviathan, so now we have to find out where that thing is. Out and about now, as the storm had cleared, I went through a long path leading me to a cave. Inside was a massive alien structure. The force field of said structure opened up allowing me entry. Alan says this place was for rapid travel, but without an architect vessel, it's not of much use. But this here in the back definitely looks like a gateway. Maybe this is where one could travel to their homeworld, which Alan wanted to avoid. I left at night since there was nothing else for us there, and after a freezing trek through the snow, reached the safety of my truck, where Alan asks us if this is where Sam worked her final days, which is a yes most likely, and Robin says she must have been miserably here with nothing to do, and Alan says that Altera motivated him to change his behavior since he didn't trust their intentions, hence why when Lil was tracking the distress signal, it disappeared as Alan detected that she was from Altera. Now with Outpost Zero cleared, it's time to do what I actually wanted to do, which is the resource trip. Got some quartz with Jarvis, as well as quite a few nodes of copper, some of titanium, and so on, filling up the entire truck as well as Jarvis's inventory completely, leaving just enough time to dock the truck back home. This let me make two plasteel ingots the next day that we needed for a large room that we just learned, which was placed near the vertical connector to the dock since this room will be the main storage hub, so it's the closest I could get it to where the truck's going to be. 
This space got two indoor grow beds, each growing some lantern fruit that I got from Station Zero, and up next were two bulkhead doors just scattered throughout the base since my structural integrity had been getting quite low. The rest of the time was spent placing brand new lockers along the wall hoping I can start organizing my supplies this way. And on day 53 I decided since the material will be here, it just makes sense to add a fabricator, plus some decorations here and there like the posters. Moving my supplies from the moon pool to the large room took its sweet time, and I did free up some space by putting dupe eggs that I had into the bioreactor. My face is literally running on omelettes, but back to the task at hand. The modification station was brought on over here since, well, all the crafting is going to happen here, so it just kind of makes sense to put it here as well. The first room that we made will as of now just be the lounge with infinite coffee and chips. Since I got so much copper from the nodes, I began to refine them into copper wire, of which I'm going to need even more than all of these for something that I want to build yet in this adventure. 54 flew by super fast since after adding some windows to the large room to observe the shallows from within, it was time for a second resource run. Got some more quartz, had tons of titanium which is a relief since I still got tons of stuff I want to build. I did at the end of the day enter an ecological dead zone and my chances of survival drastically plummeted so no, no thank you, I will see myself out, thank you very much. With quite a bit of supplies in tow, I made a long journey in the morning of day 55. I wanted to bring this stuff to the red base location that I had marked, but on the way I got quite close to the pilot's last location, the one in the prawn suit on Delta Island that we saw so long ago. I got the marker, but there's nothing here. Might have gone even deeper and I need to find where that person is currently. This area was filled with new scans, so in total got an exosuit thermal reactor module completed and also completed the ultra high capacity tank plans flip and finally, so relieved. Also not completed, but I did get one scan for a sea truck afterburner upgrade. After encountering a squid that chased me off from the area, I got to another site with scans, completing an aquarium module for the truck. It was first at around midnight when I reached the red base location, where for now I placed a multi-purpose room with a hatch that I forgot stuff to actually power this thing. Since the area had a gold node, might as well get that collected since I've been running a bit low, and on my way home got more supplies as I stumbled upon an artifact location. It's the one I already got in the volcano, so not sure why the marker is still actively pinging green, but nothing happened here no matter what I tried, so I skedaddled on out, got nibbled on by Mr. Big Boy here, that scare right there made me repair the truck in a flash, and hello, that's a ton of titanium nodes that I'm going to need, so they all got collected and brought back home at day's end. So might as well take the time the next morning to make the ultra high capacity tank that I've been dying to get, and about that aquarium module for the truck, should be quite easy to prepare, so after some unloading from the truck, as well as some crafting, got the new module built. I do want the docking module at the back, so I placed the aquarium module in front of it. This bad boy is getting incredibly long, and I'm pretty sure that there are still more modules to unlock yet. Now would you look at that, it's already working, we got some fishes in the aquarium. I think it just gets them when the fish just randomly swim against it, so I don't know, we have a portable sushi bar, I guess. Two plasteel ingots were fabricated for the red base, the grow beds got more seeds added to them to fill them up completely, the bioreactor was deconstructed so I can make it again at the new base for power since I doubt solar will work all the way down there, and some other details were prepared like glass for some windows. We left the crow's nest, swam across the seas to get to the red site, and on the way got all scans for a truck sleeper module and more spiral clippings, but while I was getting this stuff, a big boy came to have me as a snack. Oh sh- ah! Oh sh- ah! So I panicked, I darted to what I thought was safety. Into the hole the caterpillar goes. Holy sh- ah! That was close. In this hole I got a blueprint for a booster tank. Thanks for pointing me in the right direction, I guess. But just cause the day passed, that doesn't mean that the threat has. The beast was using all of its might to try and reach me, one-shotting a Cryptozookus in its frenzy. That seemed to have calmed its bloodlust as it swam off, so I carefully made my way on out. But as it roared, I realized it was just waiting for me to come to it. Stop! Needless to say, I floored it to get on out of there, and this escape landed me at the first wreck that we had found, and I remember there was an alien structure down there, so approaching it, it prompted Alan to be able to trace the imprint of his people, whose presence has become faint. 
Scanning the Architect Fossil Extractor got me the blueprint for an ion battery, and the structure had a single ion cube, which I took for safekeeping. Now back to setting up Red Base. Took a few detours here and there, but better late than ever. One thing I learned though was that I think the squids electrocute you, which solves your vehicle, but that's uh, not too bad. The base got set up, first up with the bioreactor inside, and thanks to that there are so many cotton anemones here, fueling it will be super easy. Two reinforcements were added, since I also added some windows so it balances out. This place is magnificent, the only drawback is the flippant seahorses that keep putting me into a trance against my will. I arrived back at the crow nest next morning, worked on the large room here for a bit, and directed my focus at the recently learned sleeper module for the truck. So you know the drill, craft a few components, and there she be, flopped into the water and slapped onto our conga line of modules. Man, Jarvis is peeking out of the tube. We might be pushing the limits here since the truck is getting harder and harder to manage. I took a screenshot of the crow nest and uploaded it to the sleeper module screen so I have something nice to look at as I nap in this drop down bed. Even got some tunes on my ride now with this jukebox. The next installment for Red Base would be a sea truck dock since I want a power up station out there. It would save me time from coming back home all the time. So after just a tiny bit of preparations, had all of the things needed to make one over there. Day 60 showed up and I was taking some lantern fruit along for a red base and lots and lots of copper wire that we made from our resource run. So, a little bit of hocus pocus and we are back at red base, safe and sound, where some tube extensions were added on the side which allowed for the placement of the sea truck dock. The inside of the base needed some improvements so a red bed was placed in a corner, quite fittingly, and some grow beds for the lantern fruit so I have easy fruit and more biomaterial for power. Lastly, all the copper wire was turned into as many name plates as I could to line the walls, which took quite some time. At least I can hit the hay here comfortably in the new bed. Before I could hit the record button on day 61, Alan had gotten a new artifact location. Just a little heads up for you there. I hadn't given up on finding the location of the prawn suit pilot, but I just kept getting distracted, man. Got one of two grappling arm scanned for Jarvis, and then came across the bow end of the Mercury 2. Some of the parts are even lifted off the ground by the roots of the lily pads, which is astounding to see. Inside, these roots provided some pretty illumination, and there was some decent loot like reactor rods, some batteries, and one piece of synthetic fiber. Save some spiral clippings there. And yes, the laser cutter came in handy to open more boxes and look around. Got my hands on some potato seeds for our farms, and of course more PDAs to analyze. A highlight of this dive was that I learned the reinforced dive suit plans. Should be quite sturdy, this thing. An artifact was nearby, so I dodged around so many squids and faded from green water to blue. And down this drop off I go, deep, deep down, arriving at a ginormous vent garden, so maybe some big boy shrimps are nearby. The artifact seems to be under the vent garden, and I get notified that temperatures further down are quite high. Big Papa Garden was scanned, and we became best buddies since I feel safe around him. Now to get to our goal. I had to leave the truck behind since it just won't fit. Carefully I peeked into the cavern below, and the coast is clear and filled with high value resources. Alan progressed with his connection to the network thingamastuff, so that's something. Not a body part recipe, but something, I guess. A bright idea entered my cranium on day 62, which had me gathering titanium under... Hmm, the vent garden needs a name, since we're friends now. It does look like a jellyfish to me, so we'll go with Jeremiah. Jeremiah the jellyfish. Yeah, we got titanium under Jeremiah and diamonds from the cracks below. And since I got synthetic fibers in that last wreck, I could manage to make the reinforced dive suit right here in the truck. This will up my defenses and thermal resistance. Having finished up here, I wanted to go and find the pilot again, but the overgrown crustacean worms were blocking my path. So I did the old reliable maneuver of hugging the floor, maybe a little bit too much because I ended up going down a hole with lava at the bottom. And yes, I have to constantly repair the truck as I keep getting caught on anything and everything because it is so long. At the bottom, there was an abandoned work site with PDAs of, you guessed it, spoiler warning here, skipped like, I don't know, five seconds ahead, Marguerite of the first game, the pilot. We'll read up on that once we're safe though. I had to leave eventually, so I snuck out of the hidey hole, but just couldn't avoid getting munched by big ol' ugly here. But we will live, we can definitely tank one hit at a time. At the last known location, I searched deeper and deeper until I decided it has to be at this light stick path. Just 
It, it has to be. Where else is it going to be? There's a squid in this hole, but you know what? Fuck you, Squidward. What are you going to do? Solo me? I didn't think so. And guess what? My hunch was correct. Didn't I tell you to stay away? I oh, knew you what? were down here. I don't even know who you are. Marguerite Maida is the name. You're on my turf. Great. Can I come in and warm up? What part of go away do you not understand, Altera? I'm not with Altera. Well, well, well. Somebody thought they were sneaky. It only took me like 60 days to find you, but here we are. One thing immediately stood out to scan, which was the large room glass ceiling. As for an entrance to the base, well, I couldn't find one. So, might as well get into the moon pool on day 63, and man, that prawn suit just looks, looks fantastic. But it is time to introduce ourselves. <laughs> Holy! I have water in my mouth, you stupid mutt! Whew. I told you to stay off my land. That you did. You I'm so sorry. That thing? Next time I'll let him tear you to ribbons, Altera. I'm not with Altera. I'm Robin Ayu. I'm looking for information about my sister Sam. I think you might have crossed paths. Bull crap. <laughs> I suggest you take the time you need to come to your senses and then get off my sea base. If you're not Altera, why don't you disable that damn tracking satellite tower instead of barging into my sea base? Maybe once Altera's off my back, I'll remember something about your sister. Ah, a favor for a favor. Some junk on that table that might help. I couldn't get it to work. Okay, um, sure, you got it. This is a really cool crib, by the way. Uh, proof of the decor, that counts for something. I'll just help myself to your stuff then. What do you got here? What else we got? Snow Stalker, hey, puppy. Snow Fox Fragment. That does look like the hover bike, okay. I am down for that. Sea Truck Perimeter Defense Upgrade. Acquired. Lord knows I've been needing that. Test Override Module Fragment. Okay, that's what I needed for the satellite thing of a bobber. Okay, uh, I suppose that's it. Okay, no, that's, that's fine. I got it. I'm out. The defense upgrade got slapped onto the truck, and a quick glance at what we need to make the override module shows that we need some weird thingamabobber called a parallel unit or something, something. Just another thing we need to still figure out. But there's so much more to unpack here, like plans for the spy penguin that Sam was working on, as well as a water filtration suit. Next to Meta's base is this massive cave, which I had a peek into, and there are tons of crystals here. This has to be where you can get kyanite, Plus, a welcome scan was this torpedo arm here. I need the kyanite for a lot of vehicle upgrades, so I began to scan around, hoping for the best as tension filled the waters. Proceed with caution. A Leviathan class creature is near. Oh, thanks for the heads up. I uh, didn't think a Leviathan class could fit in here, but they have been proven wrong. That would explain the spooky noises. Oh! I saw something in the back. Fluid intake is the least of my problems. I saw something over there. All right, so uh, I definitely saw something over there. Let me just scan this thing. There's a little arm here that I want to grab, if you don't mind. Prawn suit propulsion arm fragment. One out of two. Okay. Oh, hold the phone. I know I saw something back there, but that has to be a piece of kyanite right there. All the other ones are purple, and from the recipes and from knowledge, this is blue. Okay, 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 oh, that thing is enormous, okay, hmm, Leviathan has been uh, located, mm -hmm. not like he's uh, trying to hide too much, well that should do for now, I thought to myself, I don't want to get closer to that Leviathan thing, and sitting right there are three safe to get shards of kyanite, well, I could have saved myself a pair of pants knowing this was here. But jokes aside, it is time to head on home after so many new unlocks, resources, and new objectives. The travel home was long, but the defense unit came in handy, shooing off all of the carnivores with these electrical pulses. We docked the truck at about noon, and I do want myself the brand new depth modules for the truck and the prawn suit. But first, a grow bed for all of my precious new little potatoes. Then with some plasteel prepared, made both of the upgrades. Best that I can make. 
On day 65, they got slotted in, the truck now reaching 1,000 meters, and the prawn suit 100 meters more than that, so they should be set for a good while. Also, I was fed up with how long the truck is, so I detached the aquarium and sleeper modules from it. Acids got conjured up, and with this here silver, turned into a wiring kit, got to make the prawn suit thermal reactor upgrade so I can charge near thermal vents. And then with this chip, got a propulsion arm made. All that onto Jarvis is making him look real nice. The cotton anemones were coming in handy since I needed this stuff for more acids to end up making the charge fins. As I swim, my tool in hand charges wirelessly. Up next was the spy penguin and its remote, which got us information that these animals lay eggs in small caves near thermal lilies, so I think that that is a clue to find the antibacterial stuff that Sam hid away. He do look a little bit funky, but I do love him, and I'm sure we'll put him to good use. The next day was when I went to the next artifact location, and wow do I feel lighter now with less modules. I saw this long cable of architect origin, and upon inspection, it seems to be going in the direction of the artifact. And after swimming through a horde of big plump jellyfishes, saw a bridge that was disconnected. I parked in this nook here, and then made landfall, having to run around in the cold, looting some basic items here and there, and having to warm up at these vents. And the closer that I got to the bridge, Alan notified me that we got across the bridge. There is something important on the other side for Altera, but even more important for him. So we gotta fix this hunk of junk. By the looks of things, I'm going to need hydraulic fluid. So I scanned a busted bottle right there and learned how to make it. Pretty easy to make since we have everything back home. With all this, I almost died of hyperthermia, so I hopped back into the safety of the warm water. And I really need that cold suit as soon as possible. Turns out the jellies here are called I jellies, I think I see why, but time to head on home, where thanks to our gel sack garden, got to make two hydraulic fluid. I think I just need one, but made a spare just in case. On day 67, before I'd uncover what the new area is, I wanted to update myself on more information in case it's important to what we find over there. Marguerite Maida, the PDAs explain how she did not die in her encounter with a reaper 500 meters deep. She managed to stab one of its eyes with the metal piece, and the Reaper brought them even deeper in its pain. She had about four minutes of air left, was fighting it since she needed something in his ribcage, and did manage to slay it, which is mind-boggling. Having survived the attack, she surfaced in the middle of the ocean, and definitely wouldn't be reaching land. Thankfully, a while later, the corpse of the Reaper surfaced, onto which she went onto like a meaty raft. She had three liters of water and kept warm by burning the fat of the creature, which took like a week to do with the spark of a repair tool, which is quite creative. This let her smoke the meat and that way have food. Her prawn suit is definitely old due to barnacle buildup and one of the arms has the mandible of something called a chelicorate or something. Logs of the Mercury 2, the crash wreck pieces, Heavily summarizing here, but one log mentioned someone named Jasmine and Stefanos. The crew on the ship wanted to do an emergency takeoff to leave the planet, and as they took off and were in the air, got blasted with a green laser, splitting the ship into pieces, so, you know, the crew is just flying out of the ship down into the open ocean in a very chaotic event, when Stefanos saves Jasmine by leading her to the reactor room with the strongest bulkhead door. However, both are heavily wounded. The captain was someone by the name of Diana, who from what I gather saved the remaining crew by getting the reactor to not explode in a nuclear explosion. Elliot was a crew member with a team of six to look for structures on the planet, and also detected the same distress signal Lil and we did, but lost half of his crew trying to get to it due to that the wildlife was well tearing them apart limb from limb, prompting him to never ever want to set foot into the ocean again. I understand, my friend. He notes the animals here look very sick with postules, that has to be the Kara bacteria, and even though he wants to leave, Diana, the captain, made them stay to complete their mission for a big payout. All that makes me feel like there is still much for me to uncover in those wrecks. Now I made my way back to the bridge, and wanted to progress with Jarvis, but couldn't jump him up the ledge, nor fit him under the bridge, and I feel like I'm going to need a grappling arm to take him along. So for now, I went out on my own, and added the hydraulic fluid which got the system working, allowing it to be connected from both ends, granting us passage under a moonlit sky, when Alan says to check northeast, but to be careful as he recalls creatures under the ice. The day had passed and I was exploring the area in the dark, and kept hearing some odd noises. 
Ellen's comment had me spooked, so I was on high alert. Hello? I unlocked a new device called a thumper and just barely made it back into a cave to warm up. This is going to be tough without a cold suit. At least the sun is rising, so I can see better. Time to go and find whatever it is that Alan needs. <gasps> Holy ah! Holy ah! No! What is that? Oh! oh! What would I do now? I gotta get to that cave for warmth. I got this low stick. Does this... Does this heat up? Hypothermia nope. I gotta make a break for it. I need warmth or I'm gonna die. Please, 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 please. Yes. Yes. Oh. I cautiously investigated the cave and found these peppers. They add food, water, and most importantly, heat to you. Just what the doctor ordered. This will make things so much easier. I'm going to need a lot though, since this place is very confusing. No. It's in the walls! I see a ladder. I'm gonna make a break for it. Here goes nothing! Well, oh, that wasn't so bad. Oh. Yo! Dude! That was enormous! Here goes nothing! Through the passage I go! I don't know if this is the right way, but... It is a way. I did come across this tracker thing that beeps next to a small hole in the wall, and I think that I'll have to bring a robo penguin back here to see what's inside. But I have more important things to worry about right now. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, that's one of those that made I had. <gasps> oh. No. Oh, oh. Go, 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 go. Hi. Easy does it, Muma! Almost forgot to eat my peppers. Alright, I gotta get to the artifact because I'm not. Up! Oh! Mama kick it up! Ah! Oh! Well, that kind of froze me for a sec. Alright. You know what? Pepper and run. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I don't know where I'm going, but I am terrified. Was I here before? This place is incredibly confusing. Eyes on the prize. Eyes on the prize. And, uh... Ooh, hello. That's a busted alien structure if I've ever seen one. There's another gateway. Just like the one at Station Zero. Oh! I don't have an ion cube. I don't know what you want from me. Shut up. Alright. Gotta remember to bring an ion cube over here. There's nothing else I can do in here. Where the heck am I supposed to go? Oh no. Oh! Oh, it launched me! It launched me off the cliff! Oh, it's coming! No, oh, it's coming! Architect data patterns are so strong here. There is almost certainly vital information pertaining to my body construction nearby. Well, it flip it better! Do you know what I'm going through here, my man? All because you wouldn't go into a flipping iPad. More peppers, don't mind if I do. Okay, there's a cave down there. <laughs> I'm gonna go in this cave. My, my gut tells me to go into the cave. This looks like one of those things that it actually burrowed, and this has all a cop. Wait, if this has copper ore like this, that means my flipping Jarvis should be able to make it over here. Or else how am I supposed to make use of this, uh, these veins here? Yeah, Jarvis should somehow be able to fit over here. Okay, this place is filled with ore that I want to make use of, but there's not enough time for that right now. Alright, I'm gonna go. Time to go. Time to go. Time to do the going. I feel like I'm getting way farther away from it. As time goes on, I'm so confused. This place is a maze. Ow! Ow! Nope! Stop it! Stop it! Oh! I'm going! I'm going! 
The fog is setting in. Danger of sweater approaching. Oh, seek shelter. Perfect. Oh, great. There's a cave when you need one. I don't think I've been here before. I need to find some shelter ASAP. New technology acquired. Snow Fox Ice Worm Attack Reduction Module. Okay. Here's a cave. Alright, I got shelter for the horrendous weather that is approaching, so we should be fine for now. It's just no matter what I do, I feel like I'm not getting any closer. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think I'm gonna hunker down here for the night. Day 69, and I was still looking for this flippin' artifact. Ooh. Down the hatch! Holy! Man, I am so lost. The more I think that I'm progressing, the worse things get. Basically, I went back to where I started, and I am so close to the artifact right here. Like, I'm right on top of it, but I can't find a way in. So I figured the entrance has to be somewhere very far away and connected to this spot underground somehow. Back in the maze area again, there were these prowlers, like the one in Maida's base, that kind of lock on to you, so I went to go hide in a cave. Here was an architect room with drillable ion cubes. I just don't have anything on me right now to harvest them, sadly. Foolishly, I thought that this was what Alan was talking about that Altera wanted and is even more important to him. So I went on home, defeated that I couldn't find the actual artifact location near where I parked the truck. So, might as well pack up Jarvis and head on home. However, you have to be kidding me. You have to be joking. Hold on. There are light sticks and everything. Bro. Another site found. Yeah. But I cannot yet tell whether the others survived. Still, it holds valuable information. Okay. I hope you will find more. Yeah. No, like me too. Like I'm down. more of my people's technology. Uh huh. But the images I am receiving are fragmented, repeating. I am struggling to locate them precisely. Fragmented images? Why would that happen? I can only theorize that the locations are deep and shielded by a refractive material. Perhaps amongst large crystal formations. Crystal formations, got it. So first off, you sent me on a goose chase just for me to waste two days trying to find your precious generators that ain't helping you jack squat. Oh, I'm just gonna grab your ion cube here. I, there has to be something in it for me too. And now you're saying crystal structures, my guy. The only place I've seen crystal structures thus far has been where that ginormous worm was near Maida's base, where the kyanite was. So I guess that's where we gotta go. Exhausted, I got into the sea truck after two days of being utterly confused when Alan galled and seems to be disheartened that he doesn't know if he'll find out what happened to his people or if the network even still exists. Robin tries to cheer him up, trying to give him hope. The base was a sight for sore eyes for me at midnight, and immediately on day 70, got some peppers planted that I had in my pocket. Farm's coming along splendidly. Since I had just recently read more of the wrecks of the Mercury 2, I was curious as to what I could still find in them, and yeah, well, I had no other story point that I could progress on, so I went to the first piece that we came across to check it out, with a laser cutter in hand, of course. So, uh... Oh! Hey! Well, it's one out of three! Oh, don't tell me I have to go to all the wrecks! And find one of these. Oh, you have to be kidding me. I need to make that for Maida's tower issue. That's one out of three steps in the right direction. So I went to the wreck in the green zone to see if I could find another piece to scan there. Maybe it's one per wreck or something like that. So in here, I began cutting doors and did a scan on something that I've wanted this whole time. An alien containment unit to hatch eggs in. This has been worth it already. As I was cutting through more doors, I did hear a big boy roar, so I hope it's not attracted to my truck. But man, I just couldn't find any scans for the parallel unit. So, confused, I returned to the first wreck, which in my defense is the only place that I had seen one, so 
maybe all three of them are in there, but no dice. After a lengthy investigation, there is not a single more piece inside. So I waddled on back to the wreck in the green zone, cut down some doors inside, and spotted some vents, just like in the first game, which led me through a winding pathway to a new room, where a second scan of the device was located. One more to go, and it was no problem since after taking a break for some air, gotta do quite a bit of these in this large area, got to a new room that I had not seen before, looking like the control room of the ship, where the final scan was at. Perfect! Done it is! So all that's left is to go home and craft it to get to making the override module that Marguerite asked us to make, as well as to make an alien containment unit to hatch our many many eggs. I arrived in the afternoon and the process unit was super easy to make, which was a relief, and with this glass here, placed the alien containment chamber, to which I added a hatch later in the day to be able to enter it, and once inside, dumped all of our little egos. Just look at them, all colorful and bursting with intent to eat me once they get out. Alrighty then, day 72, the override module was finally crafted. Time to take down the tower. Let's hope this gets us Marguerite's trust. So now here at Delta Island and up the ladder, got it slotted in, and further down at the control panel, managed to deactivate this contraption, which is part of the tracking satellite from Altera that Marguerite had mentioned. Seems like a success, and Alan is impressed. Who's primitive now, hotshot? Marguerite calls to thank us, and we can find her at her greenhouse on an iceberg one kilometer to our east. Funny you assume that I'm good with directions, but we have no choice. I hopped into the truck and made my way on to the direction of the lily pads, zapping any threats along the way, which is very satisfying, ain't gonna lie. Past the lilies are some icebergs, so seems like we're in the general area, and I would keep looking on land, but this darn dangerous weather had me hopping back into the sea where a cryptozookus almost nipped me. Super close call right there, but I can't stand on this block of ice forever, which landed me into the water in a hurry to get to my truck where I did get munched. Thankfully, I'm still in one piece. My search continued and it felt like it would take forever. I could barely see around me, let alone find a greenhouse. In my desperation in the later hours of the day, spotted a beach and thinking that might be the spot, I full throttled to it and ended up getting beached. Uh oh. Needless to say, it took all night to try and push this hunk of junk off of the iceberg, even tried to detach the back end to, well, no luck at all. But it did let me back up so that Jarvis got close enough to land on the beach at midnight, which allowed me to make landfall with him on day 73 and push the truck back into the depths. <laughs> oh, brute forcing everything does the trick, doesn't it? F-250, assemble. <laughs> that works. We're good to go. And well, since I'm in Jarvis, might as well have a little stroll to investigate the island. On top of which was a crashed architect satellite. Sadly, not another body part cache, but okay, good sightseeing. But no sign of Marguerite, so I locked Jarvis back onto the back end and continued my search. When I got a pop up that eggs back home have started to hatch, which is very exciting, I have not the slightest clue of what we've got. The greenhouse hunt led me to a cove where I took shelter at night, but quickly found a deep hole that led to tunnels that went all through this iceberg, and learned that our laser cutter can be used to cut through ice sheets, granting us access to rooms with great resources. As for all of the remaining paths, they just lead out back into the ocean since, well, it's an ice block in the middle of it. It was first on day 74 where I reached an iceberg with light posts and large bones on top of it. Seeing all this equipment had me certain this was the right spot, and the local fauna is just the absolute best. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> That's so cute. This area had new plants, like these vase plants, of which I got some seeds from. Now if only these eerie noises would stop haunting me through the entire night. At least sunrise came quickly, and with the new light, reached the greenhouse. So it's time to get more info on Sam straight from Marguerite. She's glad the satellite hasn't passed by in a while, so we did a good job, I suppose. She had doubted Sam, thinking she was Alteran through and through. We got a new kind of fruit tossed our way when we get told that Sam surprised her in a way a little bit too much. To know more, we gotta read up this stuff in a PDA. The snow prowler pet here is named Preston and loves this kind of fruit and we get permission to use the greenhouse as a thank you. So I got to scanning all sorts of new pieces of furniture, along with new plants like melons, picked up a few PDAs here and there, and plucked some more purple fruits called Preston's Delight. All this unlocked me a fruit salad. Very nice. 
You can look all you want. There's more to Marguerite than any damn fangled gadget can see. <laughs> I had to try. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. Now for those PDAs. We can skip the one called Ratherby Hunting since it just talks about how she made the greenhouse and that Preston will kind of just eat anything. The PDA called Couple of Friends is what's more important here, as it has conversations between Sam and Marguerite. To summarize, Sam mentioned the antidote was stashed away in a cave, as we know her goal is to stop the Cara bacteria. Marguerite says she's got a full send this operation by sealing off an entrance to a cave with explosives, and I'm assuming that what's meant here is the room with the infected leviathan where they got the bacteria samples from. Marguerite mentioned that it's also important to hit the labs to basically destroy any samples, and with that any progress with mutating the bacteria, I suppose. And based on this info, I think it was Marguerite that destroyed Omega Lab where the mutation was going on. The PDA on her is, to be expected, listing all sorts of insane feats that she's accomplished, works as a freelance security personnel who is strong and hates corporations. Who would have thought? At 16 became a mercenary, did tours around space as part of the defense force, but had a dishonorable discharge. Apparently she found something out as head of intel and recon that she shouldn't have and ended up eliminating an entire security apparatus silently in three days. Note. Don't mess with her. But yeah, her last mission as security got her crashed onto this planet, which we learn more about in the first game. Quickly, some more Mercury 2 logs that I got. Captain Deanna mentioned people got sick here, yada yada yada, we know that. Emergency takeoff, we already know how poorly that went. But here's something new, they had to leave quarantined people behind, kinda promising to come back to get them, but we all know that that was never gonna happen, even if they get off this rock. Night was setting in, and since I'm close to Red Base, popped on over there to get the truck charged and repaired while I had to contemplate how to progress. I was kind of stuck, but remembered that Alan mentioned info to make his body is in an area with spires, I believe, and another one where there's tons of crystals. So that's our objective to find with no marker to follow. So after a bit of a stroll on day 75, managed to make my way back to the crow's nest, where all of our eggs have hatched. Just look at them go! Even have a Cryptozookus in here, and that sea monkey that I stole from its parents. So with one new egg added to the chamber, I picked up my penguin bot and set out to the spire area with the big ol' worms. In this area, though, I picked up the signal to Phi Robotics. I think it's the last base of operations for me to uncover, so I went straight into that direction, where I came across this partially opened gate. It was in this base that is now busted where Sam worked, and we got a scan right away for a snow fox hover pad. Inside the base I got some PDAs that are about Sam, a snow fox scan, so now that's two out of three, and spotted a map of the area. I saw some trees in the distance, and a bit under it a pangling area that is circled out. My gut tells me that that's where the antidote is stashed. When I entered Sam's room, Robin here said something ain't right? Ain't gonna lie, aside that the place is obliterated, I don't really know what's meant by that. If y'all have any ideas, let me know. After some more snooping around, I got to a very nice room, and aside of all the decorations for me to loot, finally, can't believe I'm saying it, unlocked the cold suit. It's been a long time coming, holy moly. Apparently, this is Zeta's room, so sorry for stealing all your stuff, Zeta, but you won't be needing it anymore, I think. Further up, I found another alien gateway, unpowered and no slot for an ion cube, and across some broken railings, got to the upper room, inside which got a couple more PDAs, a scan for a fridge, and documents as to who Zeta is. All that investigation work brings us to day 76. Got the Snow Fox hoverboard scans completed, so I can't wait to make one, but now is the time to find those trees and the pengling holds from the map. My jog had me accidentally stumbling into some prowler caves that required some escape maneuvers to get out alive, but eventually reached water. So in we go, through the winding pathways, to an opening with a waterfall, and this green glowing ice stuff. However, this just led me outside once more, but here is where I found one beacon next to a hole, so I brought out the Robo Buddy and had a peek inside. You control this little guy with this camera. No antidote for now, but nice to know that these things can have resources. Later I finally reached the tree, so I was getting closer to the actual marked location. I passed this small tower thing and ended up at a cave entrance, so of course I had a peek inside and immediately came across a bunker door from Parvin. 
the person from the mines. Turns out this is a security bunker, and it had some stalker fur stashed inside. I need quite a few of those for the cold suit, so this is very welcome. And well, hats off to you, my friend, for some good decor choices that I will be taking along. His security cameras show a work site, and those green globs look like postules. I think we are close to the frozen leviathan. So once I was done looting this room, I went deeper through the tunnels, reaching what Sam wanted to stop. That's a big boy. That thing is massive. Frozen in ice. What the heck? Had to take this elevator to reach the head, half of which is thawed out to expose the bacteria-infested postules. Seems though that this big beastie is dead for good at least. There is this device next to it that I can insert samples with, but requires an injectable canister to function. So time to add that to our figure out list. Most of the areas, even below, allow only for more scans of the gargantuan monster, but as I was about to leave, we spotted Sam's necklace on a desk, which is odd since she never took it off. Alan highlights that Sam's death was accompanied by significant destruction, and this place does look a little bit banged up with the rocks all over the place. But this has us confused since it is so unlike her. Maybe Sam did try and seal this place off and failed? Day 77 had come around, and as I left in the early hours, got to unlock a jump mod for the Snow Fox hoverboard. I made sure to check any crevices where the Pengling bot could enter, but for now, just some more magnetite. But remember how we need Prowler fur for the cold suit? Well, I, I am one curious crow, I'll tell you that. Oh, that was risky. <laughs> I need your fur for a cold suit. Damn it. Come on. Oh, 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 easy puppy. Easy puppy. Okay, no, that's uh, that was enough of a try. That's uh, that's all I gotta see. Or is it? Fight me, foul demon. All right, I've had enough. I had enough. <gasps> Hello, puppy! Hi! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh! No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, I was just saying hello. Seek shelter. Look, dangerous weather is approaching. You got room for, like, one more. Please. I'm dying out here. Oh. <gasps> There's fur. Oh, my inventory is full. Uh, med pack fur. Got it. Hi! Bye! Yeah, that's one more fur. I think I need one more and make can make a whole cold suit. A hailstorm pulled over, so I hid in a cave where on a workstation got a PDA named Gotta Thanks Sam, but couldn't focus since I kept hearing strange, monstrous noises. Turns out next to me is a massive prowler nest, and to my luck, that means more fur. So I did get some, that is whenever Mama Prowler wasn't camping the entrance, that is. But I'm done here. I need to run for dear life as to not end up as its main course. You're so cute. Okay, focus. It is night. Dark and cold. Out of the cave and... Oh, look. There's a baby pangling to put in my pocket. You'll love the other monsters in the containment chamber. It was first on day 78 where, thanks to our robo-buddy, found our prize. <gasps> there it is. Let's go, baby. She's gonna use this antibacterial agent to neutralize the bacterium. That's progress right there, baby. Let's go. Hell yeah. Let's go, little buddy. Good job. What's super exciting is that this is injectable based on its description. Sounds like what we would need for the Leviathan postules. But a danger storm came along, so into the waters it is for me, where I found this egg that looks like a jellyfish. Another fine addition to the collection, I'm sure. I was panicking a bit since I couldn't find my way out of this area or at least find an air pocket, so I swam through a fleet of eye jellies, reaching the open ocean surprisingly and just barely got back to the surface in time. Confused as to how to get back to where I just came from, the only logical choice was to head on over to F-250, and once I got to it, made my way on home, where I made a very shocking and confusing discovery. Seriously, the antidote is just peppers and a vase plant, and nobody else figured it out? Bro, that's so easy. What? I can't believe all this dilemma, all this death on this planet could be solved by a pepper and a vase plant. 
To free up some space, I unloaded the tons of decor items that I had gotten from Fire Robotics and added the additional egg. And look at here, we have a jellyfish, as well as a whole fish. I came back to make all of the things that we just unlocked, so I started off with the cold gloves, but I'm going to need more fiber mesh. So I got creep vines through the night, which let me make the cold helmet, and with that also the cold suit early in the morning. And of course we can't forget about the snow fox platform that I placed on this ice sheet. Making the snow fox is relatively easy, kind of had everything just lying around, so I got that made too. Now that is one sweet ride, look at that! Ooh, mama! This is gonna get fun. Okay, how do I steer this thing? Do you have four power? Do I need to charge you or something? Why is there only a four on your electricity? And why do you barely move? Hello? Okay. Um, it's not working for some reason. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay, now I think, yeah, there you go, now you're charging, okay, sorry, I was, just, I was a little bit too much of a go-getter on that one, I needed to let you rest a little bit. While we wait on that to be ready, I slapped on the cold suit, making me immune to surface temperatures, and then got the jump mod made for our new vehicle, but that is not all, got a few pieces of silver, and that was the last that I needed to get to make the worm attack reduction upgrade. The penguin baby in my pocket was finally freed into the chamber of death, and as for the snow fox upgrades, for the life of me, I just couldn't get them added. This whole vehicle process has been very confusing for little old me. Controlling this contraption on day 80 came with a ton of hiccups as well, and apparently you can only add one upgrade at a time? What? So for now, the jump upgrade it is, and with this stylish new paint job comes the new name. Purple Piercer, which was brought to land to test out there. Ooh, okay. Yeah, on land, this thing is magnificent. I was just so confused as to what was going on in the water, because you dip its toe in there and the entire thing just falls apart, kind of. Yep, that'll do it. It has become useless. As for our farm, I got to chowing down tons of potatoes to free up a plot that I had to place anew, but now could plant shrub nuts that I got from Delta Island. And since we are on this topic, I made the long trek on over to Red Base, unlocked the truck afterburner on the way by the way, and once docked at our destination, got seeds for all of these other plants that we had recently came across, which is quite a nice variety. I had planted these after having visited the greenhouse. Luckily this place has some silver, so on day 81 I turned some of that into a wiring kit, but I'm still short on lithium and sulfur to make the afterburner upgrade. I was heading home to get it, but since I crossed the vent biome, the stuff is literally just lying around all over the place, so got all of that, completed it, crafted the afterburner, which when slotted in as the final truck upgrade, gets it around the map much faster at the expense of more power usage. I would say F-250 has become a speed demon, but it's not that fast, it's more like a a speed imp of sorts. The garden at the crow nest could now be worked on with the seeds that we brought, so I removed one tree plot, and in the new one got vase plants as well as melons going. Also, let's add these two Preston delights just in case we need them later on. To end the day, I made my way on over to Phi Robotics to find another body part for Alan, since again, he mentioned spires, and that's the place. As soon as I got there, I popped out the purple piercer and immediately got lost in worm territory all night long. I, I definitely took a wrong turn somewhere, I, I'm certain of that much. Confusion ensued as under the darkest of night, the worms kept knocking me off the piercer without even being close to me. But turns out it was actually damaging the ride, so I had to make some pit stops here and there to do some repairs. And yeah, let's add the worm attack reduction mod, shall we? Does it even touch me? And it knocks me off, what the heck? Ow. A new area was uncovered once daylight came out, a large open space, and at the back was a pathway down, leading me straight to the body part that I had been looking for so very long. Hello, mama. We have here. Oh, these are emeralds. I thought this was just green ice. You know, yellow snow, green ice. You, you never know. Yo! Look at that. That's like a crab pincer, bro. Ah, that is a rough way to go. Yes, I would Indeed. Really enjoy being crushed while mining iron cube components. 
<laughs> the cold preserves the body well, but this isn't a big sample. Will it be enough? Our tissues are pluripotent. Derived I'll pretend like I know what pluripotent means. Capable of changing form as necessary. Ah, like stem cells. Okay. So, what prevents you from, I don't know, ending up with hooves where your eyelashes should go? That does not happen. At least not since the fourth iteration. <laughs> okay, so uh, they've been through it. They fig they figured it out. They they got that under control. I think that's the the least of their worries. Okay, so architect tissues. We have everything for that. Yeah, no problem. That is really no issue to make that in the slightest. Oh, what the, bro? I just, hello. I just glitched through the map. What the? So that happened. I mean, my, my hoverboard was looking kind of funky in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's uh, it is what it is. You know. It was first at sunset where I was freed from the glitch and got back to the truck. But I had more to do here aside from the body scan. I have the injectable antidote with me, so it's time to find the Leviathan where the injection machine was. The search went into day 83, but I arrived, and once at this colossal beast, got straight to using the antidote, which drove itself to the corpse and pumped it into the green postule, and guess what? It works! The postules disappeared, Alan confirmed this, and that it cannot spread anymore. And Robin has closure now that Sam's mission is complete. Her work is done, and everyone is safe. Getting back to the truck was no problem, since by now I've mastered the snow fox, and as soon as I got into it though, Alan called from within my brain again. Two of three parts are now learned, and is slowly learning how sarcasm works. We ask that, since, you know, they can swap bodies, why was it so important to them to find a cure for the Kara? He states that the body parts that they use were made and comprised of DNA of 27 different alien species, which means the Kara could affect all of those species, hence why a cure was so important to them. The trip home was relaxing, reaching the base at sunset, where I began to unload all that I got from this outing, and then took a well-deserved long rest. Waking up on day 84, I decided it would be a good time to have a seat at the desk and have a gander at all those new PDAs we've recently found. Here's one from a call between Danielle and Sam. Seems like here is where their fight began. You see, Sam had recorded the Kara and reported it to Zeta at the base, and Zeta just gave off no reaction to it, which was kind of weird. Sam, of course, is worried that the bacteria will get out, but Danielle says that Sam basically doesn't know what she's talking about, that they can neutralize the Kara when needed, and, well, eventually and hesitantly, admits to Sam that she is mutating the bacteria for her work. That, I think, was the tipping point between them. At least in this note from someone named Sebastian, they want to thank Sam for her work with the bots since they can get to work in places that they normally can't reach and they know she's been down in the dumps lately. I want to cheer her up, you know. The log of Parvin here makes him seem like a very proud and stern guy, but has an issue with bragging, especially since he got promoted to security at the Leviathan site, but is trying desperately to send a message to his family to tell them all that he loves them, but just can't seem to bring himself to do so. Seems to have a hard time expressing his emotions. A PDA of an investigation report by Alexis from the Leviathan Chamber states, There was a lot of destruction in the cavern. Same thing that Alan said. I'm assuming because Sam and Maida wanted to seal it off. Due to the evident damages in the area, Parvin as well as Sam lost their lives under the rubble, which is very tragic. Alexis is confused why Sam was here in the first place and was the one to conclude negligence being the cause of death, but wants to investigate a connection between her and the destruction of Omega Lab, which, again, we think Marguerite did. Now for bullet points! Lightning round! Parvin is losing his mind to boredom by working as security in the cave with just a giant corpse in it. He's resulted to collecting rocks to pass the time. But Fred here thinks the Leviathan might still be alive. In another note involving Sam, Parvin, Fred, Zeta, and Vin, they're playing games to pass the time when Sam wants to convince everyone to stop the Kara bacteria, but everyone thinks she is overreacting or delusional, except for Fred. Seems like Fred is the only one on her side. Wow, oh, it's nighttime already. I got sucked in there for a hot minute. Day 85 had me slapping on the reinforced suit again, for I am heading straight to the creepy crystal cave. Also, I made sure that I had an ion cube on me in case I find a portal that needs to be powered. Now then, off we go to our impending doom. 
Wait, did I just kill him? Or are you just stunned? Well, that's a first. Down the winding green pathways I went, took a little break to repair at Marguerite's base, and then descended into the danger zone, for my investigation will definitely lead me straight to the Dark Leviathans. Okay, so I think it does around. I think it always comes around this way, and then goes down that hole, and I see some crystals over there in the distance. So I'm gonna wait for him to do his loop, and I'll follow behind him. Oh, there he is, right on cue. Oh, you are a centipede. And then he goes up behind there. Okay, that's our cue. Okay, let's go. After burner, just so he doesn't catch up on us. This might be a good place to hide. Oh, there's a torpedo arm. Okay, I gotta scan that. I have an inkling of a feeling that this is no time to stop. So far, so good. Trying to keep low until Alan says something. Any minute now. Well, this place goes deep, deep. Boy. I think this is as deep as it goes. Honestly, I have no idea what you would need this much kyanite for. I kind of think I made everything that's needed. And dear lord, there's a lot of resources down here. But that's besides the point. I have no other choice but to uh, go back up again to uh, Big, Long, and Ugly. So this is where I came from. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I can see it go away in the distance there. Okay, cool. Then we should be clear, though. There's a lot of crystal here. <gasps> oh, there it is! No safety. Go into the hole. It worked kind of last time. Okay. I think we are in the clear. Well, there's kind of only one way to go. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look-see, shall we? There is definitely Ooh. something of value. It could help you build my It place. better. Dear lord, this all better be not be for nothing. Okay. Architect architecture. We're getting close. Hello, gateway. Let's have a look. Uh we continue swimming or how are we doing this? Nope. Okay. It is a uh, no swim zone. Let's see what happens. Oh, whoa! Oh yeah, okay, it is like a super invisible barrier, but that is a pretty sight to behold, dear lord. Some good interior design, I do approve. It's really nice. Y'all done outdid yourselves, didn't you? Hey, we got robos! Hey, what's up, my guy? You may lead the way. Architect component. That looks like a lungs, hip, and nervous system. Consinuant parts. Bionic organs with the scanned material. Gotcha. And secondary. Our designs provide for redundancies. Given your current okay. location, I think they could still be improved. Your feedback has been noted. <laughs> oh, snarky, are we? We've scanned all the components we need oh. to make a storage uh, body. That a boy. Using the chemical compounds available in your body, I am able to approximate what you might call cautious optimism. Well, that's good for you. Uh, uh, that That's progress right there. One step at a time, one step at a time to bring you down to our level. So we have learned all we need to make the components. Let's have a look. That is synthetic fibers, or some of the creep vine stuff in the gel sacks. We got diamonds, uh, the, one of the acids, plasteel. We got some stuff that we are growing in our backyard, the battery plants. An ion cube that I have my info and some kyanite. Okay, so we do need more kyanite. Good, okay. I can solve that main dilemma here as we, uh, you know, I have nothing better to do with our time on our hands, so uh, let's get cracking. Luckily, right out the gate, I already got two out of three pieces of kyanite. Alan called at the start of day 86, and since we have learned all body parts now, we should go to a place called a fabrication facility to craft a whole body for him, which is somewhat deeper than we are now. We ask if they had planned to need to make more bodies, to which Alan says it's like a standard medical facility, but Robin notes that a place to swap your whole body is a bit away from standard. Alan says their research mission was of the highest importance, and Robin tries to pry more on their mission, but Alan oddly and abruptly changes the subject to stay on course to get to the facility, which feels somewhat out of character. Before I reached Leviathan territory, I did get all of the kyanite needed, as well as diamonds for one of the parts. So now it is time to find that facility. I waited for the Leviathan to pass overhead in order to move around behind it, rather than it sneaking up from behind me. This plan 
did not go down so smoothly. Oh, I don't know where to go. Oh, not now, Alan. And yet I feel certain there is something important to be known—a facility or a body command, perhaps. I cannot tell. Yeah, good for you. That's that's fantastic. Whatever you said, I'm happy for you. Or sorry that happened. Man, I am so lost after that chase. No clue where to go except down, which luckily was all the info needed to later in the day start finding some clues. Red cubes. That's new. And a big open space to boot. Okay, so uh, we're going into uncharted territories. I haven't seen one of the big boys in a very long time, and I probably jinxed myself by just saying that just now, but uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, unless it's a one-shot. It'll be fine. Hello? Oh, wow. Oh, okay, never mind. This is actually its uh, home. Oh, <gasps> no. Are you coming for me already? Hell no. Ain't no way. Ain't n Oh, was that? Was that something of it glitching through the ground? I am a little bit spooked. I'm not gonna lie. Oh. oh! Can I stop bumping into absolutely everything for like five seconds? Alright, it's going away. This gives me some time to look around and see where I gotta go. I sense the presence oh. of a substantial facility in the area. Unable to identify. It's going back. I'm out. Toodaloo. We know this is a facility. Like, this has to be it. It is deeper than the last location. And it looks pretty. It has to be it. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to see to get myself some beacons crafted. And with that, I'm going to leave a cookie crumb trail all the way back to wherever the heck I find an exit so I can find my way back once I get the supplies. Sounds like a plan? It does. Okay, cool. Glad we agree. With these bits of titanium and copper here, I did manage to leave one beacon at the entrance to the red crystal section. On my way out, I did take the time to mine the plentiful resources down here as I knew I was going to need a bit to add some much needed upgrades to Jarvis if I'm to pass the Leviathan guarding the red zone, although I didn't stay too long as I could hear the Leviathan's roars get closer. So I found a new exit that led all the way up to the first Mercury wreck that we had found. Noted for when we want to go back. Once back home, I unloaded the hull and made tons of wire and after a bit of work, added all the body part resources to the truck so once we go there, we can make all of them in one go. Now for those upgrades for Jarvis. I want a torpedo arm to start, so I got resources pretty much all day to make heaps of progress on it, but also a torpedo launcher needs torpedoes, and I want a vortex variety to hold enemies in place, for which I'm going to need a lot of titanium and some magnetite, so I set out at night to look for some titanium nodes. I was severely lost on day 88 since it's just so incredibly dark, so I made a pit stop at Red Base because somehow I ended up in the area where I plucked some fruit from our garden to keep the bioreactor here going. Down here are some titanium nodes, so I guess it all kind of worked out. And man, the propulsion arm is just so fun to use, just yeet stuff around at surprising speeds, but we need a freedom launcher, so I made the torpedo arm, attached the thing, so now I just need quite a hefty amount of magnetite, and the only place that I could think of that has a lot of it was the area around Fire Robotics. The trip there was the longest ever since it's all the way on the other side of the map, but on the way made sure to get some nodes, as risky as they may have been. Don't you dare. Eventually, on day 89, I made landfall with Jarvis at Phi Robotics Landmass, and after quite a long bit of searching, started to find some magnetite veins. Also, in the base, spotted a secret room, but could not get into it at all. It's just teasing me. Jarvis, lacking a grappling arm, couldn't go everywhere, so partially I had to keep on exploring on foot, and in a cave, lured a prowler into a hole. Little stupid beast. All in order for tons of free copper and lots and lots of magnetite. I then returned to Jarvis after a long day of gathering, loaded him onto the back end of the truck, and set hypothetical sail back to the crow nest. Vortex torpedo production was through the roof on day 90, and Jarvis was more than locked and loaded. 
Now, the second upgrade that I want on this bad boy is a grappling arm for evasive maneuvers in case of a leviathan attack, but I am lacking all of the scans for it, so I went on over to the lily pad biome because I think I remember finding the first scan somewhere over here. But it was no easy task, so much time was spent looking and getting lost in the process, but that isn't always a bad thing. I can't believe it. We were here that one time at this thermal area. We're like, oh yeah, here's some information on Marguerite. Little did I know, just around the corner, there's a cave right here that leads to her front door. I could have saved so much time if I just would have looked to like my right. Cause you literally just fall along this path and she's like, I think right over there. Wow. After what I felt like was a wasted day, I actually found the final scan for the grapple arm. I should have all of those supplies back at main base, so after arriving back at home at about midnight, and with gathering done to kick off day 91, I completed the grapple arm. Now Jarvis here is unstoppable. I did keep my drill arm in the inventory in case some good nodes appeared, and we are off to find the fabrication facility. About noon was about when I reached the wreck from where I began to descend and quickly reached the blue layer of death, and I was reminded quickly that I am not welcome here. <gasps> no. 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 Oh my gosh, it's right there. Oh no. No. Please. Please. Please don't kill me. Please. I beg of thee. Oh my gosh. Woo. That did over half of my health. One more hit and I'm dead. Okay, I'm gone. I am so gone. Oh, I flew right into the belly of the beast. Oh, I didn't even try to shock it. I was I was in a panic. Woo-wee. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we might have to rethink this one. Well, a little old repair is in order after that ordeal, and yes, now I was taking it very slowly to progress, learning the enemy's swim patterns, letting it go past, and then head straight ahead into, well, it's still a smidge of more danger. Oh, sh- Oh boy. Okay. Evasive maneuvers. I think it's right on my booty cheeks. Go, go, dash, lightning speed. Lose it in the rocks. All right. We should be safe here. It definitely won't be able to fit in here. Right, cool. We got a moment to breathe. I zipped straight to the entrance, thankfully with no other jump scares, and parked at the red crystals, preparing to make my way deeper with Jarvis. It was first the next day where I realized I am missing a few key components for this mission. Wait, what? I mean, I'm missing two gel sacks. There ain't no way I'm missing two gel sacks. No, -uh. no shot. Oh dear lord, you have to be kidding me. Oh, what happened? I I put everything in. What, bro? There's no way. What? Well then, I have no choice but to search for some in the area, as terrifying as that may be. But to my luck, the above section with the vents does have gel sacs, so two got retrieved relatively quickly. And I would go back to the red crystal zone, but my battery was like halfway depleted. It would be too much of a risk to go down there and run out of power. So I charged up at red base, which was nearby, where I placed more signs as I waited for the truck to be ready. First in the afternoon, we could embark once more on our quest. Down we go at the wreck site, and arrive in centipede territory in a jiffy. Extra caution was applied to get past the predators, and got to the beacon at day's end. Meaning day 93 would be the day that I explore the deepest and most dangerous section yet. Hey, hey so we're off to a bumpy start. I doubt this is going to be a good place to get in considering it always keeps circling back here like every minute or so like i'm gonna get bit no matter what so probably i'm better off looking for a better point of entry so uh, let's go do that because i saw some entrances uh, right this way right around this corner here we have another hole and the question is if this place is safer than the other it does seem to be a bit tight it might work in our favor because it might not want to go all this way. Hi. Oh, okay. I don't think it'll come here. I don't think it'll come here. Okay, it just has a peak and then it leaves. That's its route. Okay. So we learned that much. I'm going to keep the lights off. I don't know if the lights attract it, but either way it'll save us battery and I can see pretty well. 
All we gotta do is wait for it to do a little round, and once it leaves, then we swoop in to progress to wherever we may need to go. There it is, right on cue. Another little look around. Does a cute little roar. That's our cue, sadly. I'm gonna take it nice and easy, because I wanna see how far it goes. It is quite a bit, and it seems to be going deeper over there. Oh, it's coming back already. Oh man, that is not a lot of time at all. Yep, that's like a minute of time. And I probably am not allowed to get too close or it's gonna notice me off its tail. Okay, let's uh, hope for the best, shall we? Oh, it's two. Oh my gosh, it's two. Okay, that one's going around the right. So I'm just gonna go down here, straight down the middle. Oh, there's an entrance. Oh my gosh, there's an entrance. This is good, cool. Okay. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. All right. Once you have Ooh. used the fabricator to build each component, we can assemble them. And then we can transfer you out of my head? I am anticipating it as much as you are. Well, th well, I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to play Lego with your body. Uh, so have a... Ooh, Ooh la la. This is not bad a crib. The, those definitely have the symbols that I have on the right side of my screen to uh, craft the components. The process oh. requires you to build each component before yes. you can assemble the whole. Okay, look, I know I'm not as smart as you are, but I knew that much. I was just looking around. All right, I guess we just uh, do any of them. I guess we'll just start with the left. Go left to right, you know. Use fabricator. This would be the middle symbol there. The, the architect skeleton. All right. So, Alan, you said your people came here in search of a cure? I was a researcher. You were a scientist? Okay. Like me? My people regarded my scientific contributions with particular interest. As I said, like me. If that is your interpretation. <laughs> so, how did your valuable scientific mind wind up infected? Not my mind. My body. Perhaps you should build the next component. Ooh, okay, so that's its skeleton. It does really look like that statue we found in a cave that one time. He's being kind of vague a little bit. It's like, why why did you come here? And he's like, hmm, research. Here's the thing, I said, so, Alan, sorry, Alan, if you want to be specific, you said your people came here and searched for a cure. And he said, I was a researcher. Bro, you didn't answer my question. All right, let's go for the next one then. Architect tissues. So you came here to search for a cure? I left the mission. Okay. Does that mean the bacteria got out on your watch? This subject is uncomfortable. If you would like to know more, I will ask that you first construct the final component. Just, just give it to me straight, Doc. What happened? Ooh, I dig the color scheme, my guy. I really do. Very approved. Very nice. Okay, so this kind of does confirm it, though. I asked, so you came here to search for a cure, and Alan said, I led the mission. The kind of applies to that, yes, it was in search for a cure. I was just a little bit weirded out by the fact that he dodged earlier questions about research and changed the subject in order to build his body. I was a little bit weirded out, but uh, yeah, I guess I was misinterpreting. Uh, architect organs. Okay. This is the last piece. Soon I will be autonomous again. I hope what so. What will you do with your newfound freedom? I must return home to make amends. Amends? Uh, make amends? For the bacteria? There seems to be a lot you're not telling me. Mm-hmm. It is hard for me to find the words. I must collect my thoughts. I have a whole lot of hoo-ha. You may initiate body fabrication sequence from the terminal. You still owe me an explanation. I understand. Yeah, like, bro, what do you need to make amends for? What did you do? You led the operation, something evidently went wrong, and now you need to make amends. Kinda weird, a little bit fishy, but uh, there is no real going back at this point, so, uh, commence storage and medium fabrication. Commence storage and medium fabrication. Gotcha. The escape of the bacteria was an accident. Okay. I thought my solution was foolproof. He had been fooled by his foolproof Did plan. Did cause the accident? Yes. Oh. I do not wish to speak about it. Oh, is this a sensitive topic? Oh boy. Bro is a centaur, what? Hello. 
I could scan. What are you doing? Research. Tit for tat. You've probed my mind. I scan your body. Ha! That's what. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This is gonna be highly expensive on the black market. Bro is a purple centaur with horns and crab arms. Supposedly, this is peak performance, peak efficiency. Okay, initiate transfers what I can do. I am a little bit scared, but I guess we don't have a choice. All right, initiate transfer. Commencing the transfer. Ooh, hello. Nice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy does it, bro. Are we Is alive! Frank and Alan! <laughs> That's it's a good stretch. Been some time since I last stretched out in so many dimensions. Like waking from a dream. Welcome back, my guy. Whoa. Bro, take it easy. What you doing, my guy? Hey. There are some remnants. Would you like your memories of me removed as well? I didn't say that. Are you kidding? No way. You still owe me the end of your story. <sighs> I told you I must return home. To assess. Repair. Make amends. For what? More. When the bacteria escaped, it was my fault. Yes. I disobeyed the directive from my network. Oh, that's a naughty boy. Oh, what did you do? Give me the oh, tea. No. Oh, holy. We noticed that a species of Leviathan young produced an enzyme that is efficient against the bacteria. Right. I thought if we incubated sea dragon eggs, we might expedite their hatching. I was not wrong. But... It would appear that sea dragon parents are stronger and more motivated than our facility was rated to handle. And the bacteria got out, infecting everything. Oh my we goodness! We survived the outbreak back home. Are they still waiting for someone to bring back a cure? I do not know. Can I help? The fact that I withheld this information does not concern you. Not really. It's certainly manipulative. But I've also made my own share of mistakes. I'm still committed to helping. I accept your help. Find me at the gate when you are ready. In the meantime, I must prepare. Signal location gotcha. uploaded to PDA. Oh, okay. So we have the location on where we gotta go. There it is. Architect phase gate facility. Okay, that's the phase gate for Alan the centaur to go home. Yeah, so what he just said about the uh, sea dragon enzyme to cure the bacteria I don't want to spoil too much because that has a lot to do with the first game. And again, I already played through that and made content on that, you know. Uh, but it kind of ties together what exactly happened part-wise in the first game. So I'm glad. Now I got closure. Oh, that's great. Okay, no, I'm, I'm happy with that. I got all the answers that uh, that I had kind of from the first game. I'm, I'm satisfied, actually. Ooh, except for that. <gasps> so I skedaddled on out the same way that I came from, but I could not leave without a goodbye smooch. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> hi. Yo, what? That is disgusting. Okay, that does it. Hold on. Wait a minute. I never used Jarvis. I was so focused on completing the mission that I totally had forgotten. Alright, where are you, big guy? I at least want to test out my weapons on him. I made this torpedo launcher for something. Wait for it. Alright, where are you, big guy? There you are! Come here! Come here, ugly! Oh, oh! Did that push it? I think that did push it. Okay! I thought it would hold it in place, it ended up pushing it, but uh, that's not too bad, actually. Now I at least know how it feels like. This robot should have been called Aaron Yeager. Got that ODM gear. 
Slowly but surely, I was making my way out of the cavern, and I'm glad that on day 94, this is the last time that I'll be seeing these wretched abominations, as I finally got out and went straight on over to Fire Robotics. You see, I have a few more days left on this planet before I go meet Alan, so I have a side mission to complete, involving Red Base. So once there, I added the drill arm to Jarvis and set out to get all the copper that I could find. But the grapple arm was a bit tough to use at the start, but trust me, I get really good at using this thing. Tons of copper was retrieved, and also got to mine ion cube nodes to end the day. This process of gathering copper was quite extensive, and lucky me, found the worm tunnels where there are tons of copper veins. Note though that the worms can pop up here and damage you. Once our inventories were full, we just crafted tons of wire back at F-250 and deposited it all, and went back for round two, slowly getting a hang of the grapple arm to improve our speed. But yeah, copper mining was done all day, which was done straight through till midday of 96, till we had our fill. And with some amazing grapple maneuvering, if I do say so myself, I mean, just look at us go, that Titanfall 2 gameplay is still within me, reached the truck, which is almost out of juice, so we returned to the crow nest to charge it up unload our haul, and make more wires. And also, can't forget to charge Jarvis himself through the night, so that on day 97 we could go back to the worm area for one final round. The mining shall not stop, I need all of the copper that I could find. Besides of that, I did find a new, peculiar egg, out of the water with four legs and an eyeball, so of course, you're coming with me. With both our inventories filled again, we made our way back to the nest, where I laid down the egg into the chamber, and again made truckloads of wire. So much so that by day's end, the entire truck's cargo slots were filled entirely with wire. Day 98 was when I could begin to finalize my side quest after my long trip to Red Base with our supplies, and this involved placing signs that are crafted with the copper wire across the wall which took up a massive portion of the day till they were all used up. As for the signs, I began to write down the names of all of my active patrons and YouTube channel members, although heavily compacted so they would all fit. And yes, this took insanely long to do, but after placing names all day long on day 99, I proudly present to you all the completed supporter mural. Thank you all for your monthly support to the channel to help us improve our content. It really does help a lot and I am incredibly grateful. The link to my Patreon is in the description, my lovelies. Day 100 is finally here, everyone. We made it to the end of the adventure. All we have to do is meet up with Alan at the phase gate. But first, I made a pit stop back at the crow nest to get some water for I was quite parched and had a look around the entirety of the base. I'm actually kind of proud of this one. I felt right at home. It all came together nicely, even though some of the sections were a little bit hard to nail down, but it's home away from home. And yes, the weird egg that we got became this weird blue ball eye thing. Who would have thought? It's time. Let's head on over to the location, which is at Station Zero, where I had to trek through an insanely powerful snowstorm to reach the warm pathway with thermal lilies, at the end of which was our destination. Let's see what Alan has in store. Well, I guess it's time. This place was oh so important and useless without an architect, but I see he's beaten me to the punch. At least he's been keeping busy. That is very apparent. Are you preparing to leave, Alan? Yes. There is much to do. Okay. Whoa. Can you stop teleporting on me like that? Look. I know you're in a bit of a hurry, but just... I can't teleport. I have little legs. So, uh, you know. Take it easy. Do you still wish to leave with me? Uh-huh. Beyond this teleporter, there is no turning back. Are you kidding? I can't pass up a chance to see where architects come from. True. Besides, I don't have another ride. Also but true. Do you know what we will find there? The others may be sick, or angry. Likely angry. If they live at all. Or, you could find peace. Family. I hope you are right. Please complete any business you still have on this planet. Join me on the other side when you are ready to leave. Okay, so- oh! Man, he is a go-getter! He really needed his own body. I can't imagine how much he was containing his eagerness while being inside my noggin. Wow, oh great. Um, I guess this does it. I mean, I can't wait to get off this planet. I've had about enough of the uh, frigid temperatures and the, uh, you know, beasts that want to eat my face, so here goes nothing. There we go. Boom, where are we now? 
Wait, are we still on the same planet? There is snow here. You lied to me! Unless your planet has snow too, then uh, in that case you didn't. Hey. Robin, you're just in time. The phase gate is opening. Well, I wouldn't miss it at all. You've Not for nothing in the, the world. Gate here this whole time. Only for the last millennium. It will lead us home. Last millennium? No wonder you hid yourself from Altera. It was imperative to keep the home world safe. In hopes that the others survived. True. Yeah, because if the virus would have gotten through because of Altera, that would have been a worst case scenario for sure. So I get that. Oh, uh, that's not going to blow my face up, is it? Um... Because I know a death machine when I see one. Will you help me prepare the ship? The energy masks must be moved into place. Okay. Whoa. Hey, easy now. Well, this is different. Yo, I just became four arms. We do have the Omnitrix. Okay. All right, what do you need, my guy? What do you need? What do, what do I do? Um, it, you know, I appreciate you assuming... But I'm smart enough to understand what you told me to do. Uh, the, the matter of the fact is I'm a little bit clueless as to what I should be doing. But I'm going to pretend like I understood. You know, fake it till you make it. And uh, we'll see what, we, uh, what, what, what will happen. Do I need to do something with this? A line pillar. Let's freaking go. Oh, we have telekinesis. Easy. There we go, Muma. Alright, that's one down. Alright, no, I got a hang of it. It's not too bad. Here we go. Up you go. Easy does it. Wouldn't want to bump it against the mother. Whoa. Yeah, I said easy does it now. There you go. Oh, they lit up. Oh. Return to me, and I will initiate ship assembly. You got it, Captain. You are the captain, because dear lord, do I not know how to operate this thing. Return arms. Oh, what a... They, they feel natural to me. Bro, you got, like, six. Why do I have to give them back? Thank you. The masks are in place. The energy field is ready. There is no time to lose. Oh, the masts are ready. So, wait, that means sails, right? All right, let's do this, big guy. Hey, 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 hey. Beat me up, Scotty, will ya? Holy moly. Oh, wait, what the heck are you doing? You just materialized a ship, my guy. Out of the pillars. Huh. Join me, Robin. Join me! <laughs> Join the dark side! <laughs> okay. There you go. There we go. Oh! A little bit easy on the beaming up there, Scotty, will you? I apologize. The levitator was calibrated for heavier bodies. I would have helped you to your feet, but as you can see, I have been fully integrated with the ship. Oh, you yeah, have? Yeah, you're not kidding? Nothing is permanent. Are you ready to go? Yes. I found the answers I was looking for. Indeed. I'm ready to move on. I can't bring Sam back. True. But I know she died fighting, and I got to finish her work. I'll always carry her memory. Should have taken that photograph. Please brace yourself. And oh boy. We will brace yourself. Brace for launch. All right. Show me what you got, big guy. Launching in three, two, one. Yep. Yeah, boy. Well, there's a whole lot more land to this place than I thought. Okay, so I imagine we're just gonna play Legos here and attach ourselves. Ooh, that is freaky looking. Whoa, it's a portal! I thought the whole thing was a ship! Oh, right, it is a gateway, duh! I'm just a little bit slow. I'm sorry. Woo! What? What? Whoa! Whoa! Easy. I can't control this thing. What will we find when we get there? If I am the last of my kind, I will experience the sorrow of 10,000 souls to me. Oh, that's poetic. In a sad way. I, I guess that's another portal. Whoa, what the heck? Oh, oh, you scared me. 
Oh, that wasn't funny. Are we there yet? Ooh, it does feel like we're there. Oh, hey, look, we're in New York. And if they survived? With you, I am ready to face whatever awaits. Yo, that's the architect home planet. Well, there you have it, my lovelies. We actually reached the Architect homeworld, but we have absolutely no clue as to what shall unfold here for Alan and Robin. Maybe we find out in a future game. Who knows? Either way, thank you so very much for watching, my lovelies. I do hope you had a wonderful time, and I'll be seeing you very soon. Take care now. Bye bye